Ladies and gentlemen, welcome! We are about to get started here. I am very excited to bring you guys Group C and Group D. It's day two of Battlements! Of course, I am going to be flying solo for this round. I am, of course, hanging out here. I see uh, we obviously have Nebline playing in this group, so he will not be joining me on the cast. Uh, but as he figures his stuff out and gets ready, because he was selected as the uh, first matchup here against Top Ramen. None other than Top Ramen. Taco Cake sitting this one out and watching from the sidelines will be trying to surmise what the game plan has to be to exit this group. I just want to remind everybody about the format for a little bit. The way that the Battleman stage of all of our tournaments work is that we have a best of one sort of series. It's winner stays on. So if Neblime takes out Top Ramen, Taco Cake will face Neblime. And if Taco Cake somehow takes out Neblime, then Top Ramen will take on Taco Cake. It's winner stays on until one player has four wins. Unless after six games, everybody is two wins and two losses, then we go to the free-for-all decider. And that has never happened before. And I'm not so sure it'll happen this tournament. But today is the last day that we can maybe have it happen right here, right now. Of course, that's Group C for you, the Aussie Buffet. Groups A and B have already been decided with Hamster, Newt, The Shambler, and Art of Turtle exiting in first and second place, just like the bracket shows you, with Three Crow and Jackie Langsky being out of tournament contention. Now, we are turning our attention to Group C and Group D. Of course, later on, Hapsaya, General Anakin, and the Beaver 99 will be duking it out as well, but for now, we've got the Zerg, the other Zerg, and the Terran. In fact, the last two Zergs of the tournament will be shown here and now. So, with all of that, Helpfully explained, we'll also take a moment to consider the map pool for this event. I'll show you guys that right now. Of course, we have some familiar names here. In fact, it's been like this since the Gauntlet. However, there has been a pretty sizable change to Derelict. We're using 2.0 now, version 2.0. The middle, very different, much more open. Added bases around the uh, 5 and 10 o'clock locations, as well as those corner bases turning into islands that have a neutral town center, which means that if you drop some workers off, you can immediately start harvesting. So, with all that said, that's the map pool. That's the format for the event. We are indeed going to set our sights on none other than Group C to kick things off here. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to quickly ask if our competitors... Uh, want to do an opening interview before we jump into the game. And if they do, uh, they can join the bullying corner. Looks like the first one to step up to the plate is going to be none other than Neblime. We love to see him. We love to hear from him. Let's bring him on in here. Hold on, as soon as I, as soon as Discord wants to work. There we go. Welcome, sir, Neblime. You are the top Yo. seed of your group. You are the co-caster for the other groups. How are you feeling today? Yeah, man, can I just stay in and, you know, observe this game and play it at the same time? And just get that extra info, that'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'll just hear the cast, you know, see how it goes. I just got ambushed by Hapsaya in the bullying corner. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, did you secretly sub him out for one of my opponents? No, no, uh, Hapsaya is also hanging out, and I think he wants to join for the cast or something. Let me let me bring him oh, in that's here exciting. and we'll figure it out. Yeah, trade of spaces. Hey, awesome. oh, Hapsaya, hey there. what's up, dude? What up, guys? What up? Are you joining me on Are the you... cast today? Is that what's happening? Um, I mean, I'm going to watch. I don't know if I want to, like, cast, because I kind of I have a headache today. Okay, no worries, no worries. Rough life. Rough life. Lucky day. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, you're kind of stealing the show because this is for Ned Blime's group. He's trying to 4-0 here, and he's he was worried for a second you got subbed in for his group, but that's not what's happening. I, I think I have a lot of faith in him. I, I've i played top ramen, and he's good, but mm -hmm. uh, I think Ned Blime probably has the ridiculous amount of experience to yes. make it almost impossible to beat him as like a newer player. Interesting. Okay. Well, Neblon, do you want to break it, the news to him, or should I? That Top Ramen has actually already beaten you once. Right? I have lost to Top Ramen, yes. Yeah. But it's not a regular yeah. occurrence. I imagine yeah, you've got a winning how record. How often, right? Like, yeah. if you played him 100 times, do you think he'd beat you, like, 10 or 20 times? Look, man, I'm not, like, recording the statistics when I play these practice games, so I, I don't really know how many. I mean, I hope it's less than 50 for sure. Uh, look, I'll have, I'll just have to see me play and see how it turns out. I don't know what I'm even going to say in this interview because I said everything I was going to say on the cast yesterday. So Ooh, okay. uh, maybe it's a wasted interview. I don't know. Well, hey, so, you're, uh, you're the one here. Why don't you True. tell them how bad they are? You know, that's the strategy, right? Well, because they're not gotta, bad. Because Top Ramen's gotta, pretty good. Look, you gotta straight talk up, yourself up and talk them down. Yeah, I'm better. That's just that's just how it's going to go. <laughs> but look, Top Ramen is very good. 
just straight up. I don't even think I, I say. agree. It's just good, right? Ta Taco Cake, he's had some difficulties in the past, but what he's shown in the Gauntlet has been also very good. So he's definitely getting in there, scrappy style. Uh, but like I said, there's not much for else to say. You know what? Forget the interview. I just want to play this game, man. All right. And enjoy the show. There it is. Okay. Well, very nice, very nice. there he is. He immediately leaves. He's out. He's already warming up. Hapsaya? I, I agree you? that Top Ramen is very good. Like, I think I played him, like, a few days after he started playing. Okay, okay. And he, he, he beat me, like, twice in a row when we first started before I kind of, like, adjusted and was like, oh, like, this guy knows how to play the video game. Wow. Right, yeah, and you don't <laughs> like, expect that from people who are new names that you've never seen. Yeah, before. people who are, like, brand new. Like, they just, he just picked up the project, and he I was like, oh, okay. Like, he's watched either, like, yeah. Hamster play Terran, right. or like, like the, he's watching a blind play Terran. Somebody, somebody, he's, he's learning from some people. He's actually done a little bit of an innovation with his Anseal play, and I expect we'll end up seeing that in this very game. Uh, but you don't really have to worry too much about that because your Terran is the Beaver 99, and we all know he loves his Vultures instead. So, you know, you'll be oh. right at home. You were just practicing against Newt earlier. Vultures are so annoying. I do I do think that, that what you talked about with the uh, the lattice after the gateway is the way to go. Yeah, I was thinking that it probably wouldn't set you too far behind, exactly. Uh, like, if you end up scouting that it's something safe, then the Terrans are probably going to get contained by your gateway army anyway, you know? Yeah, you know, well, it, it, like, how I figure it is, like, if it's Wraiths, I make Idols. Mm, and yeah. if it's Bio, I make Idols. And then if it's Fulcrum and they're making Goliath, then I can... I don't know. I, I, I really feel like all the units from the Lattice are really bad versus the Goliaths. Well, it could be. It could be. You do get a little bit of splash onto the clerics if he's going Goliath Cleric with the idol, and you can splash him down and stuff like that. So True. You know, True. it's possibilities. Wow. Welcome to the stream, everybody. Let me link the Pernogo YouTube one more time. I appreciate you spreading the word, of course, sir. Of course. Of and course. hopefully your headache clears in time for you to get nice and focused on your play in about three yeah, hours' time. Yeah, I'm going to go take an ibuprofen real quick. <laughs> Sounds good, brother. Hey, I'll catch you later on for the... Uh, some of the other stuff, or I can maybe bring you back in later if you feel like commentating a little bit or however you want okay, to Okay, that sounds good. I'm yeah. going to watch, but I don't think I'll be talking too much. All right. Well, sounds good, sir. Good luck. Good luck, man. Yeah, yeah. GG's, and thanks for popping in. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We are waiting on the ready check. We are about to get into our first match here. It is going to be on Axiom. The Aussie Buffet kicks off with Top Ramen as the first meal served. Or will this food bite back? Top Ramen in the bottom left. Neblime in the top right. Top right? No. Top Ramen. I actually don't know who to call this prediction for, believe it or not. It's a, it's a tight series, right? I mean, a tight overall situation, I think, if you're Really being honest with, with the way that things have gone, the fact that Top Ramen plays super well versus Zerg, he was able to really dismantle some of Grunch's Zerg play. After the tournament, Grunch switched around and played around a little bit with uh, Zerg, not making it as, as his Terran. Top Ramen feeling pretty imperious there. In fact, I think the only weak matchup he has, as far as I'm aware, based on you know results, is versus Protoss. And that was a very cheesy, early aggro General Anakin. Uh, versus Top Ramen, who was maybe a little bit off his game by comparison, not expecting certain plays there. Will be a stockade opener. So we are going to see Top Ramen go stockade into quarry add-on almost certainly. That's what the Vespian is for here. So he'll peel off of that once he hits around 100. Meanwhile, I hatch at the ramp for Neblime. Obviously the favorite for the group, the favorite overall for even this very match as we are going to see it unfurl. That doesn't mean crazy things can happen. And there you go. Predictions from the chat already. We've got none other than Newt in the chat saying, Ramen's good, but Neblime has this. And Lucy in the chat with a classic Hupsaya emote saying, Zerg is just too OP. You really want the classic Hupsaya emote, you go for a Hupsaya Zerg in the chat. Can I get a Hapsaya Zerg in the chat, please? Cool, a little over halfway complete now. We are going to see the stockade start to pump out those Mavericks. 
And the way that this is timed out, uh, Top Ramen will definitely be able to destroy the... Uh, either he can choose to chase this scout or he can choose to go further up. He's actually a little bit lost here because I think it's not the correct move to, to chase the scout worker. I think it's the correct move to go across the map and pressure on. But if you are going to chase it, you burn that stim super fast. It's a one and a half second delay or so before the stim pack actually kicks in, but you take the damage immediately. So the idea is that you want to pre-stim before an engagement and you can uh, punish Bio by taking them to task nice and early. And we do have two pairs of Quasilisks with another pair nearly done hatching. Now back over here. Ooh, body blocked. The bodyguard, the bouncer, you do not pass. Unfortunately, over here, we are going to see one of those Mavericks get bursted down nice and early by this Quasilisk squad that Neblime is putting together. A pair of Zethrocores to follow. Interesting choice. And burning a stim to stay alive. But this ain't Helldivers. Still no expansion coming for Top Ramen yet, but he is scaling up with the quarry. The quarry add-on allows you to build workers with an extra production queue. So that is what Top Ramen is going to go for. And you know, so far, honestly, I feel like the push and pull, it's not very um, abstract per se. This is kind of the, the metagame that has developed. This is, of course, arcing to the left to avoid anything that would be in the middle. And actually, a, a rescout with the Mason can definitely be tickled a little bit here, but Neblime... Not choosing to do it. Instead, he's going to leave some burrowed Zeths in a couple of spots that are likely to be waypointed. Ooh, one more hit would have killed that Zeth. In fact, I feel like maybe Top Ramen will go investigating on an attack path. When you stand on burrowed units in this game, you do see them. That goes for the Lakizalisk, or also known as the Lurker, if you're more of a classic StarCraft aficionado. And the demented cousin that was its successor. We don't talk about that here. StarCraft 64 is obviously uh, where everybody gets their pro careers from. Just a couple of workers plopping down a Kagrant. This looks positioned as if it's going to be a Larvosk. We do have an Avalith on the way for scouting as well. Larvosk Seasians are the sort of like gas intensive version of the Hatcherosk, but they're also a lot easier to snipe. And Top Robin has started to incorporate drops in his play. He's going to put down a Watchdog at 12 o'clock and he's going to lift this off and use it as his own scout, kind of similar to the Avalith, which has already left the building and is moving across the map now. There's nothing in it, so... Uh, another thing to point out for any new viewers, when you have a transport, or in fact, when you have anything, right? No, typically, if you're thinking of classic StarCraft, you're thinking of StarCraft 2, you've got to research upgrades, right? You need to upgrade, you know, Overlord Drop, or you need to, in StarCraft 2's case, you need to evolve your layer and then turn them into a, a mutated unit. Ironically, that StarCraft 2 approach is actually a little bit more close, closely related to what we have, because instead of having upgrades and researches, we simply have, you know, different units that you can make. Now, trying to put down another Watchdog, he should cancel that. That's a little bit un of an unforced error from Neblime not punishing that, since he could have sniped it and then there wouldn't have been any money returned. That is indeed going to be a Larvosk, and we saw that the Watchdog Scout didn't really see too much. Avaleth, on the other hand, is going to spy the operation. We've got a Vestry down, got some pretty good bio, a, a, an okay clump, but I think they would basically trade down their army if they engaged with the 13 Quasis here. Although, if he suspects that the burrow happened in this location, that could actually be pretty big, but it doesn't look like it's going to be the case. Now, this Avaleth is being attacked by some unstimmed Maverick, so it will end up escaping. They did go ahead and pre-stim before that engagement, but they see the Circuit, and now they're maybe thinking about falling away. The Harakin, very good at tanking, but against so many Quasilisks, not exactly, right? So this Bioforce will end up getting surrounded and eliminated. Nebline behind this is going for the Hydrath Den. That's going to unlock some more units for him to train from his Larva. Third Stockade going to come down for Top Ramen. He's been practicing up quite a bit, but I have to say his float is not looking super inspired. However, you do need 600 of each resource to hit Tier 2. So as we get closer and closer to the 500 mark, it becomes more and more obvious that it's deliberate. However, he still could drop an extra Stockade, probably an extra Anchor, maybe a Watchdog or two, for safety's sake. Since he's now 200 more than he needs on the Minerals, make it 300. Banking up that Vespian, right? You harvest Vespian a lot less uh, quickly. And he doesn't really want to build the Atlas right in his opponent's face. So that's another thing where we might end up seeing it. No, it will go down in the bottom left corner. And of course, Neblime will be taking note of that. But he can't really bust this situation. The Anchor is not actually uh, garrisoned here. Looks like another Mason was going to head outside to maybe look for some more uh, Watchdog opportunities for, for the Scout. Top Ramen very acutely aware that the Scouting needs to happen. Neblime, of course, doing one better with his Avaleth. The rescout never happened there for Top Ramen, and he doesn't have a star pad. He's making a fulcrum now. He will add palladium add-on for the uh, siege tanks, the phalanx. 
as it's called in Cosmonarchy. A lot of burrowed Quasilisks scattered across the map right now. And the Hydra's coming on in. Those, on the other hand, can bust the Anchor through all of the Mavericks and without any opportunity to repair. So even though the Anchor can lift off in Cosmonarchy, a similar vibe to how you would set up your Sim City does exist, at least as a theory. And that theory I'm talking about is in reference to the fact that you don't really want your defenses super far away from where your Masons can be pulled off the mineral line to repair. And because it's so far away, it doesn't really matter that it can lift off because if it gets collapsed upon, that could be really big. Now, speaking of big, the bio army is moving out and it's an okay powered squad. We are gonna see two Hydras get eliminated and he spots crucially that Nebline was massing up some Hydras over here. So all of a sudden we've got a bit of a split attack. Now again, Masons can't repair this in time. So there will be a counter attack immediately, but the Stim Mavericks come up through that little valley here just north of the, the natural, and I think that's going to be more than enough for Top Ramen to hold this. The Hydras are going to get a little bit deeper into the base. Maybe they can bust down an add-on or something, but it doesn't really seem like they'll be able to do too much more disruption. Getting on top of the production, it seems scary initially, but they're very, very low in terms of health, and Neblime's uh, micromanagement is not ideal. I think he wanted to scoop them up with the Oboleth, but that ends up getting sniped down by the Watchdogs, and that... I mean, it sounds like it's a little bit of a disaster there, but Neblime already has his third base up and running. The five worker lead that Top Ramen has accumulated through all of his quarries and, you know, his worker queues, so to speak, it doesn't really matter too much. And Neblime did admittedly get a nice scout of what's coming. He sees the double captaincy. He sees a star pad with an Anseal, presumably in the queue, since one of them has already hit, hit the deck there. We do have a third base now being landed here for Top Ramen. He will undoubtedly end up adding a quarry to that, if I had to speculate, although a lodestone could do wonders as well. Not for detection per se, but at the very least for the extra garrison. It's sort of like an anchor that you can attach to your treasury. And the treasury, by the way, the reason you make that instead of the ministry is because you want the base with tempo. You, this is cheaper, takes less time to make, but it can't train workers. That's why the quarry comes in. So here we've got two worker production queues. Here we only have one. So that's one dynamic that Top Ramen is grappling with. And he will go ahead and put the treasury down, just transfer some of his workers. And now we've got even economies for both players. And you don't really want to be even with your opponent as a Zerg. You can see here actually going for the ski backed scab. The significance of this is that you can skip this tier of the evolution entirely so Neblime wants to end the game because he's not going for the cost-efficient route. He's not going for tier two as a dedicated tech structure. The Zerg have a version of their Atlas, the tech structure here. It's called the Iral Iris. He is not making that. Neblime is going for a, maybe a, some more advantages in the, you know, tier 1.5 sort of mid-game portion as we get into that 10 minute mark. We got a pretty sizable army over here and not really that much at home to defend. That anchor not rebuilt. We have no sentinels coming online, which are a mineral heavy, uh, but not mineral exclusive. They do cost a little bit of SB now. The Sentinel, the uh, anti-surface turret, you can think of them as. Sort of like a watchdog, but it shoots down instead of up. Watchdog itself being a missile turret, but and by any other name. Now, the Anseals are starting to mass up. There is only one phalanx for crowd control. And you can see Neblime sees that he's, uh, you know, being besieged over here. And we are starting to get a healthy count of units in this situation. A Sentinel is on the way, in fact. But we're going to have a war on two fronts here. The engagement coming in. We've got Bactalisks and an evolved Hydralisk. It's going to be adept at punching holes through this sort of bio ball, but not if it gets attacked by Phalanxes. However, reinforcements are indeed going to be overwhelmed here, and that's at the rally point. Top Ramen forced to disengage and fall away because his forces coming out of the uh, production structures are not going to be enough. The quarry gets sniped down. An expensive loss means that he won't be able to replenish his worker stocks nearly as quickly as he was previously. And these units are starting to mass up. We got the Madcaps out, but they need to charge up their passive stacks by standing still and shooting to uh, get more durability and, and utility. We see the worker count starting to fall. We obviously see that Neblime is surging through the middle of the map. Very nice backstab, and I would say a little bit lackadaisical here from Top Ramen to not put down a large number of anti-surface defenses, or even any number of anti-surface defenses before the hit comes in. But the Anseal scouts it out. We've got one Sentinel. If this was three, I would be much more happy with the situation, and I'm very rarely happy about the number three. Well, Phalanx Mortar hits most of his own units here. But hey, at least he has the Phalanx. A second one coming in for the deployment. But here comes the collapse. The Zerg used to let speeding up the approach of all of the other Zerg units in the area as they crowd on in to that front line. But it's a great stagger of bio here for Top Ramen. And these front lines now gone means that the Phalanxes can just focus down all of these ranged units. The one thing you got to watch out for is the Bactylus doesn't have any armor penetration. But when in siege mode, the Phalanx has no armor. When you put it back in tank mode, it lives up to the name. Tier 2 now coming for Neblon. That's what that ping was, helpfully letting us know that the Iral Iris is on the way. 
third phalanx has arrived. A watchdog going to be dispatched towards that three o'clock position where we will see Neblime take a fourth base and a fifth as well over at 12 o'clock with nothing really there to stymie that attempt. Hasn't really recovered on the worker count front and not saturating his gas. Top ramen in the natural being a little bit lackadaisical about that. A couple of odds and ends just filtering on through. Neblime thinking about a war on multiple fronts as he tries to flank and surround. We did have that, that Mason charge up north. He will end up getting got and confusing a little bit of the attack move, but I feel like the surround is just good enough. The Zethercore is charging on in, but the Phalanxes are wisely targeted towards the ranged units instead. Now starting to turn off, and this is where you really need to start thinking about unseaging the Phalanx, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen there. Very good targeting from Top Ramen to change that, because if he was targeting his own, you know, artillery, basically, by targeting the Phalanxes, then all of a sudden some real bad stuff would start to happen. This Atrosk is going to be spotted here as, of course, that Watchdog Scout is going to be evaporated by none other than a single Quasilisk, a very unlikely hero. With tier two done, we are gonna see the Matraval Nest all the way in the back. Neblime's most favored tech structure for Zerg. He loves himself some Vilgoricors and Matroleths, sort of specialist type units that can consume the dead and turn them into brood spawn. Of course, the Matroleth also very, very potent because any unit in its aura, any ally in its aura will receive an ensnare debuff, which Basically, if I've got a Matroleth next to my Hydra and my Hydra attacks a unit, that unit that the Hydra is attacking will actually be slowed with its movement and attack speeds. So when you see the Matroleths, you do want to try to bop them as soon as possible. Top Ramen has the right kind of tools for the job, trying to consolidate so much of his protective shielding with the ant seals here, which also double as detectors. That's going to make the burrow traps that Neblime had been using a lot less efficient. He catches the drop crucially. It's not going to be destroyed because there's six Mavericks in there. You wouldn't really want to lose that kind of drop. The Trojan are probably in aggregate a little bit more valuable than all that. And a Mason has slunk off to the top left, probably to construct additional, uh, you know, scouts and such. If he knew that 12 o'clock was fully open, we could start to see a little bit different. Some different things for sure. Static defense is getting entrenched in a couple of these locations, but not, I mean, Nebulheim doesn't really have a crazy amount. And you can see here, this drop is definitely possible. There's a couple of units that are gonna end up popping out here. I'm actually not sure that it's enough. There's the stim coming in. Nebulheim gonna charge off and try to answer this with Azorius. Wisely, though, Top Ramen just going to ignore those tanks and go for the workers. This is causing some disruption. Neblime marching up, marshalling his forces at the 3 o'clock base, but that's not where Top Ramen are, is going. However, I don't think he has any idea that that's where the bulk of Neblime's army is, so he stands to very, very high chance of getting sandwiched yet again, and he's wandering on in directly into the line of sight of these circuits. So the sur anti-surface defenses are absolutely on fire now. The NCL's doing a nice job of protecting the front line, but here comes the attack from the back, and if these Zorius get on, it's as soon as they attack, everything else in nearby is going to move a lot faster. Some Anseals getting sharked around a little bit, moved around. Infantry trying to hold their ground, but the Phalanx, the artillery support, I think the combined arms, it's a 360 surround right now for Neblime. And I think this is going to be more than enough to clean this force up. But he's still holding. The Cleric's still doing their healing job. The Bactylisks got focused down by the Phalanx, it seems. Vilgorakor is not going to be enough just yet. There's still one Bactylisk over here. It does promptly get ass blasted out of the server, but we still have all of these madcaps in, and they are pretty fully charged. It's a slow boil, but Neblime does have the economy to sustain this, and he has the worker advantage as well. So even though his forces are being pushed on back, Zerg are fine trading down the army, man. I know this looks like Neblime is on a bit of a back foot, and he's, oh, he's lost the static defense structures, and, you know, he's lost a, large, a lot of his army. Here's a really big impact, though. A drop coming in with a Phalanx and a couple of Mavericks. Only one Hydralisk here to try to clean that up, and Neblime hasn't used those Zeths to charge on through. He realizes it now, he's gonna see if he can make it on through, and he should be able to clean that up relatively easily, but now he's starting to lose workers. Now we can start to be a little bit more worried for Neblime. Harakens onto the mineral line. Well, they get bombed out by the Phalanx mortars. An attempted flank coming in, but there are reinforcements after the... Who's flanking who here? Neblime is going to start to focus down these phalanxes, pulling the workers off to the side. They just get shredded by the madcaps that are fully statted at this point. Convalisks doing their best to try to turn these units into spawners, but I don't think it's going to be nearly enough. Has Neblime overstepped his boundaries? Are we going to see an upset in the very first match? Hatcheroska in not going to have any coverage there, and look at that. Neblime... Calls GG, Top Ramen, the Top Rope.
I have never seen Neblime concede the first match. Not in a long time have I seen Neblime concede the opening match. Good shit from Top Ramen. Everybody said they knew who the favorite was. I said I knew who the favorite was. Top Ramen doesn't care about who your favorite is. Writing out the map list for Taco Cake, another Zerg to offer himself at the altar of the ramen. We'll see which map he selects. It will be derelict. Okay, we'll get that hosted and get our players ready. Taco Cake now just needs to ascend. And here he is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be getting into game two very shortly. Just waiting for our players to give the ready the go ahead. And then of course that five second countdown we all know and love. All right, Top Ramen looking pretty strong. Pops on in and just says, all right, Neblime, I can hold you, do your worst. And yet here we are, Top Ramen, champion of the last match. He's in the bottom left. Still not in the top right as per his acronym, Taco Cake. That's where he's gonna rest. I really have to, I, I can't overstate how surprising that initial result is. I was just updating the scores and reflexively gave Neblime the win because that's how obvious it was. Like, yeah, of course Neblime wins. Like, he should have this guy in his back pocket. Okay, he lost once or twice, but so what? No, that's not the case. Top Ramen, the man on your screen. If he defeats the best Zerg that we have, what can Taco Cake hope for? Well, I'll shade some context in. Taco Cake here, of course, is a, a Zerg player that's only recently joined, hailing from Sweden, our first Swedish competitor to make it to one of these mainline tournaments. Obviously, it's a very America's dominated sort of group or uh, of players that we have here. We have some Euros as well. Of course, Hamster making second place perennially. Uh, the last two tournaments, the only two tournaments he's placed in, by the way, uh, he has an opportunity to make it three times getting into the grand finals. But hey, we might have a new contender all of a sudden. Neblime has won the last tournament Top Ramen with his 1200 APM. He's going to see what more he can do. But Taco Cake has played against Top Ramen. They played a sort of show match style best of five. And it did go all five games. So Top Ramen did end up losing some of those matches. He did win it in the end. And his last match did look pretty surprisingly convincing as a bit of a different style that I don't think Taco Cake was aware of. But it will be a stockade into a quarry, and the quarry gets canceled? Top Robin's planning something fishy. He moves all the way to his right side and starts a star pad. We're going to see some fast airplay, and honestly, I'm thinking it's going to be a drop. That's what I'm thinking. You know, Taco Cake is going to be like, all right, yeah, you made, I scouted your quarry. Of course you're going to finish it. Who in their right mind would... Oh, it's gone. We're going to see the pool after. The question now starts to foment. Can Top Robin drop an anchor, and hold out. Is he even going to think about doing that? Does he even have the ability to? Remember, he's not building any additional workers. He's mathed this out. It's a second star pad before anything, before any workers, before an additional Maverick. He returns with his scout worker, a crucial for his economy. Every worker is going to count. Zerg should be much more behind in workers at this point. Like, I'm talking at least behind by four workers in aggregate, and they're only behind by two. Second star pad is wild, and it's going to be Wraiths. All right. Collect ourselves here. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have six Quasilisks moving across the map. 
I think this anchor is going to be a little bit awkwardly timed, and if those Mavericks don't get re-stemmed, this risk could cost Top Ramen the game. With a cliff advantage at his back and a little bit of an awkward engage, he might even... Oh, narrowly doesn't lose that one, Quasilisk. That should definitely sound the alarm bells here for Top Ramen, but he holds his nerve and invests further into Wraiths. Now he's got the anchor coming. And Taco Cake is intimidated. The first Wraith already on the fly on the prowl. Leaving the base, that's how confident he is. He's just going to waypoint here down to the bottom right. See that burning ministry on the island. I don't even have time to talk about all the changes Derelict has received because we're about to get some more action. That Quasilisk has indeed sort of finished up here. The anchor nearly complete. Can it finish in time? Just barely. But Top Ramen has to scoot on in. He does. Now the Wraith's revealed as the Quasilisks dive on into the worker line. One of them very wounded. Here comes the stim. And now the Wraith's head out swear. He knows though. He knows. He's scrambling his workers. He's even taken a lot of them off of the minerals. Starting to figure out, oh, oh my god, I've been had. And the Wraith's now coming on in. Can the Spraith finish in time? It's not even a Vagrant yet, and he has no combat units back at home. Four pairs of Quasilisks. That's going to be more than enough to shoot this away, but they need to finish first. And it looks like they'll just barely hatch in time as three wraiths have moved on in. Proximity Cloak is active. If they move too close to enemy units, they will be seen. And you can see he only picks off a single Droleth so far. The Spraith is done. A second one for good measure. And it doesn't look like Top Ramen's cheese is going to pay off after all. How do you transition from this? Still producing wraiths. Seems to think that that's the plan. A second stockade. No quarry still. Workers, very far behind what you would normally be at this time if you kept that structure intact. All right. How's he want to handle this? He can start to pick them apart from a distance, but he needs to kite backwards in between each volley. Loses a wraith. Very early. Ooh, a second one. That was the low HP. Good target selection from Taco Cake. This is where you get a little bit fishy, right? This Kagrin going to be focused down, but there's only three wraiths to do it. He can't even finish off that one worker without taking a lot of damage on his wraiths. Gathering up. He's got two more on the side. I think this is a very unfamiliar style for our boy here. Adding a treasury and a fulcrum. Thinking about what else he wants to do. At the very least, Zerg is no longer in as position to do any damage to our Terran. So Top Ramen can continue to try to be a champion of the people here. The Wraith's hanging on by a thread, and look at that, they even catch the move out. Picking off a single Quasilisk, diving back in. Well, it could have been better on the control, but he still picks two Quasis for one Wraith. Not exactly an ideal trade, but you'll take it. And he's massing up to where one falls, two remain. Now he'll end up losing another. This trade not going nearly as well for him. But hey, he's going to force out more and more combat units, unless Taco Kick just decides to sit here. Quasi's fairly cost-efficient. Unless you really are on the ball with your Wraith Micro. And he doesn't have anything with which to Magic Box yet. He will see the Avaleth. If he's smart, he'll end up tailing that for a while because that's scouting intel. You don't necessarily want your opponent to know that your expansion's coming on down. Palladium coming. A lot of workers here for Taco Cake. He's about to surge ahead. He's got six more in production. He'll have 35 to Top Ramen's 25. Putting some hurt on the Circuit. He can stand and fight this if he wants to, but he's only got the five wraith. Nope, scratch that. Seven. Rallying some more out. Still not going idle on that. Palladium nearly complete. Wraith still massing. I feel like Taco Cake hasn't really considered this threat. If the wraiths kept on coming, if there was a third star pad thrown into the mix instead of the fulcrum, you can see here him reacting as if there's going to be some payload inside the Zavaleth, but it is not the case. Now the quarry gets in, and Taco Cake realizes, ah, oh, you canceled it. You sly dog. He's going to see the star pad count. That should make him breathe a sigh of relief. If it's three or four star pads at this point, you're in trouble. He's going to go for three pairs of skiths. Or sorry, three skiths. They're not pairs. They're individual units. But at this point, the quasi amount is okay. We're starting to breathe a sigh of relief as Taco Cake invests into some military again. Doesn't necessarily want to trade over this, though. He's going to go ahead and borrow preemptively. Doesn't know if he's within view or not. Yeah, there we go. Starting to reveal themselves. Moving across the map. The problem is these, these Quasilisks aren't going to be able to bust what he's got. I mean, he's only got some Mavericks right now. But there is a Phalanx on the way. And that is not going to be enough. Now, only three Scythricors. The Wraiths can still beat that. Question is, does Top Ramen know? This is very unfamiliar to him. Again, he hasn't done this in ever. I've never seen him play with Wraiths like this versus Zerg. 
So I'm not sure if he's familiar with how the matchups work out. Going to go ahead and drop a, lo a lobotomy mine. The anchor on the low ground, not even going to get canceled. So that's some free money there for Taco Cake. Wraith's coming on back. They will end up encouraging the Avaleth to get lost here, I think. Not on an attack move, though, so never mind. Oh, maybe he'll... Yeah, okay, he's going to pick it now. That's the right move. Taco Cake, somebody who is known for his love of drops. And on top of the drops, he's also known for his love of air units. He has gone for the Ski Back. In addition to the Skither Core, the flying unit that you saw earlier, he's going to have access to the Bactalisks. They weren't enough for Neblime, but... Oh, look at that. He's he's actually blown up his own uh, add-on there. That was definitely a mistake. Nerve setting in for Top Ramen. He defeated his nemesis in Neblime. But I think he's looking a lot more mortal now. His uh, cheeky strategy did not go up. He doesn't want to show Neblime what he's capable of. Not in a standard game anyway. And the Bactalisks are going to be a hell of a lot better at dealing with those wraiths than the Quasis were. The Quasis were already pretty good anyway, as you can see. Instantly popping two more. Putting damage on the rest. Skits hugging the side. Rebuilding that quarry, all you can do. Anseal's coming out now. And you know what? Two star pad Anseal, very gas intensive. But if you want to spike right back up and use the rates for harassment like what he's doing right now, it's not a bad shout. Going to go ahead and unfurl his phalanxes. He will end up spotting the army move out here with the Anseals. Needs to pull away from that. He's losing all the energy on his Anseals. In fact, some of them might end up popping here. Now is the time for Taco Cake to target not just the Anseals, but the phalanxes as well. However, he takes a very bad engage walking on through. The rates heckling more and more of his production. Mostly just to be annoying. No workers really in danger at the third, as it is going to go ahead and finish up. Finding a little pocket to be annoying from. Taco Cake now uh, trying to figure out what to do in reaction to that as Hydras are going to sneak on forward and start to put a punish in. Staying on top of it, Top Ramen. Keeping a couple of them alive just to be annoying. Throw your opponent off. In, in the macro sense, I think Top Ramen is a superior player. So the question is just going to come down to whether or not he can get to that point, right? Taco Cake, his understanding of the game, he hasn't played enough at Tier 2. He hasn't played enough, especially at Tier 3. I think Top Ramen, as far as the Tier 2 stuff is concerned, he kind of knows what he wants. At least initially in this matchup. Still no third base on the way, but he is going to go ahead and complete the move out. And again, back at home, just a single anchor with four Mavericks and a very paltry force that are going to accompany them on the way out. His move out's going to be spotted here. Was Taco Cake paying attention in that Neblime game? Does he know how successful that his predecessor's moves were? Still not actuating those skiths. There's no anti-air defenses. He doesn't know it. Yeah, I think what we're going to see is that counterattack foment. But if Taco Cake is a little bit too slow, he might be tempted to pull back instead. He's going to charge in here thinking he's going to go ahead and pivot towards the natural. But I don't know if he's really going to do it. Oh, okay. You know what? You're totally fine conceding this treasury if you're in Top Ramen's shoes. Except you're not because you're pulling back. But I was going to say, if Top Ramen wanted to just commit to it, we could have been into a base race situation. And that treasury would have bought a lot of time. This is the most unlikely of all lobotomy mines, and yet it still finds efficaciousness. The Anseals swirling on by. Here we go. What more can they do? Covering that phalanx. All right. Well, you're going to end up losing the treasury. It doesn't have as much armor or health, and it's not being repaired. A little bit slow on the draw there for Top Ramen. I think he's going to be put into an all-in position from this point forward. Before he ends up going down. Mortar from the Phalanx is not exactly helping, but the Anseal count is high. And you don't even need to siege up in this situation. Not versus the Bactalisks. Coming on in here, but this is just suicide. Hydras might be able to pick a single Phalanx. Not quite. And the skits never needed to be actuated anyway. A ministry coming down on location. Needs that extra armor. Needs that extra health. Fourth base now starting to foment here for Taco Cake. But he hasn't really even saturated his third, though. You can see the macro slip-ups here. Taco Cake, a much more aggressive player. Top Ramen decided to throw himself into the mud first. And Taco Cake soon decided to slink on after him. 20 Hydras. It's going to be five Bactyls pretty soon. But I don't know if pretty soon is soon enough. Here come the Anseals, charging on forward way too fast. And yet, here we go. Top Ramen's going to start losing them all. A big misplay to lose already three, four, four out of six Anseals. That's a big whiff. Now, suddenly, Taco K can overwhelm this force. The Phalanx is only now sieging up. Big, big hits can happen. You want to target these Hydras more than anything. That's the armor pen. 
Bactalisks, nice, some nice shots as well. But there's nothing here to peel for the Phalanxes now, and they will fall. All because of the four Anseals that just got picked with nothing, no reaction. Top Ramen definitely playing to a different level here than what we saw previously. Now starting to put down the anchor. It's been a bloody, messy game. And no economic damage inflicted. I gotta say that with, like, the black clap emoji each, in between each word. Skithercore is coming in now for harassment. Not gonna amount to too much there, but the Mavericks will end up dying. I don't like this piecemeal approach that Taco Cake has to the rest of it, but he might... Oh, he doesn't even pick the tank! And look at this. The Cleric trying to keep these Masons alive for a little bit longer. My god, man. A couple of watchdogs in reaction, so forcing out some more minerals. Much needed minerals at this point in the game. We have the Atlas done, but he doesn't have anything that's using it yet. That's the key detail. No captaincies. Nothing. No sentinels, even. Mason going to get bopped on the way out, but that's a pretty important scout. We can actually move forward with that. You want to make five Bactalisks in my face, buddy? You ain't going to get very far with that. Need to see a cancel come out here, but it looks like instead, Top Ramen wanted to, uh, or Taco Kick rather, wanted to, to go somewhere else, but no. He's going to see if he can come on through. Couple Drolets for good measure. Why not? Combat workers at this stage in the game, count me in. If Jack Elanski were here, he would make Gosvaleths. But that would require tier two, and I, yeah, we still don't have that for Taco Cake. <laughs> Now we've got the captaincies coming. Are we just going to see a very delayed version of the same composition that Top Ramen was using? I don't know. That combat worker was not to be. Now a lot more Bactalisks coming and in a lot of a safer position as well. A horde of Zeths for the front line. Going to use that splash against you. Anseals don't protect against your own shots. Splash included. Peeling off Masons on occasion isn't really the worst thing in the world, but building on out on, on location like this, that's going to hurt. That's 250 minerals, man. Or 250 resources. A little bit of gas now, too. All's quiet for the time being. Besides that one man that just got massacred. Does he count? He was a worker. Workers are made to be massacred. Well, a bit of a multi-pronged attack over here, coming in from the south. And again, the Anseal's not in the best of positions, particularly with regards to the Phalanxes. You can see them all start to go down, and this is an overwhelming force. I think Taco Cake has more than done it this time. Overwhelming Top Ramen. A series of bad decisions on the macro side, and 22 Hydras to follow it up. We are going to see a crushing defeat. This one Maverick cannot stave off all of what we have. That anchor will fall. Top Ramen has realized his gambit did not play out. He did not play like the favorite. He played like a cheeky some bitch. And sometimes cheeky some bitches get slapped. Zerg versus Zerg will be up next. Neblime to take on Taco Cake. Well, that means that uh, if Neblime wins this match, we'll all be tied up. And if we go again the same way, we'll get that FFA decider. It's entirely possible. And it'll be Fata Morgana for game three. Oh shit, Hapsay is here. Yo, what's up, dude? Hello? Hi. Oh god, let me turn off your stream so I don't uh so I don't have the echo. Dude, what is happening? I Top don't know. Ramen beats Niblime and then Taco Cake beats Top Ramen? <laughs> yeah, the Star the Pad upsets. cheese, you know? That did not the work upset. out. Yeah, that really did not work out for him.
I don't... I don't know. Like, I feel like Zerg has a better answer to the uh, Wraith stuff than Protoss does in the, that scenario, because he was so blindsided by it, and he didn't really take any damage. I think he lost, like, one drone, right? Yeah, well, also, the he was blindsided about it until he attacked with the Quasis and found a nice timing, and then the Wraiths had to be used for defense, so they still had to go all the way across the map, so it was a yeah, little rough, that, that right? was that was kind of unlucky for sure. Yeah, he just like walked in there. I, right. He used the shambler tactic, dude. That's right. That's right. Hey, just just walk three zealots in there, dude. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I yeah. guess I guess that could work. Taco cake in the top left. Neblim in the top right. Now he picked Fata Morgana, and he's known as a guy who doesn't like this map, in the sense that he he will say, hey. This map you, is where you lock people in and throw a knife at them like a phone booth. This He thinks this map being the shortest yeah, rush Neblime distance. Says. Yeah, 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 Neblim says yeah, that yeah. this is a real, really tight map. So he's going for the seven yeah, pool. He's, he's going for the seven pool. Yeah, he's trying to all in. Oh, yeah. It is pretty hard to micro melee units in in the Brood War engine. They, they're very not smart, if that, I, I guess, is what I would say. Like, sure, yeah. Target selection is sometimes off. Yeah, and they'll do the thing where, like, they'll get into range of the enemy unit, and they kind of, like, stop, and then they start their attack, so you can, like, bait the enemy melee units into not attacking you by, mm. like, stopping as they get into range of you and then moving again real quick. Yep, kiting can definitely be a pretty big win here. Now, look at that. There was a little bit of a, a droll F wait, cancel. Wait. How does he have four larvae? Yeah, he canceled one of the wor the the worker he was making. And now he's got four larvae. Oh. Neblime's going to notice that. There's no way that he doesn't see that. I didn't know you could do that. That's yeah. super cool. Yeah. Yeah, and in oh, StarCraft have, by default. He's going to have way more. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And Neblime should probably just... I mean, he needs to keep making his own in case there's a move out. But he can't go across the map with his seven pool. And his economy... It's a little bit he's better because he started to three workers, yeah, yeah. Taco or he's ahead three workers, right? I mean. He went for the earlier pool and then scouted and saw that. Oh, you're doing that trick. Well, I'm not going to worry about it. Well, we'll see. Taco Cake wants to see if he can turn this on as far as the aggression goes. I mean, he's got to have Taco more units. Cake, who I practiced against, and he had some cool. He had some cool strategies that he was like. Don't share these replays. I don't want anybody <laughs> to know that I was doing this stuff. And I was like, all right, all right. I think it was him. It was it was one of the Zerg, one of the newer Zerg players. Oh, is Art of Turtle? I'm sorry. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, Taco Cake did a kind of similar thing at one point. Well, here's the initial engagement. Oh. Better focus fire for Taco Cake initially. Here comes a worker to try to frustrate up the though. ramp. This yeah. is crazy. Very aggro. Very aggro. He does have the expansion started, and he does have a drone down there ready to make a cagrant. I guess is what yeah. he wants. Oh wait, that's an blind shot. Yeah, that was a scout <laughs> worker. <laughs> He borrowed uh -huh. it. So back in the day, we called that the shambler. You borrow the in the shambler, choke. Dude. Yeah, the shambler strat. You you borrow in the choke. I don't think it's a very efficient use of your worker because you want that for money, right? It's like the same yeah, logic of like nah. when you're trying to in in StarCraft 2, it's like, oh, I've got my scout pro uh, probe, but I'm going to, you know, I'm going to need to recall that or something for my money, right? Like you wouldn't want to just lose it if you don't have to. Oh, my God. Taco Kick is getting murdered right now. Yeah, faster reinforcement point and a little bit more. All right, dude on the military side, as far as the numbers go. He's gonna make the Kagrant pretty far away from the ramp, because he didn't make the, uh, that's the that's the danger of the low ground hatch here first. Yeah, and Niblime was confident in taking his low ground because he won the fight on his ramp. Yep. And knew his army was a little bit ahead. Well, the good news is I, there's it, only two pairs, of, there's only one pair of Zets, so they can't exactly burn down this hatch. And on the extremities, Taco Cake can try to just pick apart the uh, first couple quasis here and fall back. But those that's we'll keep keep working on it. I don't know. Ooh, he's just not microing very well. Well, he can overwhelm this now, so at least then he's. I think he's held it actually, because there's only two more quasis coming, and I don't think they can finish this off. True, true. But he made Zeths instead of drones. Yeah, I feel like that's a bit of a mistake. But he has but a lot he, of money. He's kind of so. he's kind of putting himself into a hole, you know, like. Digging the hole deeper. The worker counts like haven't changed since the seven. I know. <laughs> they're so low on drones. This is silly. That's exactly what will happen in ZVZ this sometimes. Is, is Brood War ZVZ, though, for sure. No. Yeah, Zeths are insanely good when they actually hit things. Yeah, absolutely. They can put out a lot of DPS. 
So more posturing. Worker count rising for both players, but a little bit faster for Neblime. He's got a uh, K-Grint, and that's going to help him defend for any run buys that happen. But right now, he's doing a pretty good job the, containing. The double K-Grint is rough, because like, you, you spend your drones on that, and yeah. your drone count is already so low. And that's well, it's technically triple, because he made a safety one back in the main, right? So he's definitely behind here. Yeah, no, that's pretty rough. You, can you hold more than one K-Grint inside of an Overlord? No, only one. It fills no, up the whole okay. thing. And you can't lift it with, with that... You have to upgrade the Avaleth into a higher tier transport in order to grab the uh, base defense if it's, or it's mutated. Oh, uh, okay. Is that like tier two or is yeah. it still in tier one? No, it's tier two. But you can burn down the Circuit and then, you know, it turns back into a Kagrin after. You just have to remorph it. So. Uh, I was thinking maybe he could do like a triple overlord and yeah. then go drop the static defenses in the main ground on top of the ramp. That could be a pretty good play. I mean, uh, Art of Turtle tried to do that a little bit uh, when he was first starting off playing. He fa found a strategy where he put put it right on the ramp and then use it as a wall, basically. <laughs> Niblime is doing something kind of weird here. He has two workers on the big gas and one worker on the littler gas. Is that more efficient or less efficient than it's the, three on the big gas? It's generally the same, but sometimes the pathing is like more efficient for the ridge. And so you'll go for the ridge before you fully saturate the geyser. Okay. Yeah, the lime's up ten workers, nine, ten workers. That's it's pretty crazy. That's the Yakers. That's 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 kind of insurmountable. I feel like. Well, there is a last hail mary opportunity here, and it's the amount of Vespine that Taco Cake is harvesting, combined with the fact that he's going for the pool upgrade. That's going to afford him the Nather cores. Yeah. The Nather cores. Yeah, the flyers. Uh, no. You know, hamster flashbacks. I know. But uh, yeah, I'm having PTSD. I don't know. I mean, Neblime has a lot of his units on this side of the map. So if he, I guess, ne okay, Taco K is going to go for that one, two punch he likes. But the problem is you can just camp these circuits and the quasis will never be able to move through, right? So he's doing it, dude. He's making the Nath, of course. Only three of them though right now. Not really that many. Yeah, he's got, he's got time for more. I mean, he's got a couple of Zeths puzzlingly put up in the top. I think that was a misclick. Not pulling them away. He was probably, those were probably supposed to be Nath, of course. <laughs> yeah, it could have been. Yeah, the rally, right? He's really all in on this idea. This has to work for him or he's done for it. And it looks like Neblime is pretty ready. He's already positioned some units in the main base just for the possibility of something like this. Yeah, just one quasi on the patrol path. You know, it, it's very short by air distance, right? And the Hydras are going to trade super better with the army quasis. just wins, right? Like, Hydras are really strong. Yeah, and he's even got the Quasis and Hydras in the right spot for the uh, Mineral Line, right? So these six Naths are unlikely to do critical damage. You can also just burrow away from the air units anyway, so that's another component. I guess the Nath, of course, do win the fight, but at what cost? Oh, at they're derping cost? out. They're not doing anything. They're doing the thing I was talking about that melee units do, where they just go, Nope, I'm not doing anything. I think they may have received uh, Psionic Warfare Command. Neblime decided to t tell them to not attack. Hell yeah. Well, he scouts eight more, so he knows that there's definitely an all-in moving over here. I like how he popped some cope drones. He, like, made a couple of drones. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, Taco so Cake did? Yeah. Like, no, dude. <laughs> he's going for the shroud. Maybe some lurkers will make him not just die instantly, but, like, I feel like he's so far behind. Yeah, as soon as you're, you see that happen, you take a third base from Neblon's POV, right? And then you just... Yeah. I mean, you can also just crush this if you get a lot of Hydras in your own detection out. He's got his own Zorkids, he too. He can just make back to Lisks, right? He just has to upgrade the Hydrath den. Yep. Yep, that's right. I think that he would be able to crack this pretty easy with back to Lisks. I do like the, the patrol path that the Nats are on. At the very least, it's going to stop like a drop or something, but that's pretty much the only thing that Taco has going for him right now. How many naths does it take to kill the uh, the spore, the, the spray? Oh, he could do it. But there's two of them, mm -hmm. so probably not. Yeah, I think eight will kill mm, that. True. It did it's receive like plus one armor kind of recently, so. They don't have any armor pins, so yeah, they kind of get nerfed by that three armor on the structure. We're going to double the army oh, supply. Nice little cancel on the third base. That's pretty much, uh, listen, small victories here, Hup. And it's four circuits, but no real units Ooh. here to defend. And the units coming yeah. out are tanks, but the tanks are oh. going to get busted by the Hydras. The Zorius, dude. Let's go. Let's see. Zorius supremacy. Well, Come they're kind of working out. Transform the K-Grints again. Transform the K-Grints again. There we it is. This, so you can live. 
He's oh, holding. Hey, oh. he, he holds, man. I think Nebline is a bit. Advantage. He's yeah. I think Nebline's a little bit overly cautious here, but. Oh no, the gnats are coming. Yeah. They're gonna die. That was pretty bad for Nebline, even though he was so ahead. I, I guess there's like no coming back from this because he's trading from like a massive economy advantage. So yeah. he's like, okay, I'm good now. Like. You have nothing left. I can go back home and come back for wave two in a little bit. Yeah, or I can just keep up the pressure here. Bursts down another one of those anti-surface defenses, but... Ah. Got more and more yeah, hydras really coming. Yeah, really, stay alive indefinitely? Unless or... they're uh, separated from a unit that spawns them, so... Okay. Like, if the Zoryus moved away or died, then the Rokor would die too. But here's the committal. I think that's going to be it for our boy Taco. He does not have the ability to move any forward. They are pretty I good. I think the Zoryus were not the greatest choice here. I think yeah, look at his gas bank, right? Would have been nice, yeah. right? Yeah. They're called lurkers, still, right? You didn't change the name. No, they're Lachizalus. But that's okay. Lachizalus, excuse me. Yeah. How could you forget Zoryus the left, dude? Uh, yeah, my bad. <laughs> the Zoryus the left and the Lachizalus, excuse me. All right, Taco Cake's on a little bit of cope here. He's going to burrow all the drones in the natural. Yeah, he realizes it. GG, no coming back from that. Nebline will get on the board. And it's weird to say that because that was the third game. It's, it's it's We're on track for that FFA, right? Yeah. How does that happen? Yeah, so now Top Ramen beats Nebline, Taco Cake beats Top Ramen, and then Nebline beats Top, uh, Taco Cake, and then we get that. Basically, the same thing happens. <laughs> we're all good. Or, I mean, it can happen the other way. Like, if, if uh, Nebline beats Top Ramen... And then, uh, you know, Taco Cake beats Nebline in the rematch, and then Top Ramen beats Taco Cake. Then we can still have it happen. There's still a couple steps to go through. But, uh, hey, we'll take right, that. I want to get in the next game before I go to the bathroom. Sounds it, good. Are the, are the maps, like, predetermined in, the, in this stage? Like No, no. Uh, the, the one who's challenging, so in this case it'll be Top Ramen, will select the next map. Oh, okay. And so that will be... Dude, if Top Ramen bops Nebline again, that'll be hype. I know. Come on. I, I don't want to see him do that Wraith stuff again. That was bad. <laughs> it did not work out for him. Just waiting on Top Ramen here to select our next map. It'll be the fourth match of like the day. I feel like the Wraiths are really mm -hmm. good versus Protoss, but I feel like they're not very good versus Zerg. Because they're not very good versus Zerg or Terran because the Maverick is like your early game unit that you spam a lot of, and it's right. very cheap and not gas intensive, and it's an anti-air unit. And then the Zerg has the Quasilisks, which are a mineral-only unit that you spam and you get yeah. a lot of, so they don't, like, hurt your, like, teching, you know? Like, Protoss' answers to the Wraith is, like, hurting their ability to tech. Hup's map's out of date. Shake me, what, it, what, it, did I do something wrong? No, you're fine. He's just like, commenting that you're downloading the map, and like, which means you don't have the local file, but it's it's not that big of a deal. Oh, okay. You, so you're using I the new file launcher, right? Else. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've updated plenty of times. Okay. Yeah, how are you liking that, by the way? A lot better than... Uh, it's, the... it's great having a launcher for the game that I don't have to do firewall exceptions for. Yeah, it does it for you. I've actually gotten, like, two or three new people to download the game. They haven't really played, but, like, they've downloaded yeah, the game. Yeah. That's so. the first step. All right, All it'll right, be... I'm going to go to the bathroom. Go ahead, sir. Thank yeah. you. We are getting into yeah, our fourth yeah. match here. It's going to be Top Ramen in the top left, which is not top right, but, you know, close enough. And Neblime in the bottom right. Rematch of the first map. Top Ramen took it on Axiom. He selects this map, the Purgatory. A map by Vig7. And that means that we will absolutely see some shenanigans, some strategy. Already getting his gas for his patented stockade into Quarry, I'm guessing. I think what Lucy said as well is definitely true. If Nebline loses this for memes, the only thing that might happen that would be bad is uh, if Taco Cake uh, doesn't defeat Top Ramen after, then Top Ramen will just start winning the group. So <laughs> got to be a little bit careful about your um, sandbagging. This is Neblime's time to shine. He is going to go for the low ground hatch on the Purgatory. It's a map with kind of a wide you know, gap between... Your uh, main and natural there, right? So that's a, a bold choice, I would say. 
I hope Pup left his uh, idle view of like Top Ramen's base or something on his stream. That would be pure Kino, of course. But I'll just keep talking to everybody who happens to be tuning in. We got the Cory coming online here for Top Ramen. The stockade about to finish. No scout coming out from Nebelheim. Can't afford it. I'm going to go for the pool after the hatch. So it'll be, I think that was a 9 hatch 11 pool. Could have been 10 hatch, though. Alrighty, I am back. Welcome, sir. It's fairly basic openers here, but the one wrinkle is that Neblime's expansion being on the low ground is more vulnerable to early action. We'll see if Top Ramen can get anything done with that. I think this is the most defendable natural base of the entire map pool, though. The only question I would have about that is whether or not you can actually reinforce. And look at this, just out of vision, I think. No, he's pulled workers, he sees it. Not quite just out of vision. <laughs> And some good damage <laughs> onto that first Maverick with the Worker Scout, so this could be uh, this could be interesting. We'll see what ends up happening. The only problem is he dives on backwards. No, oh, they can still the reach him with the range. Rush. They can still reach him with the range. Oh. It's not going to finish. Oh. Well. Wow. All right. That's troll. It kind of is, but it delays the... Uh, he can cancel this at any time, and it delays the, uh, the workers from mining, and then also puts down a Kagrin. He's not going to press the issue, though. Mm -hmm. I think it's better to just fall back because you can see that Niblime is making a couple of Quasilisks in the K-Grant. Yeah, crucially, we he did make them from his natural home, so. expo, right? Like, if you, if you make him from the he, main, yeah, that would be much more... He, he probably feels okay. Like, all right, well, this didn't work out. I lose one SCV, it's fine. Yep, yeah. One I don't mean to be a well dick or anything, game. but this isn't StarCraft 2. Yeah, but it's also not StarCraft Brood War. That's right. It's epic. This is, this is Cosmonarchy. We even dropped the it's Brood War suffix, so you don't have to pretend you're playing Brood yeah, War. Yeah, it's not even called Brood War anymore. <laughs> have you ever seen this unit, Bo Hater? Oh, he's got Hater also, in the name. Also, like, are you, are you mad enough that you think I should change my, my stream category to Brood War when this is clearly not Brood War, right? Okay, okay. No worries, no worries. Anchor coming Th up. This here. is the... This is the group stages for the uh, Acropolis tournament for Cosmonarchy. That's right. And uh, I'm watching the group uh, before my group. Yeah. Good so I'll up. be playing in like an hour, right? Maybe like an hour. Uh, it depends on. It looks like we're gonna start at. Oh, it looks like two hours from now, actually. So. Two hours? Really? We'll see if everybody's here early. We can do it early, but. Okay. okay. A couple. No a couple matches here. Left to be played, of course. This will be the halfway point for the group, potentially. So, we'll see how it goes. I think we're guaranteed at least four more games, no matter what happens, based on the opening. So, Really? Because it's 1-1-1? One, one, one. Yeah. Because norm so normally what will happen is somebody can go like 4-0. And this is what happened in the previous two yeah. groups. Somebody goes 4-0 and the other players uh, both lose their first two matches to that undefeated guy. And then they play basically mm -hmm. a best of three. So, that's uh, seven total matches. Unless... One of them two O's in the best of three, right? Then it's only six. Okay. But we can't have that as a possibility anymore because they've all gone at least one win on the board. And again, Top like Ramen in a very the, un uh, unsurprising The way. double Quasilisk burrow in front of the base. Yes. The extra layer of, like, I get to see you moving out, you know? I wonder what the thought process was there. We do have double Larvos, though. Neblime really finding some utility for that. I was thinking nobody was using it. I was like, huh, I wonder what'll happen if I, you know, reduce its gas cost a little bit. And I'm glad I didn't, because now everybody and their mother's starting to make make it work in the early The game. what? The Larvos. It's like the one oh, the, yeah, yeah. the version thing that, that produces creates. extra yeah. larva. Wasn't that tier two previously? Yeah, it was way back it was tier one, then it became tier two, and now it's tier one again, but it costs like 125 gas, so it does put you I feel like it's really strong to be able to build something that like gives you a hundred to fifty percent more larva like that like it but it's fair right because terran has the query and protoss has the embassy to do that similar thing while they're on a lower base count yeah and when you see that coming you know that you're trying to like kind of min max your mineral count early on and uh mm -hmm. do so at the expense of getting tech early right that's the thought process anyways because they cost so much vespine delays your 900 gas costing tier two structure so Rue. Oh, the Avalath is going to get picked here. 
He's gonna have to force a stim out, but that's fine. That's definitely oh, worth. Oh, Marines are so fast when they're stimmed. It's insane. <laughs> yeah, we increase the stat buff because there's like a delay before the buff kicks in. And look at this, six Boom minute Atlas. War. Six minute really? Atlas. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's something I've noticed about Top Ramen's play is that like, he already has this like pathway towards tier two mapped out way better than any of the other Terran players. Like, no, I don't. I don't even think when I played Nablime a bunch when he was playing Terran, did I feel like he had it had it like this mapped out? Yeah, and it's not like he's been super passive on the idea, right? He's just on the other side of the map. He sniped the scout, mm -hmm. and then denying that scout going in straight into tier two, but still being on he's the other side of the map. Finally, gonna walk over that yeah. <laughs> that extra Quasilisk too. Yeah, pretty big. It doesn't look like there's a third base in sight here for Neblime. He is going to go for that Avaleth. He's even popping one of his Kagrants. I'm not sure. Oh, he's going to prepare to move them out with the Avaleth. I think that's what he's doing. Oh, um, he's okay. okay. He only now canceled the attack on that rightmost one. I thought he was going to blow it up. That would have been egg on face. Every time Neb Neblime does some kind of really funny like mistake, I always end up somehow catching it. <laughs> he has a comment on it about like every time. It happens every time. Like I'm looking at these idle workers. Ah, oh, Neblime figured it out. And then he fixes it. Yeah. <laughs> you have the caster cursing yourself every time. You know, these watchdogs on the outside of the base, he's being so careful. What is he worried about with these watchdogs? Um, this is probably just to spot the Ovaleths coming in for a scout. Sometimes Neblime will go for drops. Neblime has never, and I'm sure he has plans around it, but he has never gone for skiffs and he has never gone for Naths. So the airplay that Taco Cake tried to do in the end of the uh, last mm -hmm. game... Neblime is just, I, he seems to almost sneer at that a little bit, like there's no way that works. And, you know, sometimes it can, uh, but it's not, he's not the guy to do it. And I'm sure he's got pocket strats because the way that he practices is not at all the way that he uh, will prep for a tournament. He has all these pocket strats, I think. In yeah, general. I think he has like ideas that he doesn't yeah. really like practice and execute. He just thinks about them like, okay, I'll try this thing. Yes, yeah, the theory. That, that's something that I feel like uh, me as a player, I have a pretty hard time with like off the hat strategies. Mm. I'm a very like preparation based player where it's like, I need to like practice this and do this or when I do it, I'm not going to do it very well. Yep. And I, I definitely think that you can see some of the weaknesses there from Neblime when he does try his uh, more off the hat strats. But if it happens to work out, you know, it catches his opponent off guard, then maybe he can still mm -hmm. navigate freestyle his way back out. It's definitely interesting to see that. We did almost see a surround and Neblime was really good on Axiom with that. We've got a Trojan out for a drop. That was really so. strong. You know, I think he would have been able to win. Was that the first match they played? Yeah, they yeah. were. For the, when he had that big surround, I think he could have won there. But there was that one ramp that he was coming down where his units were like really like choked up and like mm. stuck on that ramp as they came down the ramp. And the, the tank, the phalanx, was yeah. able to just do thousands of damage yes. as the units tried to run down that ramp. And I was like, ay, yeah, yeah, it is rough. Yeah, the Watchdogs are going to pick the Avaleth as well. So there it goes. But he'll get a little bit of an incomplete scout. He sees the star pad. Oh, oh. does Neblime see this Trojan that just flew over his random Zergling in the middle <laughs> of ne ne Neblime's, like, map vision and, like, his spread of units is crazy, to be honest. Like, yeah. I don't see anybody else doing this kind of stuff. Like, he, he really has, like, a much stronger, like, map control-y type play. What's up, Griff Grifter? <laughs> what the hell, dude? That's a grift. Well, here comes the attack. It's it's on a uh, base that isn't saturated. He's not even going to bother deigning to uh, to continue it. And actually, he's he's pulled some of the units away from the natural, but here we go. The reaction is going to come on in. And I don't think the Strojan can actually accomplish too much. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. The, the, the madcaps here are actually fully stacked because of their attacks onto the Hatros. It was actually a little bit of a, I don't want to say genius move, but a cute move to get them fully statted. They ended up trading a lot more cost efficiently. This has allowed Neblime to concede the rest of the map and Top Ramen is thinking about moving on in. He only has the one Phalanx on the field. That's definitely a weak point to his arsenal, but he can use these Anseals to protect versus the high ground static defense. And the Hydras, sure, they're gonna be somewhat powerful. Unfortunately, the first two mortars wasted on Zethrocores that are getting chewed up by the Madcaps and Mavericks. So that's not gonna go very well at all. And the Phalanx even getting torn up afterwards. Reinforcement one coming on in. Another rally of units going to try to clear the third and a Watchdog Scout for the rest of the map. But Neblime is going to go up to four bases and Top Ramen does not have a third one started. He's got his Ministry on the way, but not on location. No, it is on location. It's in a cheeky little spot here at three o'clock. Who would have guessed? Mutat Spire just about finished since Neblime did indeed go to tier two. We will be seeing that as his 
modus operandi. I'm not sure if he's going to be going for Mutas or if he's going to go for... No, it's going to be Sikralisk. Interesting. He must have been thinking about what Art of Turtle was doing in the pre one of the previous groups there. Watchdog will be uh, shoon, away, shoon away by that. Hey, some of these uh, aren't actually finished as far as the mutations go. One of the circuits immediately getting blown down. That's Gortrith, the next target. One more Phalanx Mortar will definitely do it if it is even necessary. No. Anseal's already burned down on their en energy, though. Spent a lot of energy trying to get the Kagrants to, uh, you know, burn down those static defenses. we got three more Phalanxes coming, though. That could be a really big shout here. Only one Phalanx to start this fight, but suddenly he's got three more. Nebloim has to be really careful here. He can clump up a lot of his units, but he has burned through the Anseal energy. The Cleric's doing their best as well, trying to hold their ground, but there's the nice spread of damage from the Phalanxes. we got another Anseal that needs to get onto those units post-haste, but it might not even matter. All of the Sikralisks going down, and suddenly Nebloim at a very big disadvantage when it comes to the military. Sentinels are finished back at the natural. I'm not so sure that Top Ramen can make the push happen. Oh, there's a good, nice hit. Phalanxes are going to get focused down here, though. Only one of them falling so far. The Cleric's trying their best to patch it up. The Anseals are here. Good splash damage from the Sikralisks to burn through that Anseal energy, and I think that's where a lot of this push is going to be held at an arm's length. Remember, the economy, very, very good for Nebline by comparison. Upsaya having to bow out for now. We'll catch up with him a little bit later. Okay, I uh, forgot that I had uh, Street Fighter stuff to do with the homies. So, oh, okay. Uh, I'll gotcha. be back for my group time. Sounds good, man. Thanks for popping in and spreading the word, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Have a good day, man. I'll talk to you later. See you soon. Still sieging from afar, trying to provoke these units from coming on in. But hey, the Scorchers finished. They get plus one range. That's enough for them to range down those Phalanxes. Still, really good splash damage and army management. But you got to trade so cost efficiently from the Terran POV. He's only now establishing his third base, and he's not even mining Vespine from it. He, a Phalanx might even go down here. Very, very good on the try to fall back approach here. But here comes the Sikralisks and Hydras from the low ground, and they're going to burst down the rest. There are no Anseals here. They've been destroyed by all the Sikralisk splash. And yet still, Nebline being a little bit careful. Protathalor is now to range down the infantry from afar. That little secret base at 3 o'clock might start paying out dividends for Top Ramen. He has saturated it quite nicely. So he is still in this in terms of the economy, despite having a much poorer worker count. Going to add a second star pad. Needs more ant seals. That's his idea of the approach. A nice little drop going to be situated over here to try to cancel this base in the bottom left. Instead of even trying it, though. Okay, no, never mind. He's going to come back in. But we have a nice reaction here. And there's still a nice force over here as well, so we're not going to see that ramp get broken. One Maverick, the only casualty so far. The Hydra's going to start putting a little bit chip damage onto the Trojan. Only one Spraith and one Circuith down here. Absolutely can be attacked. Is it going to be, is the question. Trojan will eh, not fall, not quite. Looks like most of the units are going to abandon ship over here. Phalanx. It's going to go ahead and deploy, see if it can get some shots off onto the workers. Only killing one before it goes down. Regrettable. We've got to move out targeting this bottom left position. I know that Top Ramen doesn't want this game to end in a, a macro turf war, so to speak. He's going to go ahead and deploy his phalanxes on the foot of the ramp. They have enough range to shell these... Hydras from afar, another one coming on in, but here comes a sandwich, and again, there's just, it's such an understrength army at this point. The reaction to use Sikralisks to burn down all the Anseal energy early on has definitely been an astute one from Neblime. But, admittedly, there were less Anseals than before, with only a single star pad. Now we've got two star pad Anseals, so we could see a little bit more power come out of Top Ramen, if he has enough time to mass up, and again, this base has gone unscouted for as good as... Neblime's vision is on the map. He has completely neglected that. Been kept at attention elsewhere. The space not yet being saturated as far as Vespine goes. Top Ramen not interested in Tier 3. Can say the same for Neblime. And to answer the map pick question, this was a pick by Top Ramen. He was the challenger after being uh, bowled over by Taco Cake earlier in a surprising turn of events. And these units are going to come in. They're completely skipping the third base location, which is only now getting a single Sentinel to defend it. Reinforcements could discover it. I'm not so sure that's exactly what's going to happen. We do have six Anseals out. There aren't so many Sikralisks with this force. 
Nebleim is going to have to reinvest into those if he wants in. In fact, he has no Cyclil... Okay, he's got two Cyclilisks with the sort of primary army that he's trying to put together. And here he goes. He's going to attempt to collapse in. But the Anseal count is very nice. Not so many on the bio. Right? We only have uh, 11 Madcaps. They can definitely do some damage. And here comes the engagement with Azorius to lead the charge. That's going to get everybody else sped up in. And this collapse is going to be absolutely mind-melting. The Anseals need to get out of dodge just to see if they can hold on for dear life. But it's not going to happen. They're going to stand their ground and go down with the ship. That's a full wipe and an infested Phalanx. An infested Anseal on the top of it all. Look at that. Well, this base is still uh, unperturbed over here. Sentinels galore. No anti-air. But maybe he's going to rely on the bio for that. Very ground-focused composition here. And Sentinels coming in. I don't know. It's looking pretty good right about now. Nebli might be able to crush him here. He's got more units streaming in from the middle of the map. And the Sentinels were not enough. The Infested Sentinel coming out as well. Top Ramen concedes, and that will be Neblime revenge for the opener. All right, Taco Cake now has an opportunity here. It'll be Impetus, Germination, or Titan Forge, uh, or Sideshow, that's also an option. Uh, the replay will be fine. Oh, wait, you were saying replay? Oh, <laughs> I see. I see. I thought you were talking about the replay file. It'll be Impetus selected by Taco Cake. He's got a plan. Well, EUD, uh, Neblime is somebody who has, let's just say he's, uh, yeah, the king of the workers. That's what the beaver says. The Cicralisk adaptation to deal splash damage to the Anseals kind of forces the Terran to then split the Anseals for better coverage, which is good for overall stuff, but not great for um, the rest. I, like, it's not great for, like, consolidating onto one spot. Right, and so the splash was a great choice as a reaction there. Uh, really impressed by the quick thinking from Nebelheim. Maybe he didn't want to have to reveal that until later. I'm not sure. He probably had that as an idea for, for a while, but we'll ask him about it later on. Taco Cake in the bottom left of Impetus. His map pick, Nebelheim. Well, he's up to two wins. If he takes Taco Cake here, he crushes our dreams of that FFA group decider for first place. We've never had it before, guys. It's never happened in Cosmonarchy history. Taco Cake could get us one step closer to making that history. Will be once again the seven pool. Looks like Taco Cake, on the other hand, he's considering a different strategy. If he makes a worker here, he's not going for the the eight, the nine pool, but he is indeed going for that. So we will pretty much uh, be just fine. I think this map is not dreadful when it comes to the uh, rush distance. Argue that it was a tie. Uh, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Why shouldn't FFA be a thing, dude? That's epic. Now, Neblime hates FFAs. He always gets ganged up on. But I think I think it's great. I think it would be very hype. Cheer for Taco Cake if you want the FFA. And cheer for Neblime if you don't want the FFA. So Newt will be the only one cheering Neblime. Top Ramen's still looking pretty strong, though. I have faith that he will uh, be able to maybe clutch out versus Taco Cake if uh, it comes to that. But we need to see it happen. And Neblime, he's made Zeths. What is this play? It's going to be three pairs of Quasis. I think his bluff has been called. I don't think the Zeths are going to be very helpful here at all. In fact, the worker is going to die to the cliff advantage. So if there was going to be some plan for that, it did not foment. Low ground hatch. 
Zeth's going to wrap around from the middle and maybe go for a counterattack. Try to pick the buildings. Delay the uh, worker explosion. I, I, I don't know what I'm seeing here. He's only going to have two pairs of quasis to counter the six that are coming across the map. Taco Cake will absolutely be able to get some early damage dealt. Well, if he's a little bit uh, hesitant, no. Instead, it's Neblime who's going to be moving across the map. This is going to play into Taco Cake's hands, I think, if he's going to be on the low ground. He's giving up the range advantage. Neblime wants that low ground hatch, but he cannot have it. Now, here comes the Zeph activation. We'll see what they end up doing as they start to charge on forward. But instead, Taco Cake trying to focus fire. He's going to get rid of that worker. Okay, he'll be held back at home. He's going to try to snipe out that Hatcherosk, I think. No, doesn't even go for that. Charging into the base. we got Quasilisks that only just now got started. How much worker damage can he do? Going after the eggs. There's the drill. Very nice counterplay from Taco Cake. He will end up losing a worker. And a second one. Now we're dead even on workers. Remember, Neblime was very, very militarily focused here. But the Quasi's finished. The drill is very safe now. And we are pretty much all done here as far as the early aggression. So I guess we'll just normalize things. But there are eight Quasilisks out for uh, Neblime compared to the only seven of Taco Cake. However, he is obviously a closer reinforcement point and going for five workers immediately. I know one of those will probably end up being a circus, but still. It's actually going to be two of them. A little bit of a poor engagement initially for Neblon, but he's going to make up for it with great single target macro. Or micro. Uh, does he want to go after the Kagrins? He's going to go after that low HP one. That'll have to be canceled, but Taco Cake does not do it. That could have allowed the circuit to finish, but Taco Cake fell back a little bit too much. Now, the circuit does still finish. Is it going to be enough here? Mm, I think just barely not. Yeah, there's going to be more than enough here to hold this. He will go down by one worker, so at least a small victory there for Neblon. And, you know, he puts it to his opponent. Going up for a Vornath. I just said earlier, Neblime doesn't go for those air strategies. Is this going to be where that changes? Or is he going to go for Vorbs to slow down the circuit attack rate? We'll find out. If you start to see some Zeths, I think you know which way the wind is blowing. Players opting into aggressive strategies so far. Taco Kick, definitely the kind of player to do that. Only two guys on gas for him right now. Contrast that to Neblime, who is gunning for a lot of Vespine from the main. Vornath finished. Kind of lacking on the defense. The Quasis can charge forward and kill the four Quasis here and then go straight for the workers, I think. Just completely ignore the circuits on the single circuit at the front depends on how much damage they want to take going in wouldn't be kill threat but would be a play yeah he only sees a couple of quasis he's not sure how many there are now that there's another pair seems very unlikely for that to happen but still posturing in front of your enemy's base is definitely a good thing taco cake not reacting here but nebline being a little bit uh overly cautious i think look at that the burrow does he bait it in he's gonna only, only now gonna bring up the fourth burrow's in his face nebline I, I don't know if he looked away at the last second there we still have a couple of Quasis here. There's three of them. And we don't have any more in uh, production right now. This Nathacore attack could definitely hit Taco Cake off guard. He's making one pair now. Needs to start to borrow these workers pretty quick. Quasis initially bruising one of the Naths. Now he should start to uh, resaturate that uh, natural. He borrows the ones in the main, but he needs to get back to mining in here. And he does. It's a little bit low. Going after the Larvosk is a good option, right? If you think about it. <laughs> the Larvosk has a kill, boys. That's because it was a worker once, and the worker had a kill with the Zeths. Uh, burning down the Larvosk is a really nice find. Does end up doing it. Quasi's not really mounting much of an offense, or a defense for that matter, coming on the way back. Yeah, that pivot's definitely got him. This egg not going to finish. Not going to get canceled either. Taco Cake is ahead in workers, but not effectively right now. Surprised he didn't turn that into a Spraith or something. The one Quasi not going to be long for this world. A little bit of uh, micro goes a long way with the Nathricor. The weirdest thing, though, is that Taco Cake is still sort of mining on one base, and he can unburrow at any point here. Turning that back into a Larvosk has some, uh, 
has some feeling that he can hold on here. The double circuit's going to be more than enough versus the Quasis. We do have a Hydra coming now for Neblime. The Spray's going to come down there. Taco Cake going straight into some additional production, but he will start to fall behind on the worker count. This rotation finishing up for Neblime is going to give him a nice advantage. Very oddly placed Kagrin all the way over there. I don't know if that's going to be a spray. Terran style. Picking off two workers so far. Not bad. Only losing a single Nath for the Troubles. Extending his lead to four. That number will only continue to rise. More Quasis coming from that Larvosk. The longer these games go, the more fatigued some of the players might end up being. Remember, I'm not sure what time it is in Aussie land, but I think Neblime said that he was going to be pretty tired since he uh, had to wake up super early for some D&D stuff that he was doing. You know how the hobbies work. Five An Athercore is coming on in. There's a Spraith and a Quasi. I think that's going to be more than enough to zone them away for now. Now he's going to maybe try to go for a single worker, and he does get it. Sometimes every worker matters, but uh, a limited resource, those Quasilisks. Going up to a couple of Hydras here. Looks like he made eight in total. Wow, three Larvosks. Really gunning it on the gas production here. Neblime discovering the utility of the structure. His forward Quasis are going to get cleaned up here. Might facilitate a third base, but it's a little bit harder to hold that. Arcing back and forward. Okay, the Zets reveal Hydras and Quasis together. This is a pretty big army of Quasi Zeth, but needs a good engage in order to get some action here. One Hydra already being burned down. That's not bad. Can definitely do some stutter stepping over here. Down only 12 units. Make that 11. Neblime, a little bit of trouble here. Going to send some reinforcing Hydras coming on down. I think one of these Quasis will end up getting picked off at the very end. Hydras of his own. And us. Okay, he's going to go for the Bactalisks as the reaction here. I like this peeling off a couple of Quasis off to the side. You can threaten a little bit of a backstab or, you know, slow down the impending army. Maybe try to go for a, a bit of a surround or whatever. But returning to the circuits is not a bad shout. Zeths over here could probably burrow so that they avoid the Nats, but not really the end of the world there. Here come the Hydras on the high ground. All of a sudden, incoming damage. Neblam is going to have to retreat. He goes for the Zorkas. Okay, we're into that territory. We're starting to get all the Tier 1 stuff. we got an upgraded pond, and we've got the other two tech structures. Meanwhile, on this side, the ski Act is done. We are going to see some Bactyls soon. Almost certainly. Conceivably, it could be Scythercores, but no, it's not going to be. I was going to say, because, you know, Neblam did the backstab on the air side. Does he expect his opponent to do so? Probably not. Nice little burrow here for the Quasis to... Maybe uh, intercept this uh, base attempt. One of the Quasis is going to be revealed, though. And another one. Taco Cake not really paying attention here. If he unburrows that, though, he will be able to see that there is a, a hatch there, and he'll at least get vision of it. Know that that base is on the way. Did end up burrowing that Zeth. These four Nats going to poke their heads in again, but just for a scout, they will see the ski backed. So, you know, there's that at least. He could attack the ski bag from that range, actually. I think the Sim City was not super thoughtful here. And it, you can see the reaction is getting Spraiths. Now, I'm aware of the proclivity that Taco Cake has. He's actually losing a Hydra back at home, so that's a little awkward. 22 Hydras. Almost as many for Taco Cake. And he has the advantage of having a little bit more action on that side. Bactalisks revealing themselves. The Nathacores will not actually see that because Neblime was paying attention to the rest of his base. And indeed, this Hatchrosk was seen. This is going to prompt a move out from Taco Cake, who is behind in terms of the base count. And if he crushes this, then we can start talking. He needs to be able to hold back here, though, and he only has the two circuits. With this many Hydras, you can counterattack and be pretty okay with that. But the Zorius and the Hydras are not going to be able to hold up against what Taco Cake has. This is going to be an overwhelming military victory here. And third base being set up over here as well is going to be more than enough. So this base has to be conceded. There is another base being set up for Neblon back at the 3 o'clock. He's actually going to go for a sandwich. He wants a military victory. And maybe he can have it, right? Taco Cake having some of his forces split off, but he does 
end up picking the Pateros. Now back down here, the flank going to be very efficient for the backposts. They're going to push on through, kill all of these units. We've got reinforcements streaming on in. They're Zets. They're not going to the right direction just yet, but Taco Cake, if he can wrangle them, we can start to talk. But it's not to be. These Zets could charge over to pick this Hatcheros, because there's not really anything that Nebulon could do about it, but the sixth sense not exactly there. Taco getting a little bit lost. He's got a lot of gas banked up. Didn't want to necessarily spend it. Will end up going for this Hatcherosk, though. <clears throat> I think this is going to delay Neblime's, uh Yeah, this is going to delay Neblime's attack. Let's see what Taco Cake okay goes for. He's not really paying attention to that army just yet. Hydra's attacking. The 9 o'clock position are going to shut that one down. And these Zets, they are going to get chewed up and spat back out by the Hydra's. Not a single one going down. Meanwhile, the third for Neblime, the backstab here. That's a victory. He's going to shut down this base as well. I think Taco Cake okay might be out of this one. Off the back of that, not being able to erect any of the bases that he's put down. Zeth's chewing him up. Hydra's holding everything else at bay. Sure, you backstab one, but I've got another. And tier two on the way for Neblime first. Despite the considerable gas bank Taco Cake had. Instead, he's going to go after a lot of Bactalisks, a lot of Hydra's. I'm interested. I'm seeing all of the uh, Larvosks that we have here, right? And uh, that's definitely an interesting adaptation. I'm glad that the meta is shifting to start using them. Seems like they do indeed have a role. Obviously, I don't think anybody has number crunched them just yet, but... See pretty good on their face. Avaleth coming <clears throat> pretty late for Taco Cake. He's once again down by almost half of the workers. Like... He's, he's being dwarfed by Neblime's economy right now. I have to agree with Beaver's sentiment with the sad face. Looking like no FFA. Neblime, the better player. Going to hand Taco Cake his second loss. At least he's on track to. And, you know, in a tournament setting, you don't necessarily know how far behind you are. You know you are somewhat behind in Taco Cake's shoes, right? But do you know that your enemy has tier two and three, you know, two more bases than you? Third and fourth already operational. That blinds pocket Zethricor not being spotted. Is this a backstab opportunity? Is he just going to bowl through? No, he's going to go ahead and pressure. I mean, he doesn't have... Most of his army isn't here, right? So... Remember, there's no supply in Cosmonarchy, so there's not really a need, a read. You don't need to suicide your army in this situation. Avaleth being zoned away by the rally units. Mutat Spire finishing, Nest finishing as well. So, pick up the litter here for Neblime. Okay. Well, he's sharking around. Taco Cake has a little bit of threat onto this uh, base, but there's a lot of static defense up, and I feel like that's going to be more than enough to deal with this. Hydras are uniquely good at uh, piercing the, the Scorchrith, though. And look at that. The, the Muta's hatch, and they get immediately evaporated, almost for free. But here comes the flank, and I think this is probably going to be all that she wrote for Taco Cake in this game. He's trying to stream in reinforcements. A nice number of Hydras overall. He will end up sandwiching this, but... He's losing a lot of his pressure elsewhere, and he just doesn't have the economy. Look at this. Neat little uh, move here to move some quasis over. That was a drop. We saw the uh, extremity on. But again, he's still down by more than half the workers. You could give Taco Cake 50 workers, and he would still be behind. And here come the mutas to make it even more so. That's while Neblime holds the attack on the 3 o'clock position. I just kind of stream on in to see what they can do versus the mutas. You know, it doesn't get that many worker kills, and he only kills the Spraith and Kagrin, so... I guess it wasn't that cost-efficient at the end of the day, but it shuts down mining time, and... I mean, Taco Cake is behind just by existing right now. Sounds brutal, but it's true. An indomitable advantage for Nebline. Unrecoverable. I don't think that's a caster curse. Unless Neblime has to go anytime soon, <laughs> I think Taco Cake is on the ropes.
Not canceled. Taco Cake will not reclaim the resources for it. He is boxed in. He has not been able to collect the third base. He's a nice snipe on the Matra left. About to get overwhelmed, though. Convalisk's good for spread damage. Zorius staying alive for a good amount of time. The Convalisk does get sniped. But there's too many Hydras here. And how many times will Taco Cake's army fall? The answer is one more time. Nebli securing a third win. And there goes the FFA. Well, this means that Top Ramen will have one more chance to destroy Nebline. Another match demanded. Now, I need to make something very clear. If Top Ramen does not defeat Neblime here, then he will start the best of three against Taco Cake down one to zero, which gives Taco Cake two chances to qualify in second place. It'll be Germination selected by our Terran upstart, who looked so good to start doing things off. All right, it's Neblime in the top left, Top Ramen in the bottom right. By the way, that last map was a Impetus, a map by Vic7, but it was not Fata Morgana, a map by Vic7, a map by Vic7, if you know what I'm saying. Top Ramen going for the fast gas as per usual. He will go for his early... Quarry, no doubt. It's the tried and true strategy. And, you know, in that previous game on the Purgatory, the advantage wasn't really anybody's. So uh, the tech change there definitely caught him off guard. Neblon going for the Sicrilisks to burn out all of the Anseal energy. I would say it's a very nice move. Early scout coming out. Fairly quiet so far. Nothing out of the ordinary. We've got the quarry coming behind the stockade. Hatch on the ramp. Now, this map is selected by Top Ramen. Yeah, it should be mentioned here. But it's a very defensible map. You've got the ramp over here you can build on. The ramp over here you can build on. And you can take three bases. Even a possibility for a fourth base once you get your advanced workers. Worker scouts exchange glances at each other as the mason walks on into the base and sees the timings standard as can be no shenanigans here nothing too crazy top ramen will begin to stretch ahead in worker count the phrase shambler knows all too well Good reaction from Neblime to pull his worker away. That would have been a nice little advantage that Top Ramen could have gleaned. And in fact, it, it might even be a little suspicious to Neblime that Top Ramen isn't moving across the map right now. For a moment, I envisioned the anchor being built and floated into Neblime's base and shutting down the gas harvesting, delaying his hydrath then, securing an advantage for Top Ramen. But it doesn't look like Top Ramen has my level of prescience. Instead, he'll drop a second stockade. Droleth returning home. The customary six quasis. Nothing out of the ordinary just yet. We will see a uh, rescout attempt here, but of course the quasis on the ramp are going to ward that off. Not reacting very quickly there. And I think the Ovaleth might have been spotted out of the corner of his eye. 
It's going to be an attempted drop. And Nebo actually has not done this yet. Vestry behind the second stockade. We will pause Maverick production for the time being. This could be a pretty brutal opener here, but Top Ramen playing relatively conservatively. We will see a bit of a force to head up the front line. Remember, Neblin building this many units before his third hatch, and, you know, he's only now taking his natural. Top Ramen doing his already as well. Uh, this is going to hurt a little bit from, from Top Ramen's POV, but uh, he's also ahead in workers by eight right now, so. Zerger okay being behind in workers for a while because they can explode in population afterwards, but yeah, this is totally blind. Top Ramen could get blindsided. He's going to have to pull the workers pretty quickly. Does he commit into this? No, he's going to pull away now. Two workers going down relatively quickly. The rest of them are going to be pulled. One more should end up going down. There it is. Nice little Harakan push, and the clerics can heal. So actually, oh, a cleric goes down on the fr front end here. Now the masons have to pull back the other way. Remember what I said, though. Eight workers ahead, losing six so far, and seven. Neblime, if he draws behind this, should be in a, an advantageous position. In fact, most of his units are even going to scarper off there at the end. Avaleth could scoop them up for a redrop if they wanted. It's the perfect number. And that could be devastating, right? Because there's not going to be enough forces to deal with six quasis. Yeah, there it is. It's going to go ahead and happen. He's making a circuit on the high ground as well as back here. We could still technically see a little bit of a base race. We'll see if the... No, okay. I was going to say, if Top Robin continues to move his units across the map off of the rally, he could be bamboozled. But it looks like he's got a, he's got that sense that things could happen. The Harakans could be really big here, but it's only one of them. And I think it'll end up being focused down if I know Neblon. There it is. The rest of the Quasi is going to go down. A lot of workers hitting the dust here. Does want to try to stem after the circuit. He has the clerics to heal. He needs to pull away from this ramp. At the same time, there's two Quasis, or those two Mavericks going to get the first shots fired over here. But look at this. Top Ramen was moving across the map here. There's only the one circuit. If he focuses fire with the clerics, I think he might be able to do something, but he's not stimming. He's back at home instead fighting with the Masons. It's a bloody game. He falls back, out of range, attacking that Hatcherosk. Only Hydra's being made right now, including one at the natural. Stim's coming in. Those two reinforcement Mavericks could actually be all impactful. More of them posturing out at the natural. Not going to go anywhere. Man, if that Harakan was still alive, what a boon it would be. Hydra's going to mass up, and they're going to try to stop this Hatcheros from going down. Focusing down individual Mavericks. <clears throat> Good focus fire from Neblime. But I don't think he can stop this from happening. I think the best he can do is clean up with good efficiency. And now the Mavericks will leave. Well, I think they leave behind their woman. Nebline doesn't even get that. Who gets the girl in the end? Jimmy. And that's not the Jimmy you're thinking of. Jimmy Changa. All right, well, reinforcing, reproducing another Larvosk. Joins the ranks here for Neblime as he reestablishes his natural top ramen. Proving he can do what Neblime does. But maybe a little bit better. It's a three Hydra drop, but we are going to have a watchdog established back here. It won't finish in time, but it will give him the warning he needs. Single Mason moving out to put down a watchdog for a scouting purpose, of course. And look at this. The advanced warning system is going to come into fruition. Watchdog is going to be canceled for safety. Maverick's going to move on in. The Hydras will not get past the bouncers this time. In fact, the Avaloth is long gone as well, so the most they can do is pick off a couple Mavericks while they're here. And it is just a couple. Nice and easy. Rest of the Hydras moving back. Neblime feeling a little bit of pressure. Throwing away Hydras. It causes a little bit of an upset, but Top Robin can very comfortably go off of 40 workers here as watchdogs are erected elsewhere. It's an uncomfortably large main for some people, and I understand why when you think about those drop potentials. But the Avaloth so far has had mixed results. The first drop was pretty good, especially in conjunction with that timing, but Top Ramon was so far ahead in workers to start with that that only kind of reset him. And really losing that uh, Hatcherosk is really big as well. Oh, peel, pinching off a couple of these forces here. Ends up picking a single Harakan. No shots fired back in return. 
We do have an atlas started back here. It's later than the six minutes. It's a like more of like a 745 atlas. Watchdog scouting over here, seeing that the base is indeed set up. Anti-air defense is being fomented here as the Hydras poke on in for another couple of rounds. They're going to pick a cleric on the outskirts. Where's the stim in reaction? There it is. And now going down the ramp, that's going to assign a couple more death warrants. Watchdog off to the side. Obviously not going to be the wisest of positions. I like the idea of landing it there to pick off any obelisks that are flying by. This obelith over here is going to be able to scout the star pad and the fulcrum. Are we going to see a third base faster? I don't know. But the Atlas finishing pretty soon. I think that's going to be an unwelcome sight for Neblime if he even scouts it. Oh, he might not. He might go right through it. There we go. Going to zone away. And right into the Watchdogs as well. Now the Hydra's maybe going to start to posture. A lot of minerals here, but that's just mostly going to be for captaincies, remember? Top Ramen has this kind of move mapped out. He can go for a, a ministry on the location here, but he is about to be attacked by the Hydras. That Mason should be able to escape, which means he'll be able to pressure this a little bit. A couple of Zethra cores burrowing. Surely those get discovered pretty soon with this A move. There it is. And that ministry should be able to go down after all. More and more Hydras being put down. There it is. What's next for Nebline? He's got his third base up and running already. Starting to harvest the Vespian a little bit late. Wants to maybe gun it to tier two. Has his Zorius out. Zorkiz, I should say, but he's going to use it for the Zorius to the left. I think he knows that at this point, Top Ramen is nearing tier two. I mean, we know he's already at there, but Nebline should know that that's in the sights. He's played against this composition before. He's lost against this composition before, but on the Purgatory, he fought back. Germination. Uh, <clears throat> we'll play on, and if something becomes obviously broken for me, I will ask you uh, top one into POV stream if it breaks. <clears throat> because Neblon being the only one to uh, see it is a little suspicious. So, Well, the Zeth is going to see that. Now we've got tier two started. Okay. Let's see what the push is here. I don't really think that Top Ramen has kill pressure, but he absolutely can do some damage. Phalanx moving out. Sentinels being constructed. Cover both sides. Ooh, the Anseal taking some shield damage there. This is an opportunity. Poke those Anseals down. One of them does indeed get sniped. The Hydras can be engaged upon by the Stimmed Mavericks, but not necessarily with that ramp. Here's the Phalanx. Nice surround potential here. Remember, this is most of Top Ramen's forces before the Madcaps can get in, before the Anseals can hit critical mass. I think he might be able to burst through this. Man, the Terrans are very, very resilient with this particular composition, but they will be brought down. The Phalanx going down. I think Top Ramen's in trouble. That one Phalanx very, very likely to be caught here. You can see there it is indeed. Pre-stimming. Expecting the run-up. Not going to come just yet. Iral Iris finishing. Nebla, I'm going to take a moment to macro up. Consider his options here. All right. The run on through. Will this end just like on the Purgatory? Trying to get more and more units around, but the Anseal immediately burned through its energy by the Hydras. It goes down. The one Phalanx is here. It's an overwhelming amount of Zerg. And it looks like Neblime is about as good as it gets. Going to qualify a little bit bruised, but not beaten. The Sentinels from downtown not going to help. He's on top of the production. Trying to hold on for dear life as the Phalanx stays alive. A couple more shots, but that's about it. The Treasury going to go down here. GG called. Top Ramen. He's going to start down with a loss in that best of three against Taco Cake to qualify. But Neblime, he's going to go on through. First place, not 4-0, but 4-1. Maybe that's enough.
We will wait for the map selection of Taco Cake. Sideshow selected. Rough map for Terran. At least that's the popular sentiment. But I think Top Ramen has a little bit of experience on it. Uh, I guess I'll just write it like this. If Top wins, we go to a decider. If Taco wins... He exits in the second place. And indeed, the beaver and Zerg are here. <coughs> Isn't that just epic? Waiting for readies. Taco Cake asked for a moment. Let the moment... Sit in, settle in, Top Ramen facing elimination. He'll have to win two matches in a row to exit in second place. And I think he can do it. It'll be a Titan Forge decider if we go there. Otherwise, Taco Cake, the moment overwhelming our Terran upstart, who looked pretty damn good and even took a, a game off of Neblime. You know, that can't be discounted here. But is that going to be it? Is that going to be his only glory? His only claim to fame? Or is he going to be able to muster up that confidence and charge on in? Ready's exchanged. GLHF. Sideshow. Our seventh map. We could see an eighth yet. But Group C delivering on all fronts. Taco Cake in the top left. Top Ramen in the bottom right. What do we have here? Players are aware. They know the stakes. They know what's going on. <coughs> Pardon me. I apparently know. And it's time for another sip of water. But this will mean that Neblime qualifies in first place. Now we get to set our sights on the underclass. The players, the contenders who would. Would what, you ask? Would be. Looks like a low ground wall going to foment here for Top Ramen as he goes for the classic stockade into uh, quarry that he is known for. Made a name of himself by now. Neblon coming in cold, apparently. But he's uh, he's got victory in his blood. I'm sure that warms him up a little bit. Welcome, sir. Get uh, Get nice and warm. It's uh, certainly the champion's uh, reward, I would imagine. Now, Taco Cake is going to walk on by this and see it. Maybe do a little bit of worker harassment, but only gets a couple of shots off. Hey, look at that. Mmm, tickle. I don't know that this trick works the way that it does in Brood War. I actually have not seen that, but hey, he's doing something. I think that only works because, like, Brood War is clunky and Cosmonarchy is less clunky, so I don't think it would need that but somebody can map that out later. The trick where you right-click, spam right-click the uh, mason to reissue the attack order. I guess it makes you feel pretty good. Now, hey, look, it is a star pad, so it's only one. I suspect Top Ramen is gonna do drops, and he probably wants to just like psychologically get back into it, because this is a best of three, essentially, where he's already lost the first game. The first game was already all the way back on Derelict, but it's gonna be a second star pad. I thought maybe drops. I was thinking you just drop your bio in there and you know, you kill him, right? Uh, but if you want to go Wraiths instead, I you know, the thought process is probably, oh, I opened Stockade on the low ground. I am not going to go for the same thing. But he didn't even scout his main, so he has no idea that there's no quarry. You know, like, 
a little bit lackadaisical actually from Top Ramen and, or from Taco Cake. And it looks like Top Ramen is going to go ahead and put down an anchor to cover that. This does make a Zeth tight wall. You cannot get through this with units unless you uh, bust the buildings, which Quasilisks are certainly uh, feasible. It's uh, certainly possible that that happens. But uh, I think with Mavericks in there, he'll probably be okay. A Mason on the other side to repair as well. Should be just fine. Also, Neblime, uh, while you're here, uh, oh, actually, never mind. Tell me to remind you when we're on break and, uh, like, before we start the next group. Now, only one Maverick in that anchor. That's actually really potentially scary. I think Taco K kind of sniffs that out, right? Yeah, he's like, wait a second. There's not that much fire coming from that structure. What's going on here? And there's nothing here in time to repair it. This is actually really quite dangerous. He's going to have to recall the rates yet again. The greed. The cheek. And it could be the end of Top Robin. I mean, this is a serious threat to him right now. He's going to have to reveal the rates yet again. The Masons are going to have to come off the line. And at this point, Taco K can feel pretty pretty confident, pretty happy with himself. He'll just put down one K Grint, and he'll be all set. Picking off workers as well. Being in worker parity right now. Zerg versus Terran at this stage in the game, that is not what's supposed to happen. What is the response from Top Ramen? All because he only had the one guy in the anchor. And now, I mean, the Zets could charge on in. They don't know that their anchor's being reestablished, but what are you going to do, right? The one Maverick might be able to push off, I suppose. What do we have back at home? Do we not have anything back at home? He made Zets instead of Quasis. There's a chance for damage. He's going to put down some k -grins. He's going to get the Spraith up and running. I guess there's a chance the Wraiths dominate over here, but the Zets have already burrowed their way through, it looks like. Maybe snuck in through there. I'm not actually sure. I was pretty sure that was Zeth type, but maybe maybe they came in through the bottom there. Starpaz now being engaged upon. Eh, I feel like he's fine here. The rates are going to heckle that Hatcherosk and you now push on in. Where's the Maverick? Is the Maverick lost in the sauce? I can't find the Maverick. I think it died up here. Drill's coming in. One, one Wraith already going down. Taco Cake looking pretty good here. I'm really quite surprised that he, he went for the Wraiths yet again. Losing a lot of Masons. Where's the reaction? Okay, he has cleared the Quasis that were sent down to deal with this. And he can focus down these eggs if he wants to. Looks like some of these rates are a little bit torn on what they should do, and they fall away. That might give a little bit of time here for Taco Cake to pick off these rates. Another one going down. A second one going down. A lot of rates have hit the deck and not gotten a lot done. Corey starting now. Mason's not able to get back in. I think if you move these forward one hex, that's when it's tight. That's probably what it is. One build grid tile. Well, Taco Cake is going to have to think about, uh, you know, does he want to defend this Hatcherosk or does he want to attack? And it looks like he wants to attack. He's totally fine with seeding this, uh, apparently. Only the one Maverick. Mason's seeing... What's happening over here? But he's only got the one Maverick, man. You really gonna seed, uh, you know, your front gate again? He's only got one Mason here to repair. The one Maverick, the second one finished, but it's a little too late. And the hatch is not even gonna die. So there's plenty of production here. There's 17 Quasilisks. Surely Top Ramen cannot come back from this one. There's Zeths pouring on through as well. Four Quasis in the middle of the map for good measure. Needs vision to drill. Doesn't have it. I think he's done for, boys. I don't think he can do it. He's only got the five rates. He can't stand up. The Quasi's knocking him back down. He may have done very well versus Neblime in the first game. I think he even had a hell of a second game. But versus Taco Cake, he fed the beast a little too much with the rates. And now, with only three workers, 200 minerals in the bank, and five rates, four of which are deathly ill, it is not looking hot. And I think it's pretty much it. Top Ramen cannot win any further. Taco Cake stops him here. Breaking the star pads. The cheese not working out. And it'll be Taco Cake qualifying in second place. Heartbreaking for the guy who would defeat Neblime in the opener. As it turns out, the rates just ain't it. I had a sneaking suspicion 
that that would come back to bite him. But here we lie. GG's all around. We have the results for Group C. Neblime and Taco Cake exiting in first and second place, respectively. Top Ramen will not proceed on to the throne room stage. A valiant effort, I would say, honestly. But the Wraiths... If, if he had held the initial quasi-attack the second time around, then the Wraiths look really good. Because there were actually Zeths made behind that. So if it was actually a surprise when the Wraiths hit the base, I think he, he has to burrow the workers and build a lot of quasis with whatever money he's got left. I think he could have really been in a powerful position. <laughs> he used all his energy to kill Nebulon game one. <laughs> I think maybe that's true. I think maybe that's true. All right. Speaking of, it'll be the man himself. Neblime, winner of Group I, C. Uh, You've had your buffet. You have feasted on the tacos, the cakes, and the ramen. How are you I feeling, choked dude? a bit, didn't I? That first <laughs> bite of ramen, I was like... Oh, oh, it was a little spicy, know, a little that? spicy. What happened? Yeah, that's right. That's right. That was the Samyang fire or something, man. It was a bit much. Yeah, what, I, have to, I have a question for you after, and it looks like Taco Cake's waiting in the wings as well for his interview, so that'll be exciting. Uh, maybe we'll even hear from Top Robin a bit later if he wants to, but I got to ask you about that first game and the adaptation you made on the Purgatory. You went for Sicrilisks, where previously you were really struggling with the Ant Seals. Did somebody tip you off to that with Shambler in your ear like, hey, dude, build this, or did you study that from somewhere else? Were you holding that in your back pocket? Tell me about that choice. No, I've done it before, even in practice games against Ramen. It's just in that Axiom game, uh, it didn't really feel like I had the gas and time for that. I went for the, the Vulgora Course instead. And I think the Vulgora Course were pretty effective. I just, uh, in general, didn't have enough. Look, you want my full diagnosis? I guess, but just get back to answer your question mm. first. I am aware of Sicrilis, and they have been very effective against those Bibles before. But Axiom's a bit too narrow a map, and Sicrilis being a little short range, don't like them as much. So you were able to take advantage of the openness of the Purgatory and also the ramps and stuff for the cliff advantage to make Yeah, I don't know what Top Brahman was thinking, man, picking that map. I feel like that's kind of a free win for me, to be honest. I mean, he made some attempts, right, with drops and stuff. It's not like he played it badly, but you can just see how much advantage Zerg's going to have there. And how about well, your at game? least... Okay, go ahead. Against, sorry, against that, like, bio style where he builds up and moves out, right? I'm, I don't know if there's a viable sort of turtle Terran style probably like with, you know, mass star ports and that kind of thing, maybe is good for Terran on that map. But the games Top Ram and I are playing, and that's what they usually look like, it's definitely not going to go his way of purgatory. Okay, so you've practiced on that map and it hasn't been good for him. Is what you're not saying. against him, actually, oh, but okay. in general, yes. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, well, very interesting, very interesting. I was also interested in what the picks were, the psychology behind the picks, right? Um, you stepped in to pick Fata Morgana against Taco Cake and started your campaign to get some wins on the board and eventually top the group. How was that game? Did you feel kind of comfortable the whole time or how did the opener go? Because you seven pulled into his nine pool, but then he had more units than you. Yeah, I was pretty sure something like this would happen because everyone knows that I seven pull every game. Um, <laughs> Nuke called so, it out for sure in the chat. Yeah, I know. I knew coming into this that people would always just be going like the slightly later pool, but as you saw, I was able to cancel the Zephs and, you know, you're not ahead, but it's a fine game to play from. Uh, and from there, I mean, no offense to Cake, but I felt like as long as I had the info, I could just outplay him. Um, and that's the point. I scout really early, and then I sort of anticipated the um, Nafra cause because I thought he would drop, actually, is why I had the stuff there, but either way. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then I, I knew Feta being sort of tight map. Uh, a lot of the time, the ZBs is at play there. Our armies just keep clashing together, and eventually, I kind of just have more stuff. So I was, I was pretty confident there, um, especially when he made the attack up the ramp. I actually failed to spot the cause moving out. I'm not really sure how. My mm. Shambler drone didn't see it. But either yes. way, that was sort of what I was hoping would happen, is he would come and attack, and that gave me the move to expand. And I felt like once I was up on two bases, it was pretty straightforward from there. Okay, okay. Well, straightforward indeed. You obviously used a little bit of his own tool against him. It was a very bloody game on Impetus. Can you talk to mm. me about that one? I didn't mean to finish those Zeps. I don't know if you picked I, up on I that. I caught the, the Zeps. I caught yeah. the Zeps. And I, did me I mentioned not in that game, but previously, that the, the Zeps timing can throw you off sometimes. 
It's not like I haven't been playing with the two second faster, but it's always a little faster than I expect. And I screwed mm. up and sent the draw off scout a little later, so my pool finishes and I'm like, all right, wait a second, wait a second. Then I started them, but it was still too soon. So they finished. I did not want to make those four Zephs, but I thought, whatever, you know, you've made them. I think the backstab was a reasonable trade, you know, two lava for two draw left. I think it's not too bad. Mm. Um, and, you know, from there, just some some quads fights. And I knew that after I hit the natural, he'd be thinking about, like, defending the front, defending the front. So I thought running in with the nafs would be pretty good. And it didn't kill that much. I mean, getting the lava wasp is huge, of course, yes. but I think it caused so much disruption, I got way ahead there. Yeah, from that point onward, it felt like it wasn't really ever the same. But still, I think yeah. Taco Cake is... Uh, he's very aggressive. I'll be talking to him about his playstyle when we bring him up in a moment. But <clears throat> definitely an aggressive guy. And so I'm, I'm definitely curious about picking his brains about that. Um... Anyway, you, you obviously were able to stave him off. How were you feeling about uh, watching that? Obviously, you said you went back to bed to watch that game, but uh, how do you feel about how uh, Top Ramen performed against Taco Cake? I feel like it was a big uh, big miss with the rates. Yeah, man, why is he bringing such tough games for me? And then, like, to be honest, he's kind of throwing against Taco Cake. Uh, <laughs> honestly, it looks like he's not experienced with doing the air micro and brood war because i did not see him magic boxing those raves and especially in the first game against taco cake he could have picked off so many causalists yep. when i play against newt as soon as i see raves i just cannot make any more causalists because they'll just be lost money they are just useless i mean i gotta say i can't i can't pull that off when i'm playing race versus Zerg, um i can trade pretty well with causalists but i can't just completely delete them newt's micro is really good in comparison okay. and i think top ramen needs to harness that if he wants to go rave mm. um also interesting idea with the low ground anchor I kind of like it because if Zerg sees that, they're like, oh, I guess he's expanding. But he wasn't, of course. And uh, Taco Cake's sensing weakness was uh, was pretty impressive there. Yes, yeah. Only getting one attack from the, from the anchor, right? Like realizing, wait, I'm not getting yeah. that much damage dealt to me. There's only one guy in there. And then charging forward is pretty sick. That'll be a point of, uh, to bring up in the interview as well. So, yeah. And I guess with that said, uh, I'm just very surprised that Top Ramen couldn't uh, ma mount a, a, a sort of comeback or, you know, continue his assault after defeating you I well i am like suddenly we had a new king in town but you know i am relieved that yeah. i don't have to worry about facing him again man because after that first game i don't know yeah yeah it's rough in order to get a good parity going into the next phase of the tournament i kind of was thinking maybe all of our terrans would have to make it out but as of right now newt might be the only terran representative in throne room stage it really depends on the next group the beaver is in a tough one uh, not favored as the final seed to sort in there so We'll have to see how that one plays out. But I know that he's been practicing it versus Protoss a lot. Obviously, we'll save that analysis for the next group. Uh, are you joining me for that, by the way? Are you, you uh, have other plans? No, definitely, definitely. Okay, cool, cool. All, All right. Cast, of course, of course. Well, sir, I guess I'll bid you adieu for now, and we'll uh, reconnoiter and uh, regroup once we get a little bit closer to that uh, time. It's in about an hour or so, maybe uh, 40, 40 minutes yep. or so we can do the pre-show and all that. Definitely. I'll see you then. All right. GG, sir. And now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, I am going to bring in Taco Cake. <clears throat> Hello, sir. How are you? I'm good. Nice to get to hear your voice for the first time in an interview where you're not exiting out in last place. You're exiting out in second. You managed to clinch the matches. Can I just ask for your general impressions? This is the first time you're playing in this kind of tournament. You obviously played in the qualifier to get here. And the first time through, it was tight games. The second time through, a bit more comfortable. How are you feeling about Cosmonarchy in general? How are you feeling about this tournament format? Um, yeah, well, uh, I, when I joined the tournament, the uh, Gauntlet, I didn't have any, barely any practice. Uh, so I've really been part of practicing, like, while the tournament is going on. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so I'm uh, trying to get better at the game. Um, I mean, yeah, I like it. Uh, it's uh, very different from like StarCraft 2 and Brood War for sure. Right, right. Um, and uh, yeah. Well, when it like comes that. to the. I, oh, go ahead. I, I also like that uh, you put so much time to like show maybe not the, always the best players, but you always give a showcase to even newer players and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I think that's great. Yeah, listen, I mean, it's funny, uh, in a poetic kind of way, and I don't know if you know this, but <clears throat> Top Ramen picked up the game because he saw the game you played against Jackie Langsky, where you had that, like, really long, oh. bloody ZVZ on Derelict, the old version of Derelict. So 
Uh, oh, really? Like, yeah, oh. that was like a week ago. That's how he, he's like the first exposure to it. And was like, oh, damn, this is like really cool ZVZ stuff. I'm going to check this out. And now here you are sending him off like, yeah, go back into the drawing board, buddy. Can I <laughs> – I got to talk to you about the uh, the play versus Top Ramen because he, that was your first match against him. Obviously, you picked Derelict into him. Uh, and he goes for the Wraiths. Was that something you were expecting or did that catch you off guard? Um, no. Uh, he's tried it uh, once before when we played mm -hmm. and uh, I wasn't ready for it. Uh, so – he destroyed me. <laughs> uh, so I was kind of ready for him to try something like that again. Okay. Um, so, and I thought I, I built the hatchery on the high ground just to be extra safe. Right. Uh, and like you said in the interview with uh, Nebelheim, that um, when I only saw one... Uh, Maverick shooting back from the anchor. I knew something was up. Oh, okay. Was that on Derelict as well? I know that was on Sideshow. Oh, uh, no. On, um, yeah, on Sideshow. Okay. Yeah. So you knew, you figured it out, like, wait, I should be taking damage faster than this. this yeah, is, yeah. This is tricky. So, yeah, it's interesting, right? Because he's, he's such a macro beast when it comes down to the Tier 2 game. I feel like that's one of his strengths. We tried to work in this, the uh, cheese. And he did that again when his back was against the wall in one of the qualifier matches. He did a proxy fulcrum versus General Anakin, and that also unfortunately didn't work out for him. That was back in the in the uh, upper bracket of Gauntlet B. So mm. uh, it's kind of curious. Like you can see that he's got that dog in him, as the kids say these days, to try to like charge forward and hit the hit the timing when they least expect it. But he wanted to capitalize on his victory here. Did you were you able to watch that first game with him against Nebline? Um, uh, that he played right now in. Yeah, yeah, the uh, one that he played. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, just to start. I, I watched uh, like the end of it. Yeah. Okay, so you know that he won that game, and it was. I, I was wondering what your reaction was when you saw that. Like, you see the result, maybe you don't see the whole game, so you don't know what the complexion of it, how it happened. But if Top Ramen's beating Neblime, who is like the favorite to go through the group, did that make you think, oh damn, he's gonna really start whooping ass or what? Yeah, like I, I was, I was surprised for sure because I, uh, I've played. I think I played like almost 20 games versus Neblime and <laughs> lost everyone. Oh, wow, <laughs> so. okay. Okay. <laughs> so what was there some, uh, so, so not just the fear of Top Ramen beating him, but also, uh, you know, you've got this back history, this practice. You know, it was pretty competitive in your little show match best of five you played against Top Ramen for practice earlier. It was a five game set, so it went all five. But versus Neblime, if you're, if you're uh, I would say, faring poorly in practice, then how would you characterize that? What was your game plan going in? Because I know you seem to like aggressive styles in the early game. You don't normally go to tier two. So uh, what was your yeah, game plan? like my <laughs> basically my uh, the, my play style is if I can win early, I will go for it. Hmm. Like uh, because I know that I don't have the like the best macro when it comes to late game, and I'm still new to the game, so I don't know uh, all the units. Right. And, okay. What counters what? So, I just go for uh, what's safe and try to make my early game as good as possible. Okay. And so, did you have any ZBZ strats in particular planned for when you had to face Neblime? Because that's not a bad shout. Is like if you can beat him in the early stages and he can't get to his worker advantage, his macro advantage, he can't flex his knowledge that he's got. That takes away an, an asset from him, right? So, did you have some idea for like how you were going to try to get advantages? Yeah, I like I. Uh... <laughs> I remember one game I played versus uh, Nublime in practice, mm. and uh, I think we both went for Nethrocores, but I was a little bit faster. Um, but in the end, he, he he got me because he just had more uh, base defenses. But um, uh, I tried to do that in the game on Adam Morgana, but I don't know if you caught it, but. Uh, from one of the hatcheries, I made Siths instead ah, of yes. Nethrocores. That's right. Uh, so it was only like half uh, strength. Okay. And, you know, it might have made a bit of a difference since he had a couple of units stationed in the mineral lines, anticipating drops. And if there were more Nats, maybe that overwhelms his defense and, like, short circuits yeah, his attack, yeah. right? So, yeah, that'll get you sometimes. Well, you do still manage to do pretty well versus Top Ramen, closing him out for the greed. Um, are there any any things that in particular, as you're going to exit in second seed, so I, I don't know if you've um, been briefed on the format fully, but 
because you're a second seed player, you'll be matched up with somebody who exited in first seed in the playoffs, and it's double elimination. So if you know you get one extra tournament life, you fall down to the lower bracket if you lose a series. So that means that you, okay. right now you can't play against Neblin because you played him in the group, but the other three top seeds will be available. It's predicted that Hapsea will exit first. He's a Protoss. And then, of course, we have Hamster as Protoss and Shambler as Protoss. So you're kind of guaranteed at this point some ZVP action. How are you on that matchup? How, how well versed are you? Um, <laughs> I played like two games versus Protoss. Oh, OK. So. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. Well, wow. um, some practice points for sure. I mean, hey, there's going to be a little bit of time before those matches get scheduled, yeah. presumably. So you'll have a little bit of time and, to practice. And uh, my brother recently got into Cosmonarchy as well, and he's yes, yeah. uh, playing Protoss. So hey, there you go. Maybe I can practice with him. Yeah, not a bad shout, right? I know we, we it's funny because uh, some of the more recent players that have joined us, uh, Ecalypso is another guy who plays pretty adequately. Like I'd say he could hang with some of the some of the players that are in this tournament, for example. Uh, definitely was a scary opponent, even like when Neblime first faced him. He was like, oh, wait, I got to take this guy seriously. So, you know, it's, it's kind of clever to see. Uh, it's cool to see new players that have come in and can play play nicely so and and he's protoss so there's a couple of people you could probably start adding and saying like hey i need protoss practice so definitely an option yeah and i i can also, he uh, he messaged me uh, the other day and said he he went two and two versus top ramen so oh okay maybe someone to watch out for yeah 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 it's i i feel bad because that what will happen right and it, it, to a lesser extent i think this happened with your brother although he doesn't i don't know if he's played too many games with other people yet but um people will come in and they'll play pretty well and they'll be like, oh yeah, I'm, you know, I'm like decently good at this game. I could be dangerous, but it's like the tournament's already started. So the, those new guys have yeah. to wait, you know, <laughs> before they can get action yeah, yeah, in no. that way. So, but it's still helpful. It's still helpful for practice partners, sparring partners and all that. So, you know, who knows what'll end up happening. Um, yeah. So your overall impressions, then you said that you like the, the project obviously, but the tournament format, you feel like it's uh it's up there because you're going to be now playing in all three distinct stages. You went through the gauntlet, and now here you are qualifying out of the groups, the battlements. You're going to go into that playoff stage. So you're going to see the full breadth of it. And it, yeah. by the end of it, it's going to have been like a month long affair, right? So. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's been great. Like, um, uh, you know, I, I've been focusing on uh, like practicing on the mm. game. And when I'm coming home from work, I play some games and, you know, nice. Uh, I think it's uh, it's good. Appreciate the kind words and uh, glad that it's been holding your attention enough, right? Like, because some people, you know, maybe they find a game and they stick with it for a little bit, but you're in for a penny, in for a pound at this point. You're going through the the whole process. And, and yeah, one thing, I, 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 I can't I, really leave now. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. You're, you're you're all in. But one thing I did like too that I saw uh, is that right as soon as you um, got edged out in that series by Jack Langsky, he took it uh, took you to task in the lower bracket of the first gauntlet. As soon as that match was over, I saw you signed up for the second one, which I thought was like, it kind of spoke that you have that persistence, like you don't care. And, and telling me that Neblime beats you 20 games or whatever is like, and you're still down to practice more, still down for that experience. Like, yeah, yeah. That's the mentality I, that you need in order to get good, right? I, I mean, uh, I think uh, at some point we played like a couple of hours. So I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't get down if I lose, if I lose. I just uh, see it as practice. Okay. And go on. That's pretty. That's a pretty good mentality for sure. And I feel like uh, it's definitely something that some players will struggle with initially. They'll feel like, you know, maybe they aren't getting it. But uh, there's definitely a lot of learning material out there with all the casts because there's those daily videos you were talking about earlier. And uh, you know, in addition to getting more people to look at it in the first place, it's also maybe you know if the player is good, if you recognize a name, like you see Nebline playing or something, like oh, I can learn some things. So definitely some stuff to uh, to try to look at and analyze. But hey, thank you for playing and the time you spent. Thanks for the practice and uh, congrats on making it out. You know, Top Ramen's not a, not an easy guy to get go go over through, just like Neblime found out. And Neblime himself, yeah. obviously a, a veritable force. So congrats on making it through. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, GGs, and we'll see you later on. Yeah, see you. All righty then, ladies and gentlemen, that pretty much wraps us up for Group C. And you know what that means. It means we are about to move on to Group D, but not until we get a little bit of a break in. So we'll be back in about 30, 35 minutes to break out none other than Neblime and myself for the purpose of co-casting that group where we'll be seeing our final two entrants into the throne room stage. 
and it's going to come at a little bit of a grudge match. Hapsea obviously already here reigning as the guy who received an invite from the previous performance in the last tournament. But we've got General Anakin, an upstart Protoss, pretty good micro. We've got the Beaver 99, a childhood friend of General Anakin's, and he's playing Terran, and he's definitely massively improved to get this far. So let's see what kind of stuff we see after the break.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. So back, in fact, that I even brought Nebwine with me. How you doing, dude? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good, you know. Made, uh, it through. Made it through. I've recovered from playing the game, you know. Ah, yes, that's right. It takes, a, it takes the wind out of you sometimes. Especially when you get yeah. uh, sucker punched by spicy ramen at the start. Yeah, right, man. Like I said in the interview, it was too spicy. Yeah. Hey, you know what, though? Handle that it. was his only dub, unfortunately. He does not make it through. So yeah, you have to a sigh of relief knowing that you'd... I was kind of telling Tucker Cake's brother that, like, I'm sorry, Tucker Cake's going to get eliminated because I thought I would win. I thought Tucker, the top Roman would handle him, but the opposite happened. Oh, wow. Okay. Were you guys yeah. playing him in Vicious Box? Is the Yeah, Tucker I've been playing a couple times. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank I didn't know guess. if he had been playing against people, so no idea. Yeah, no, we played So some... here, here's the thing, though. You're the only non-Protoss who exited in first place, and he can't face you because he was in your group. So he's guaranteed. Oh my god! I just ZVP. looked at this. Yeah, this is this is actually pretty P dominated. If you just look at the top row, what the hell? Well, the only thing that can be different is if Hapsaya doesn't exit in first place. If and even then, if it's General Anakin in first because of some craziness, right? That's a little bit different too. But uh, all right, well, the Beaver you know, would I need to top his group in order for it to be a potential ZVT instead, right? I did predict the other two groups perfectly. Uh, the only sticking point is my own. I think I did predict that I would win, so you know, but I really thought Taco Cake would be eliminated, the top row would come out, but Taco Cake man crushed through. But I'm still I'm still have faith in my calls. I think Hubsea is gonna get it four row as well here. Just to put me to shame for being the returning one who dropped the game, you know. Of course, of course. Well, two out of three of our players have already checked them out. There's, of course, none other than the Beaver 99 rounding us out here. So let's talk about this group, man. You saw General Anakin. You saw how powerful this guy was. Dude, I don't know what to say. The Beaver was, like, coming up, but General Anakin kind of just dismantled him. Uh, I think General Anakin's got it between those two. Look, man, I, like I said, I'm just straight up calling the 4-0, and then we just interested in the fight between the survivors, you know? No. I'm honestly not that interested to see Hapsaya crush him, assuming he goes out easily. You know, if is losing games and there's a chance he'll lose, that's hype. But okay. my, man, he's probably just going to, like, take their lunch money and then leave them to squabble over the pennies remaining, you know? That's what I want to see. All right, I see. Okay. We'll see, though. You know, Hapsaya's definitely been playing since Ascension, but maybe not playing as much as some. And, you know, Anakin and Beaver have just been playing a lot to try and get back in for uh, this gauntlet. Hapsaya <laughs> in chat. Yeah, yeah, you do. That's that's all the prize pool you're going to get, Hapsaya, though, is the nickels and dimes they got to buy a hot dog with. That's right, that's right. Hey, we're not in the 50s anymore. That's at least $3 for that hot dog. There you go. Don't mind if you are. Oh, Beavis, uh, Beavis in there, too. He's been watching the streams as well, so he's up on that stuff. Yeah, listen, Look, I think that's General Anakin as well saying, uh, coming for you, so I don't know. I want to see the underdogs win, but I just don't believe, you know? Well, I just don't believe. It's, it's, you're going to have to start believing it's the beaver against Hepsea for our opening match. All right, then. TVP, start us off. That's right, that's right. Not the last one we'll see today, probably. I thought Hepsea was going to pick, like, 69 or something, and then it would be the the, the family uh, bloodbath over here. General Anakin and the Beaver 99 basically <laughs> practically being family. They've known each other forever. Started into the same group is brutal. And then, of course, got Hapsaya just watching, cackling, laughing as he loads into the game. And here's the beaver. Beat him to the punch on the lo on the lobby join. Hapsaya lagging That's a free point right there. That's right, that's right. One O beaver. We'll kill one of Hapsaya's workers at the start of the game. <laughs> you got to make a mode where witnesses can do that, where they can just, like, delete units. Yeah, the, the god mode, right? I decide. Yeah, StarCraft, Ling Blood with God and that stuff, you know, classic. Yeah, dude, imagine with Cosmonarchy support where you can, like, modify the triggers so you can just literally right-click, delete a unit or something. You know, I wonder, though, would the UMS scene be as interesting if we had so much more freedom, though? Because mm. so much of what's cool about Brood War UMS maps is what they've done with so little, even, like, non-EUD maps, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the I mean, limitations. You know, look at StarCraft freedom, 2. Right? So. Yeah, yeah. Look at StarCraft 2's custom maps, right? A lot of them are cool, but the scene doesn't have the same vibe to it, you know? <laughs> well, yeah. I guess there's an expectation of jank with Brood War, even for playing yes. the game normally. And so yeah, and you have to, to use your US. imagination, you yeah. know, a lot. You're like, well, here's my Goliaths and Zergans, but no, it's like an armored knight and some uh, barbarians. I don't know. Like, mm. you gotta, you gotta really, 
you use your imagination. You got to click on the snaps. unit names to feel the real view. Exactly. Instead of looking exactly. at the graphic, you know, it doesn't. Mm. Well, still waiting for Hepsea to join the lobby, and we will eventually get people in here. He's taking his sweet. Hepsea is about to demand a higher fee because of what I was saying. Oh no, he just updated. Okay. One more minute. So far, it's been pretty hype, man. I gotta say, it's yeah, been going sure. pretty nicely. And it's funny because so far, it's also been according to seating. Not sure if that's gonna hold in this group. I think there's a well, chance for listen. The Beaver Ninety Nine. I don't know what he's been prepping since his victory, but he did defeat a Protoss to get here. And you know, it's Benno. You can say mixed things about Benno. I expect Hapsay and General Anakin will be Benno. much more aggressive. But if the Beaver Ninety Nine can steal himself in that respect, then he might be able to outlast his opponents, right? All the players I'm a fan of are out. No Benno, no Biddy B, no Jack. I know. Come on, man. Like, I have to win it because I don't want anyone else to win now. The people I would want to win are out. Well, maybe one of these players here will make you a believer and uh, yeah, make maybe. you a fan specifically, right? Make it would be amazing if General Anakin continued his run coming out of nowhere, man. I, I'm keen for him. If it's between the two, General Anakin and Beaver, I think Beaver's the underdog, though, so I have to root for him. Yes, that's right. I, I would assume so. I mean, I don't know. He said that uh, he keeps saying, man. Beaver just walk. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, General Anakin's uh, whooping my ass with Panoptuses. Nerf Panoptus. <laughs> so, Did he say that? Yeah, that was a while ago, though. Interesting. I don't know if that's still. Maybe he's figured oh, yeah. out the Mask Goliath strat or something. Before the uh, Stargate cost nerf? No, no, this is fairly recent. I want to say the last couple weeks. Before the Gauntlet, though. But the Stargate cost nerf was like months ago, so. Old news. Ah, oh, yes. There it is. Look, the Beaver 99 has updated his status on Discord to in a Cause Monarchy tournament. Check that out, dude. Check that out. Nice. Spreading the word. It's funny because I thought maybe you, you had only set your status, which is a CMBW champion for now. Uh, I thought for sure that was like something you only set for this server, but actually it's just true in general if I click on your name. Yeah. Anyway, so you really if I win this one, I'll remove the for now. Right, of course, yeah. It'll be permanent. I mean, when Mystery Meat comes back, I'll probably add, like, not for long or something. <laughs> he could still do it. is saying he's getting a different version error. That doesn't make any sense. Either. Is he actually playing release? He's using the new launcher, I assume? Yeah, he is using the new launcher. Wait, or, you he was playing earlier. Really, the... so. Hmm, weird. You didn't somehow patch in the, like, 20 minutes between no, groups? No, no, didn't do anything. Would have been funny, I just pat shadow implement the Zobria disk, and then there's no Zuri's here. Yeah, <laughs> no one even knows. That's like we were talking about adding the secret spot on the map. That's like, you know, the dev cheat is like this unit that you only yeah. know exists. Yeah. It doesn't show up in the command card, you gotta know the hotkey. Yeah, even, but you have to do some ritual sacrifice. Find some magic input to log. Just deletes the enemy's main town center. Mm. Like that. It's a cheat code. They just what happened. It doesn't even die, it's just, it's just gone. Yeah, like ceases to exist. You you have to time it with something that makes it look not suspicious though. So if you uh, like if you walk in with like eight zealots. Here he is. Here he is, fucking chimp say uh, Made me run updater twice. All part of the plan. All part of Pronogo's nefarious schemes. Just trying to erode Hubsea mentally just that little bit. Maybe Beaver can get a win here. <laughs> Let's see if he... <laughs> he didn't realize he couldn't play as Chimpsea. That's too bad. Oh, right, yes, because this is a Acropolis. you got to stick with your name, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, It Depends wanted to be named Fraud. And I was like, listen, dude, not only can I not allow that, because this is the No Frauds Club. Yeah, he's stealing your branding in a way. I guess inverting it, but still. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, in the opening uh, video, the intro video for the whole thing, it says, uh, welcome to the No Frauds Club. I'm Pronogo, the first fraud. So it's pretty confusing <laughs> to start. But there are a lot, you know. I haven't even. There was a top yeah. comment there, a really hit comment that said, they're allowed one fraud. <laughs> <It's> like, <yeah. laughs> okay, there you one go. One gets in. Uh, so we don't know if it's the real Hubsire, man. If it doesn't have the name, everything's not all official. Like we need to see right. some ID. 
Uh, apparently, he's having difficulty joining. Oh, there he is. <laughs> All right. We'll just uh, get right into there things here. Of course, of course. All okay, right. they're ready at last. They are indeed ready at last. All right. Let's uh, get this countdown rolling. It's going to be Group D, none other than Brotherly Blood starting us off here. We've got Hapsea in the bottom left and the Beaver 99 in the top right, representing the last Protoss. Uh, sorry, the last Terran Hope. I said Protoss because he wrote GLHF. <laughs> There's plenty of Protoss Hope, man. That's not dying. Uh, we already have two Protoss in, do we not? Hold on. Was it three? I'm already confusing you. I'll wait for him to. Okay. Well, what happened? Yeah, he's using an auto hockey script to use the camera movement. Ah. Uh, a little bit of a different thing, and he's having some difficulties apparently. Man, I'm saying a plague by technical difficulties here. I know. Yeah, he's really having a tough go of it. He was just practicing earlier, and everything was fine. I guess he was playing on pre-release though. Hmm. So we are going to get into a TVP here. Now, Beaver, he puts Total Protoss Destruction. Well, they put TDP this time. I'm not sure what I think he corrected himself step. after. Oh, he did? Okay, good. Yeah. There's not some other secret acronym that's going to like reveal how he plays. Two port... Uh, what starts with a D? Is it comes from... The well, yeah, he might be saying port. the old name for the Trojan, you know, the dropship. Well, oh, right, yeah. Two pad dropship. I mean, get those Sorokins in there, man. I'm sad no one else is using it. Maybe I should have stayed Terran anyway. Okay, well. Okay, well. All right. Getting the Johns in. His, uh... Uh... Remap for... Mm. Middle mouse. So he's just on the regular F1. Yeah, he's just so basically, uh, if he's doing, he, you can know. do middle mouse button to move the camera gradually, and he uses spacebar for that. And so oh, I see. It's in his auto hockey. Does he use that a lot? Well. You know, because I never use that uh, that movement method. I usually just click on the map. That's what I do. Uh, if I'm not just moving around with hockeys. Yeah, well, the middle mouse button is a lot more usable in, in Cosmonarchy than it is in. Um, Starcraft 1 by Sure, default. it's not insane. It's not like you'll be across the map in a split yeah. second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where it's... Although, I, that is handy in Brood War, because what I do is when I'm scouting with my workers, I just use that to instantly go to the corner, you know? So there's always a use for everything, no matter how insane it is. Well, you can definitely you can definitely make it happen, that's for sure. Now, we have the beaver going for a fast fulcrum, and it's off to the side. We saw him do this... In his series against Taco Cake, funnily enough, Ooh. with his first structures. And we have a Lattice coming Hey, Hateway Lattice, yeah. Was he looking at Three Crows games thinking, you know what? It's actually pretty good. I don't well, know. remember Ooh, I double said... double Fulcrum. He's okay. going to go for double Vulture okay. here, I think. Yeah, look at the Fulcrum um, behind the mineral line. <laughs> he's, he's still mining gas. You know, it is kind of spicy, though, because as long as a Vulture or whatever is out, it's not likely a scout's going to come in here and say a Vassal flies in. It might not go in that far. I mean, I don't know. It could work. It's going to be Vulture. No, wait. Oh, no. Yes. Making a Cyclops. Yes. Oh, no. Nebulheim, no. he's going to kill him with Cyclops. Okay, what are you going to do with two back, two Fulcrum, rather, Cyclops just ground pounding? I don't really see how that's going to work. Um, well, they definitely work better with Vultures because the Lobotomy Mines freeze the enemy units or slow them at, at worst. And I feel like that's only really effective on the defense, though. I think if you're trying to just get in there and kill your opponent, just spamming the Vultures is the way to go. I guess with the Vassals out, that wouldn't have worked out that well, but I don't know. Oh, well, he's switching That's back into Vulture now. Very good. So, you know. Okay, yeah. So here's the thing, right? Well, um, Hapsaya has this plan, and he's been practicing it. He even practiced it a bit on stream. He's got the Vassal out. He's going to go ahead and use the Vassal to scout, because he's conditioned right. from playing against Newt that the first Vulture pops out and kills his scouting scribe. So he's not even going to send the scribe. He's going to scout with the Vassals. That's going to force more anti-air, probably, if I had to guess. And... Uh, it will mean that he's investing a lot of resources into not having a very scary ground army. We've got a scrapyard coming. Okay. Hmm. I, I like it. These black jacks was going to get the full scout here. Presumably he flies in front of the second fulcrum. Yeah. Um, I do like the idea of just getting that scout off really early. And one Cyclops to contest this. He's going to have to go over there and deal with it. He hasn't seen the fulcrum yet, by the way. The vassal's efficient range is really small. Oh my god, it's like a Zephyr Core. Uh, 
Where's the Cyclops? Come on, buddy. What are you shooting at? You shooting at the other one? Oh yeah. my god. I don't know no, that he saw... saw that, honestly. I really think that he didn't see that fulcrum. Ooh. Maybe just narrowly. Maybe just narrowly. Okay, but he has three Draconans out already, and like Vassal's to back it up. I don't think he's necessarily in danger, but I don't know. A bunch of Blackjacks get up. If he doesn't micro these Draconans precisely and they fall, the Vassals are not going to save him on their own. Could be dicey. He does go for the Nexus right away, not expecting much aggression here. Yeah, you know, and, and because his gateway army is under strength, his ground army is under strength, I think Beaver has a real chance for the surprise hit. Especially if that, I mean, Ooh. if he doesn't see that second Fulcrum because it was placed behind the... No, but yeah. he's wasting the opportunity of the mind. He needs to be right on the ramp. And this is a mistake I see a lot. People play their minds out there as if they're Spider-Mans or something and the enemy's actually going to care. But really, you're just wasting them like this. And the enemy's away are there. Imagine if his army was in position, he yeah. would have killed most of those vassals. But now, Hapsir probably knows there's more mines. He's not going to commit... Beaver really lost an opportunity there. We could have even crushed that army. I think so, yeah. But you know what? Doing a lot of damage, and now I think Hapsaya is hes going to be thinking twice about being so far forward. He's massing up vassals, but against Cyclops? That's like the worst possible choice. I feel like it's still optional to at least harass with them, though, because as long as you keep moving, you won't get hurt too bad. Um, but the Blackjacks are good against him, too. Certainly, he will not be fighting the army with that, or if he does, he's going to regret it. But see, look at this. He's going to try and sneak around here. He's yeah, again, the vision range is too small. He didn't see that army move out. Ooh. He has no idea, so... And he could get baited really badly by Cyclops, actually, if they get the engagement. Yeah, that's right. I think this one it's vassal good. is going to spot it. Yeah, it's going to be revealed. And uh, what is the response? He's going to try to tickle the oh, scrapyard. Oh, the scrapyard! Eh, yeah, you I know, the Cyclops is going to come on it. down. Yeah. Yeah, I guess one Blackjack, one Cyclops can sort of handle it, although he's coming back in. He wants blood, man! Repairing that scrapyard. The army in the middle of the map, it's going to get revealed by yet another vassal. Yeah, Beaver hesitating here when really he could be pushing pretty hard. He doesn't know that. He doesn't know that. The Warden on the way here for the front line. I think, actually, Hapsaya thought this was going to be drops, and he's bamboozled, right? He's got the one yeah. Warden inside the mineral line. He's got the two well, gateways something out. else that uh, Newt's been doing is the four Cyclops drop, right, which has been pretty effective. Here we go. The fight's going to start going down here in a minute. The Blackjack's here to ride the DPS. The Vulture's potentially yeah. with mines. Well, actually, I don't think they have any mines left. No, but, but I, really, I really like Beaver's composition here. I don't think Hapsaya yeah. can hold this. I mean, he's got the Wardens coming, so the one of them is going to finish, but we can go work on that pylon if uh, Beaver wants to. He's going to fall back instead. Yeah, you got to be careful, though. These units are squishy. Everything that uh, Beaver has dies real fast. It's his glass cannon sort of composition, if you like, so he does have to be careful here. Yeah, I think if he has, like, three, four more Blackjacks, he can actually force this engagement and just kill the Wardens, but he does need to deal with the fact that he's only bruised a couple of these Draconans and such. The Hierophant's staying alive as well. <clears throat> Pretty big deal there, because it means that you can't actually get the... Uh, you can't avoid the slow that's going to hit you, right? We do see a treasury coming down here, by the way, and this is one of those no quarry openings. Yep. Um, so he's going to fall a little bit behind in workers, but I think he will catch up and still be in a reasonable position. And the army is sort of bullying Protoss right now. He needs to be careful, though, he doesn't overextend here. I feel like at a certain point he needs to pull back, especially if those legionnaires could get the engagement. Yeah, and the Cyclops attacking melee units when they really want to be splashing the back line to get all of that yeah. damage dealt and reduce the shields. That's an underrated aspect of the Cyclops versus Protoss, but fairly rated is their survivability, which is to say they don't really have that much. So I really do think that a lot of this is going to come down to not having much of a front line, not having much chaff. Yeah, there is a lot of DPS force. there, though. Oh, yeah. The Legionnaires probably just get chewed up instantly, but I don't know. There's enough sort of back line there. I think Hapsaya takes this. Now they're going to commit to the fight. Hierophant slowing that Vulture. The Legion mm. is not going to last long, but what is left? Does he have enough to gun down this ranged stuff? Decent micro from Hapsaya trying to get the shields back. Hierophant's sort of too fast for its own good, and he's pushing him back. It's two Dracodons. Yeah, Going indeed. Third. Another one will fall. Oh, there's Blackjacks, man. They hit hard. It's only Blackjacks left. Can the DPS wall be enough here? There's an embassy, so the worker count will continue to rise for Hepsea behind this. The treasury has not landed. The quarry, sure, it's done. I would turn around and fight this if I'm Beaver, but that's just because I know the power of Blackjacks. They are really strong. Yeah, a couple of injured ones, though, are going to fall behind here if he tries to retreat. That's what I'm you saying, yeah. Some uh, clerics here, or maybe shamans would be quite good. Uh, looks like he's going to build this down. The idol actually quite good against the blackjacks here because there's good range, and doing that splash is actually quite effective against blackjacks. Yep. Chasing one of them down is going to oh, no. find it thanks to the Hierophant that's still alive from the beginning of the game, mind you. Already taken th over 300 health, damage. Yep. Oh, first they get slowed and then they get really slowed. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Mines for the retreat. Still going to be able to pick that last one off. Man, the Blackjacks are good, they hit really hard, but they drop like flies, man. They die so fast sometimes. I think a lot of that is down to the focus fire from Hup, so good targeting from him. Although he did leave a lot of them bruised, it feels like... 
you know, more opportunities on the table. Now we're going to see a stockade. That's probably going to be a Vestry add-on. He's built a third Fulcrum and continuing to rally out now Vultures, as well as the, of course, the uh, inevitable Blackjack counts. The first time we're seeing Blackjacks see... in the tournament, by the way. Yeah, actually, that's interesting. Um, we do see the macro slip in a bit. I mean, he's spending his money, Beaver, but he's not organized himself to catch up in workers here, whereas we see Hapsir pulling ahead by 20. He did not have the embassy for that long. It's pretty much two worker queues. So, yeah. unfortunately, Beaver, not quite a handle on the priorities here. Even though his army's put up a good fight so far, I'm worried that Hapsir is going to start overwhelming him here with numbers. He's only going to have worker queue parity with this third uh, worker production queue, thanks to that second quarry. And that, part of that is that his quarry was super late, right? He didn't have the quarry out for a very long time. Witness out yes. to detect the mines, and it looks like Hapsir is going to go in for another move. Ooh. Well, the thing is, the mines will at least still tell you which direction Protoss is attacking from. And he's not exposed at the third here, so he can actually pull back if he needs to. Plenty more vultures to lay mines. The vultures, as the game goes on, are sort of a mid-unit, but it is still good to have mines everywhere. Yep. Uh, now, let's see. He sees the army by throwing away that vulture. Okay. An architect on the way, by the way, is going to be a very deadly unit against these blackjacks. That's right, yeah. You and don't want your witness to get stunned by that mine, by the way, because it will be revealed, and then you'll oh, be able to pick slaughter. it up. So. Yep, the Vulture's Crushes those range. idols. No more crowd control now for Hapsaya. He has to be really careful here. He cannot underestimate his opponent's army. Yeah, and those Vultures crush those Protoss melee, just like Base Brood War, really. They do a lot of damage there. The Blackjacks in the back do so much. Hapsaya repulsed with heavy losses here. Oh, yeah. Not really that much back at home either. If you think about it, it's a lot of zealots. He's setting up his third base over at the 6 o'clock location, but that could get canceled. And then maybe Beaver can continue to pick these things up. Mm, here's the thing, Hapsai can afford the losses a lot better because yep. he has a lot more workers and he's getting the higher tech, trying to build up those architects. If it's the architects he's losing, he doesn't want that. But man, Beaver relentless with the pursuit, he's going to get a lot more units trying to go down this ramp. A yeah, bit of poor management for Hapsai did not foresee the pathing issues there. You know, the architect on high ground will definitely put pay to this attack, but... The workers transferring, surely Beaver knows, oh. right? He puts his atlas down behind this push. He should know that that means that there's a base being set up here, and there's only one Huge. warden. Hapsaya is going to have to concede this base because his army cannot stand to this. If only he had some more mines to lay, he could put them where Hapsaya's army's coming in. Now, again, it's a lot of Protoss melee coming in. The architect is on the low ground, though, trying to help out here. Yeah, all right, pull away from the Nexus. Good control from the Beaver 99 here. Trying to make sure that he gives as many frags oh, hello, the Scanning whole time. Where, yeah, here's a watchdog to, for good measure. I could have helped fight, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, funnily enough, versus the vassals. I mean, against the melee only, I feel like he could still probably fight this. I guess there's vassals to help too, so you got to be careful. He's, he's going to rejoin the rest of his army here. I think he wants to focus a little bit more on the uh, macro side, though. Queuing up a couple more workers here. As good saturation for two bases, the problem is Hapsaya has a third nexus up and running. That architect being really brought down a lot faster than I thought, and that's what allows Hapsaya to hold on to that nexus. You know, in CMBW, we see a lot of time, those town centers are very tanky, and that can play a big part, and without anything like Arakans or Matadors, it's going to take a while to kill that. Uh, and now Hapsaya pushing in the middle again. Yeah. Beaver unleashing his inner Zerg here, just going around the side. Is he going to counterattack? I don't know if he can hold it home, though. He has no anchors or anything like that. Yeah, uh, yeah, the Atlas is only now finished. finished. He can only put Sentinels down right this moment. Here's the push. Does he go for it? I think he's going to go full base trade style, but I don't know that he can do this. Now, again, base trading versus a Terran, sometimes ill-advised. What will Hepsea do as the force decides to descend? Deliberately flanking and moving across the other side has to be as cost efficient as possible. The architect not nearing completion just yet. If the beaver pivots directly up and tries to pummel Hepsea's production, we might be in for a real banger of a first map. The Sentinels are building, by the way, and I'm sorry, not aware of this. I mean, I feel like he needs to be building more of them, by the way, but uh, if he can buy enough time to get those up, there's a chance here. The production is kind of at a standstill, though. Beaver's back early falling down, and I don't know what these distracting Masons are doing. He's, and he's pulling you know, the cord. He's pulling the cord. Oh, Abandoning I ship, but I don't think it's going to be enough. The Architect there. just finished, and I think that's going to hold him back at home. An oh, all-in move. Risky, but he doesn't go up and shut down the Ardent Authority. He doesn't shut down the production. Focuses on the macro, and that's not really what was going to help him there. Well, at least he had, he had a shot, though. That that counterattack, you know, if he had a couple Sentinels up early, say he had like four Sentinels in this high ground, he could yeah. hold his two bases. Say he does disable the production, probably what would happen is Hapsai would eventually come home, uh, but he would be so damaged. But as it stands, it looks like uh, Beaver gutted his own base before Hapsai even got there. He's going to try and land over here, but this is all but over. Yeah, Hapsai is going to come up here and here. just start typing because, like, why are you still in the game? <laughs> You think so? I think so. All the Masons dying. Down to only what? Is it going to be down to two workers, dude?
Yep. Hmm. Habiba starts the typing wars. He broaches the new front in this game. Can he emerge victorious if not in battle? <laughs> He'll oh, self destruct. Oh, self destruct. Oh, oh, he's going to get a couple. Of... No, he only ends oh, up destroying God. his own GG. stuff. Look at that. GG called. All right. Check it out, boys. Hapsaya on the board. Do you think Hapsaya was like even looking at his army there and being like, where's his base? Or he's just kind of a moving in? I think he, home? I think he just knew he was ahead and he was probably, yeah. talking, he's probably shit talking like, hey, dude, why is this case? You know how is he on his stream? Is. Oh, is yeah, yeah. Stream? he's streaming this. Of course. Gotta, gotta. Well, that's why he doesn't have to type because he can just talk to his chat. Oh, okay. I like the idea of the, the float. I did think that maybe it would work. Um, well, no big surprise there though. Hapsaya handling Hapsaya, uh, handling Hapsaya, handling the beaver fairly well. Although I like beaver's play style, definitely looked dangerous. It was super dangerous, and I feel like there was a li there's a world where he gets like the faster timing on the first push before Hapsaya can amass the ground army. Um, yeah, that well, that and that's there, right? part of the problem with what he's doing. I feel like he doesn't have a good tactical instinct for it when he needs to attack, when he needs to not attack. Um, and also when to expand. But you get these things by playing more and more. And I think people will definitely continue to be doing that. Alright, it's General Anakin's turn to take a crack. Yep, Maybe General Anakin thought the game would go longer and he's ducked out, I don't know. Yeah, no, I think he was in chat earlier, so he should be aware. Spectating his, uh, his homie. He's like doing the warm-ups, like cracking his knuckles. That's right. He's coming for him. Considering the maps that we have on offer. And listen, mm, man. What would you pick for a PvP, I wonder? Yeah, I think a lot of it's going to come down to, uh... Dude, what if he pulls out the three minute mind tyrant? No way Hapsaya was watching the uh the qualification. I mean, he could have been. You know? He could have been. I, I don't know how often he watches. He comments on videos that he I cast of him, but I don't think he comments on many other videos. By the way, Shambler's trying to give Hapsaya the same curse he gave me. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't actually click on it, obviously. But... It's on me. Impetus it is. All right. Okay. See how it goes. General Anakin selecting to face Hapsaya. Meanwhile, see what he can do. I think he's he's shilling the, the game right now. So. All right, he's in. All right, random versus random for this one, right? Oh, no, they ruined nah, it. General Anakin's figured it out. Or has he? <laughs> so, it uh, looks like there will be a bathroom break. Hapsaya, electing to, uh, hopefully having resolved his uh, tech issues, is now going to pop on in and start uh, start blasting, you know? Mm, well, yes, no mercy now. Because, uh, he's, you know, even though he's had the issues, he's got his hands in for the first game anyway. And it's a mirror matchup, you know, so there's no sort of trickiness to mm -hmm. being asymmetrical. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, Hupside just takes this one smoothly as well. Yeah, what does that do, by the way? If Hapsaya goes 4-0 and you're the only one to not go 4-1, despite being the reigning champion, do I seed you last out of the top seeds? Like, how's that work? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I will say your I play do? versus, uh, you know, later on definitely uh, sharpened up, so... It's curious. He he got you with the sucker punch, but you figured out uh, how to put the boxing gloves on at the end and got rid of him. Yeah, you know, the thing is, Robin plays very differently to a lot of people. Um, I think it's why I struggled to him. And you saw I committed too much early on. Lost a lot of stuff. Um, my thinking in there was, well, I said, like I said in the interview, actually, no, I don't think I did say interview. I was saying to Biddy B, I felt like I needed to sort of drone up more and get more stuff before I get to tier two in so many bases. And that worked a lot better on uh, mm. Germination. 
Well, yeah, I'm because not, Top Ramen does play Nugget a little Terry. bit, little bit passively, right? So. Well, yes, but he also comes out with a strong, like, singular push and just goes for the win. Yeah. Newt roams a lot more, which I think definitely is effective. There's pros and cons to both. Because um, you want to stop Zerg from moving around freely, and because I'm always trying to position for a flank, you can pick off units that way, and, yep. you know, if you sense weakness, you can dive in. Whereas, yeah, Raman just stays at home completely, and then he just comes to kill you on, like, pretty few bases. Like, in both games, he pushed down on two bases, didn't he? Yep, yeah, yeah. And he would take three bases behind it, right? Or maybe even yeah, more. Course, like, on the Purgatory, I don't think you ever found it. He had three o'clock for, like, five minutes, ten minutes or something. Oh, are you kidding me? Yeah, I did yeah. not know. The only oh, base you God. didn't check, by the way. <laughs> Every time, right? I can't believe it. I can't That's believe it. That's why he was in that for so long, I think, so oh okay i was a bit closer than i thought i guess because you can see why i was thinking it was pretty one-sided for me then oh i'm saying it's here he says hmm. hmm oh i guess he can tell because he's uh when it works he can't use his middle mouse button to or he can't use his space bar to type <laughs> so he can, ah. all of his words come out in one thing <laughs> all right general is ready happens. he doesn't have time for this yeah, I don't know. I mean, Yapse is the one who's electing to not uh, try to fix it, so it's interesting there. Oh, right. Sorry, I didn't even see Yapse had said ready, so I thought, oh, okay, yeah. Jim is hitting us with the R. No, no, no. We are all good in the hood, homies. We've got General Anakin in the top right and Yapse in the bottom left. And you can tell it's Yapse because he types with a space bar, right? That means he's the real Yapse, not a fraud. <laughs> right. Well, he has the correct name. Are we checking, like, you know, no one replaced an L with a pipe or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Classic. Disqualified if you do that, by the way, so watch out, everyone. It's a pet peeve of ours, especially Neblons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. All those barcodes, man, have given me PTSD over the years. I do think barcodes are pretty lame, but uh, I also think that's mostly because, like, if you had an alt account and you named it something kind of clever or cool and it revealed something about who you were or what you were thinking, or it was just, like, a cool narrative, that would be more interesting than just... One 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 or L L L L L or whatever the fuck you know. It's like... Well, it is a bit tough for pros specifically because um, they, they dedicate their whole life to. to the game and don't have any understanding of literature or music or art or anything to draw upon for references. Yeah, I guess that is pretty difficult. That's not what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably not true mean... for RTS pros, but I'm thinking of like the Counter Strike pros that I sometimes will interact with, and they're like, "Hey, man, I know two songs." It's like, all right, dude. You're 20, but you just sound like you're 12. Well, here. what I do remember is uh, Innovation, when he was kind of first having his big break in StarCraft 2, they interviewed him, and it was actually kind of painful because it's like, what are you what are you interested in? He's just like, I like taking walks, and then yeah. I like, tried to get like any information yeah. about him at yeah. all, and he was just like, okay, anything else? Like, no, I just want to show good games to the fans. You know, it's like, okay, I, I guess that's how you become the best Terran in the world. I guess so, right? Well, hey, here's how you become the best Protoss in the world, you lattice. Of course. So, it's the matchup. It, the shoe was on the other foot last mm -hmm. time, was it not? Oh, wait, no, it wasn't, because it was 3-crow with the lattices. Um, Again, Hapsaya so, practiced against 3-crow. He practiced this uh, build. 3-crow, you deployed it after that. So, I feel like that PvP build, like, he's got something planned here. We'll see what it is. Mm, so, maybe Hapsaya showed his true power and 3-crow couldn't quite manage it. So, Hierophant first again. I wonder, is there any... Okay, this is a vassal. I was going to say, is there any particular la lattice unit that like really synergizes with that? But I couldn't really think of anything. The Hierophant Bolin, he likes to it's melee? The Hierophant he likes to go for because it will allow him to micro individual... Like, he basically puts everything on A-move and then micros the Hierophant specifically. Because he oh, wants okay. to be able to like target down and like keep the, the stutter stepping going and stuff. So I think it definitely is powerful you get that yeah. first one. Now, it's interesting that Ecclesius was the first unit to make. Mm. Um, they are kind of cheap, like in total resources, but it is a bit weird, uh, spending that gas on that right away. But now he's following up with the Legionnaires. Maybe it's just a matter of getting the, the ranged units out initially. Look at that. He's going to see the vassal, but he's going to have nothing at home. Only Legionnaires are going to be produced. He could lose a few scribes here, but actually Hapsaya thinks better of it. Well, there's only one vassal. It's going to take a very long time. And there is one Dracon in production well, as a warden comes up as well. So. If he kills even two scribes though, that's huge. Especially since Gemini is cut to produce here. Now it's producing Draconans. Um... And he's not going to be able to bust this ramp with this force. Man, he needs to not do this. Well, you Ooh, say that, it. but the Legionnaires can absolutely stay alive for a very long time. And there's only one of them right now. The rest of them kind of gotten stuffed up there. And we see Hapsaya already falling back. Definitely has the fear in him. Hasn't seen this kind of opener before. But now you're on top of his production. Now the production going to favor Hapsaya. General Anakin might have just overstepped his bounds. 
Yeah, hugely. And he's going to lose his Ecclesiast now, which is really important. He needed to wait for more of a massive Legionnaires there. Now it's going to be pure Legionnaires. Well, it is Draken in production now, it turns out. Um, that Vassal did not manage to get any kills. But like I said, uh, Anakin has cut production of workers for this. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he five really workers. Didn't get any eco damage. Very tough position here. He needs to get the pressure on somehow, but he's already given up his key units, really. Draconin's not going to be able to bust this ramp. I like the idea. If those three extra Legionnaires were there and the Ecclesiasts kept them alive, I mean, Hapseo was doing pretty good on the micro. I think he would have target selected the Ecclesiasts anyway, but he would have definitely stood a, a stronger chance. Instead, going to have to play from a deficit. Does have the three gates. Is constantly producing off of these three gates. So he will not be able to float any money towards like an expansion or towards something else. But if Hapseo is not careful, he'll actually end up losing the next military engagement, which sounds crazy to think about with the worker advantage he has. But Hapseo is banking for an expansion, right? And then he'll probably bank for a, an embassy, which actually well, General Anakin has just put down. So, Yeah, I like it to try and get back here. But I think the thing is Hapseo will be able to scout. Did he just attack his own idol? With the uh, <laughs> vassals pretty well. Uh, and that will sort of keep him with a good lead, I think, if he scouts and reacts. Now, if he decides not to fly into the enemy base, he may indeed overextend or just get caught falling a bit behind. But just get that Nexus right away. And, you know, General Anakin uh, and actually Beaver as well, the really big difference I see with these sort of less favored players is their reticence to expand. you really got to get that down as quickly as you can. Be quite aggressive about it. Because, um, yeah, even if Hapsaya doesn't engage at all, he's still going to pull ahead because he's just yeah. got that Nexus. Well, here's the thing. The idols were specifically crafted to deal with heavy melee compositions, and the Legionnaires Ooh. don't have a lot of durability. The question is, do Ecclesiasts deal with that nicely enough? And here come some of the Legionnaires charging on forward, but they are definitely melting to the combined might of all of those idols. Now, at the same time, the Ecclesiasts are keeping them alive for a very long amount of time, but we still have a little bit of front line here for Hapsaya. He will crack on through, and I think he's just about wrapped this one up. Dude, those Vassal buff was actually huge there. Uh, that was very impactful, but now he just crushes through. General Anakin honorably GG's before he makes him come over and depower his stuff. That's a, a honorable surrender. I like it. There it is. There it is. Well, Hapsay up to a very quick 2-0. The uh, plan there not exactly facilitating for our good boy General Anakin. He was not able to make it in. And now it'll be the Beaver 99 with another attempt and coming at the king. And this time I think maybe he won't miss. All right. Well... Interesting, we saw both games, I feel like uh, the non hapsea players lacking a bit of tactical instinct they would have needed there. It's tough in that early game when you haven't scattered your opponent yet. Um, well, I guess except for the worker. But yeah, Hapsea, so handling him pretty easily. Still on track for that 4-0. And listen, that's what can happen when you go for the 3-gate, and then you uh, maybe are a little bit uh, hazy on the first attack. I think it was looking really scary initially, but those three Legionnaires really needed to link up with the rest of the army. Somehow the one Vassal kind of throwing him for a loop, and then he invests in a Warden thinking there's going to be more Vassals, but there wasn't. It was a bit of a mind game there. General Anakin has definitely yeah. not practiced against that kind of style. I can pretty much guarantee The thing that. is, you have to make it, because whoever uses him, the army or comes and harasses, like, you don't know. And he did have, like, five or six, right? So if you have no Warden, that's going to be devastating. But it is interesting that Hapsaya didn't re-scout. He just kind of went in on the ground pretty confident he could take it. He certainly could. Honestly, well, yeah. I had, like, Zoryu's flashbacks with how much those vassals buffed his attacking army in there. He just, <laughs> just, like, slid in there so fast. Yeah, I think it's a real legit option here. General Anika will take the opportunity to take a look at the replay, I think. I think that's what he's doing. Meanwhile, waiting for the Beaver 99 to select map 3. Impetus no longer in rotation, leaves us with Derelict, Germination, Fata Morgana, Sideshow, the Purgatory, and Titan Forge. And by the way, with that kind of rotation flying off the tongue, the first three maps that I listed are all desert maps. Sandy, yeah, we sandy weather. No apparently. twilight. BDB pointed out, no twilight in the pool, unfortunately. Well, there's no uh, Badlands in the pool. I mean, technically Titan True. Forge is Badlands, but it's installation, right? so you wouldn't know. Quote unquote Badlands. Yeah. Can weird. you mix the two? I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I knew you could in uh, CBW, but I didn't know you could mix Installation of Badlands. Well, here we go. It is going to be Titan Forge. Indeed. An apt point to provide. <clears throat> and Hapsaya says, releasing... I tried it in a custom. I don't know what he's talking about. But... The hotkeys. Oh, okay. For sake. Uh, Kat, when are you releasing the Flesh Tile set, man? I'm still waiting. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a focus for after this tournament. Uh, that's for sure. Exciting. Yeah, yeah. Listen, campaigns are going to start coming out and people are going to have really good single player experiences. 
and I think maybe we can get some more of the uh, graduate some more of the casual players in. You know, because like in order to play, win these campaigns, you're going to have to play an RTS well. It's not going to be like the normal RTS experience you play when in single player. Like you've you've played definitely. the tutorials, you have to actually have. play an RTS in order to win, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, maybe not so much the Terran one. The Terran one's pretty easy to be honest, but the others sure. I feel like you still have to expand at least once, probably, but I haven't seen people the try Protoss to. The Protoss one, I certainly didn't. Tell me what I did, but the Protoss one, I did not. I just made Legionnaires. Oh, I see. I see. I ended up making some Draconids at home because our armies passed like ships in the night, so his mm. army showed up at my base, mine showed up at his. Right, right. But it was pretty straightforward. How is this? Uh, okay, what's going on here? I don't know. He's being silly. He's not God. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> he's a race picker <laughs> those are the worst kinds of people I mean I say that but I know CPL allows for that I was really uh, I, I was thinking about signing up for CPL like a year ago and I was like hey can I be random yeah look don't get me started <laughs> I was a, I am a big part of the reason why there's no random in CPL it is just fundamentally unfair in Brood War I'm afraid um, we can't say for sure in CMBW but I suspect it's going to be actually much worse even Red A. Hub says Red A. Red A. Ready, Steve. <clears throat> and we will get things rolling. Let's get into it. Titan Forge. It's going to be map three Oof. of Group D. Did you change the overlays or did everyone see that? Uh, I did not see anything. Oh, okay. okay. I was looking away. So. <laughs> in the lobby. I'm not going to say anything in case you can get display. But, you know, Hub say just getting in uh, a bit of chat. Ah, okay, time. okay, there's some banter. Yeah, not even about Beaver, by the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> interesting map pick, by the way. Gotcha. Very interesting indeed. Yes. Titanforge yeah. here. That's now, right. remind me how those games went on Group B. I don't remember. I remember talking about the map a lot, but I do not recall the games at all, really. Oh, for Group B. Um, yeah, it was played once, I think, in Group B, and yes. not in Group A. I'm trying to remember what happened. Oh, yes, it was the drops from AOT. Yep. But Shambler was well and truly expecting that and just totally decimated it. Of course, it makes sense. It's his map. He'd be saying, yeah, drops are good here, so I'm going to prepare for that. And then he just uh, mm. bounced his balls all over him. Well, speaking of drops with the Beaver 99 in the bottom left of the map, is Harvesting Vespine behind a stockade? And I think it's a little bit more aggressive than you normally do for the one Cory yeah. opener. So I wonder if he's going to do some sort of bio drop. Meanwhile, I'll yeah, say on the top bit... left, just going for the gateway opener, pretty standard. A little bit of a worker cut for the stockade, right? But I'd assume if you're getting second stockade, you don't go for gas here. Unless it's like a covenant first, which I haven't even seen in like a practice game. Mm. But I mean, it would be a thing. But no, he's going to go for the quarry here. Okay. Um, okay. I think that's fine. You just want to get those mavericks out because you don't want to be caught with like only two mavericks or something when a zealot shows up. So I think it's just a way of getting like one more maverick whenever whatever unit the Protoss sends across arrives. Neither player scouting, by the way. I think maybe Beaver's going to correct that now. Mm. Very late. But not as late as Hepsea, who's not scouting at all, just going to use his vassal, I think. You know, it's thinks... interesting, something we see in CMBW is the scouts tend to be a lot later than in StarCraft. Yep. Well, and I think this is kind of late anyway. Maybe you scout with a worker that finishes your fulcrum. I know Top Ramen likes to scout at the same time as he puts down his first structure. So, at least in He's going to be a legionnaire here. Yeah, I think I think Beaver really wants to get in and see this lattice, but I don't think he will as long as Hepsea is paying attention. Well, hang on. He doesn't move the legionnaire out, which is a bit of a mistake, honestly. It probably won't get enough attacks. He almost certainly will get to see this lattice. Oh, he's getting blocked, though. Oh, gets deflected. Unfortunate. Mm. Now he's going to get no intel at all, except that he knows there's a gateway, I suppose. Yeah, that's about it. Well, the lattice will finish, and he has the Mavericks out. I wonder what the reasoning is. Because the Blackjacks really served him quite nicely. But he's also banking a lot of Vespine here. I think he's two returns away from being able to drop a star pad. So if that's what he's going for... Yeah, I mean, we've seen race be effective before, but with a lattice already on the field, I have my doubts, because idols will serve perfectly well against that. Ooh, um, a and we've seen Hapsaya. Okay. Hmm. The Cyprians are interesting in this matchup, right? They can do pretty well in high numbers, but they don't necessarily even scale very well, except against squishy stuff like Legionnaires, right? If you have a mm -hmm. high number of Cyprians, they can deal with Dracodons, but the problem is, if you also have a high number of Dracodons, they kind of can't again, because they're too squishy and too slow. Oh, he's going to hit that vassal. Well, that is one thing they're very good against, uh -huh. vassals. Absolutely. Not going to bother stimming. Very, uh, very cautious here from the beaver. 
You know what this is good against, though, is defending from anchors, actually. Oh, is he going to get it? He is oh, going to yeah. get it. There it goes. Um, you have a bunch of Cyprians and anchors. It is one of the few things in anchors that can actually handle Dracodons. Uh, Mavericks and anchors are pretty helpless. They don't, they don't really do much. Is he going to throw down a ministry? He's got an awful lot of minerals. Wait a second, stockade. Still you know what I would like to see at some point somebody try to make happen, right? And the Covenant is a pretty big part of this, but only later on, is uh, something like what Green Eggs and Spam did in that Underclass Invitational, where you go for, like, you go Maverick, Cyprian, Harakan, right? Like, the core stockade units. And if you get enough of them on the field, like, can you do something with that, right? Versus the Gateway Army. And I think in particular, if you're also fielding, like, idols for it, I think idols actually are surprisingly bad against a comp that has like savants or eidolons or something for the range and then yeah. obviously the cyprians as well i don't in general i don't think a great first buyer because the bio should spread out to a firing line fairly quickly it doesn't clump up that much the hurricanes they're gonna die pretty soon anyway once the fight starts and they don't like clump up super much they have decent armor so they're not that good against that and the idols themselves are kind of squishy so Really actually not as good as you might think first buy. They're not bad, I suppose, but I think you'd really rather just have more Dracodons, because the problem with going um, just those basic fire units is no matter what you do, the Dracodons will get huge value carding you all over the place. You need like a really overwhelming numbers advantage to make it work. We've got two more Cyprians coming out at a time as a second anchor is indeed being put up. No scouting from it's the Beaver. He does have a Maverick forward, so I guess he'll spot an army move out pretty soon. But Hapsaya has also been pretty content to just sort of stay in his base. Yeah, I think he was anticipating additional stockades or something like that. He's probably already suspicious with being stockade up in and out. Is this going to be an anti-timing? Oh. No. No. Not he's going to land it. He lands it again. I mean, he can just use the high ground here. The Cyprian's got enough range, but he really needs to put it on the further out bit. That one's empty. Yeah, oh, he's okay. got the Cyprian's for it. Man, this is the throwback. We're playing on repulsion here. Yeah, the year yeah. Here is 2023. 20, uh, yeah, that's kind of what it feels like. Right anchor. fighting against Veek or something. I don't know. <laughs> <Or> Shambles <laughs> playing for us. Um... He's doing the old school Cyprian bunker style, and I don't think Upsea really wants to tangle with this. No, but so he's good armor for now. He's diving in, so you know he's going to be able to deny the third, and the treasury is done now. A fulcrum being added. Is there going to be an attempted bust, or is it go? I feel like <laughs> Upsea is just going to be more than happy to sit back and watch, right? Like, yeah. Well, he doesn't have very many Dracodons, though, so I feel like. Uh, if it can actually take a fight, just a little bit more mass here. If it's like all Dracodons, it's really a troublesome for Terra because you move down, they kill some stuff and move back, and it's very hard to ever reclaim this area. But as it stands, I think uh, if Beaver just has a good engage, he can clean this up pretty easily. He can. Nexus on the way, more than halfway done for Epsea. Treasury can't really get in on the action right now. These idols, man, they're waiting. The time will be soon. Palladium going to come on down. No, it's, oh, it is a Palladium. Okay, I was going to make sure. Based on the resource yeah. counts, that's what I kind of speculated. Phalanx obviously will push this back, uh, but I think if he waits for that, it would be a pretty good advantage for Apsaya here. The Zealots, unlike the Legionnaires, probably a bit better against the Cyprians, but I mean, if the Mavericks can shred their armor, they'll go down pretty fast. I love the little leapfrog hopscotch that he's playing with these Cypri uh, Cyprian anchors, slowly moving them forward. Ooh, double Vestry. No Covenant still. I mean, with the Phalanxes, maybe you don't need the Covenants, but you're going to need a lot of Phalanxes, I feel like. You can't just have one or two. All right, let's see what the play is. He's kind of walling himself off here using the Anchors. He might be within range to start pecking at him. Yep, and it is going to draw some of them in. Only one yeah, of You the... see those three Cyprian Anchors, man. That's that's a bit tough. And man, Hapse is going to get trapped in here. He is going to lose this army one way or another. The question is, will it be worth it? Yeah, well, he's sending out more vassals, but there is that one watchdog that picked one off already. A couple of yeah, additional kind of units enough. popping on out. You know, he's, he's he's actually behind in worker count, but that's based on the fact that, uh, obviously, Beaver had his quarry out a lot faster this time around. He's going to get a second quarry with this treasury, I assume, though. So, I mean, I like Beaver's position so far, because the problem is he um, Hapsaya is going to lose his entire army sooner or later. Like, either, either Hapsaya wins the game and kills his opponent, or this army's going to die and he's going to play without it. Those are the only two possibilities. That's a lot of bio there. Yeah, where's the stim? Need that stim. Now it comes in, but it's pretty late. Bunch of the Mavericks already dying. A nice Harakan on the front line to soften up those Zealots. Only a couple of them land here, but one of the anchors wasn't actually landed. And the attack comes in from the rest of it, trying to pull desperately to see if he can repair it. The phalanx being deployed. I don't know if there's going to be that much here. The phalanx mortar hitting the zealots. That's a bad target. Rocket's yeah, here to try to do it. Man? I he know, yeah. smashes through. It's, it's, well, what I said was still technically correct. <laughs> I said, I'm a Hapsaya, kills him and wins the game. We lose the army. Look what happened. Unfortunately, the Mavericks super balled up there. Like you say, didn't stim, wasn't spread out in the firing line or anything like that. Yeah. The anchors in not a best decision to help with that. And yeah, he's getting absolutely murdered here. Yeah, well, Beaver also had a, a kind of sizable float for a good while here. 
Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, that's not going to... I mean, he's lifting again. He's he's very uh, humming right now. He's going to type. <laughs> and it looks like if somebody's going to stop the race. onslaught here, it's going to be General Anakin or Bus. Last chance. 4-0 start is looking pretty likely. But I wouldn't count General Anakin out just yet. And you know what? That that style looks like it had no Sorry, hope. Sorry, man. This Phalanx, though. This Phalanx yeah, is going to kill them all. You yeah. watch. It's got this. <laughs> Doesn't even oh, no. get a second shot off. I don't know how that's possible. Uh, right? <laughs> Hacks. It is. GG's. Alright. Hepsea moving on out. And Hepsea the is the kind of guy that doesn't really type GG back. Not as like, I don't think it's a diss. He just Yeah, maybe Beaver's waiting for it. Like, yeah. that's his condition. I'll leave yeah. if you type GG. What if I type it? Alright, there, there it is. is. <laughs> <laughs> He's just Still getting to the game, though. No, yeah, he wants to Oh, he's see getting it. the scout. He's just like, yeah. okay, what you got in here? Oh, okay, interesting. Most people just watch the replay. Yeah. Uh, don't XD. tend to draw this out. <laughs> just scouting. Just scouting. <laughs> well, he's enjoying his moment. Beaver is going to go down 0-2 to start. The versus Protoss was not GG there. Again. GG's and GG. Yeah, many GG's. Many GG's exchanged. I'd say up to 3-0. and oh. He needs to win the mirror one more time. And then he's in, in in a first place finish here in this group, which many predicted. I wasn't quite so sure because I know that Beaver was practicing pretty hard here. And uh, General Anakin obviously impressed us with his early micro and his funny game plans. Mm, I mean, looking at how that first game versus General Anakin went, I think that 4-0 is still manifesting here. Oh, yeah. I don't think Upset is going to too much trouble, but it's up to Anakin to pull something out. It'll be derelict here from General Anakin. Yeah, I like it. Right now, Hapsaya has opened the same versus Protoss and versus Terran. Not feeling it whatsoever. I will. Uh, I mean, think of the versatility, right? You've got so access to so many different units there. There's got to be something you can make to deal with your opponent. Mm -hmm. I guess that sums up Cosmonarchy in general, doesn't it? Yeah, one of the things that Hapsaya himself has said a few times in... Uh... Uh, on his stream when he's explaining it to other people is that like the gateway gives you five units the lattice gives you five units like you get such a variety almost immediately and some people yeah. will say that maybe that's too much all at once and you know we'll probably experiment with a slower pace like something like probably maybe uh i guess what you would say is like the fact that there's add-ons for the terrans that kind of modulate how many you get at once where's the product the get man. <laughs> without uh, having a ridiculous number of uh of production structures ideally but you know could be a possibility what was the upper tier one one? There was another one, wasn't there? Yeah, it was the automaton register where you got your golems and idols from. And technically oh, there was the Stargate, but there was also the Stellar Icon, which was the, or not, the Astral Omen. Stellar Icon's a different one. Um, I literally never built the automaton register. Yeah. Makes sense. I mean, you got to think about it. It gives you a lot more strategy options as well. If you build this building and, like, it makes one unit that's good early and another unit that's good later, right? Like, spamming golems later is pretty useful. Well, if Hepsea takes the crown here, it'll be a best of three between General Anakin and the Beaver 99. And honestly, the Beaver is looking kind of scary in that matchup. Um, even though he's not been able to take it against Hepsea, General Anakin's not a player of Hepsea's caliber, it's pretty safe to say. Not just because of the, that opening match, but because Hepsea's been playing for longer and has achieved a higher peak. I think General Anakin and the Beaver 99 are a bit closer in skill level. So that could be a pretty uh, interesting brawl if it comes down to it, and that's what's looking likely right now. And this is what I said, though. He's, he's taking the lunch money, and then they're yeah. going to fight over the pennies. Yeah. It's happening. Well, I don't know. Maybe the Beaver 99 was able to scout with that last move, and he knows what needs to be done versus Protoss. All right. This is his last chance. They're both ready. They are both ready. Derelict 2 is going to be the site of our fourth game, but is it going to be the final one for Hapsea, or are we going to have to go a little bit longer? Hapsea in the top right, General Anakin in the bottom left. Question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> Uh, he doesn't know it's Derelict like 2. Oh, well, could have watched all the streams. Oh, General Anakin doesn't either. I think he's frauding. But maybe not. It did get changed well, after. You've got to keep up with the streams. Yeah, I guess. yeah, he okay. He really he's hasn't there. seen yes. it. Well, it's good that the reach is back. That's right. It's Banak, according to General Are you going to point out the neutrals or just leave them to find that out themselves? 
Um... There you go. <laughs> Whoever can get there first. <laughs> so he's already quick. going. He's going. Quick, make a demiurge. All right, well. No, that's for Hamster later on when he faces Newt. The pickup partner is sponsoring our stream, by the way. You can if, see it on Hapsaya's screen right there. If you steal that thing, you can lift it off, unlike the neutral anchors. Uh, yep. I was trying to... If Hamster takes that and floats it into Newt's space, is Newt going to rage? Like, just because it's like, <laughs> oh, he stole one, even if it wasn't his. He's looking for the present, man. Oh, he's going to kill it? Nope. <laughs> Don't destroy it. <laughs> the stream shuts down. <laughs> oh, he's going back for it. He's going back for it. No, he's actually... <laughs> he's not scouting, dude. He's not scouting. Oh he's throwing. <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> he has no idea. Oh he has no idea. GLHF. I agree. Uh, is he going to make a lattice, by the way? I'd say his minerals spiking up as he tries to deal with this uh, yeah. threatening neutral ministry. That's okay, right. gets a second gateway. No lattices today. Yes. Anakin's gateways are faster. It's a pure jacket of fight. Anakin might have the edge here. Dude, General Anakin's going to have zero idea what we're talking about. Why is Hapsaya yeah. talking fuck you in the middle of the chat? <laughs> yeah. I was BMing the casters all <laughs> Important stuff, too. Yeah. Ah. All right. My he bad. comes in here. He's going to get the scout. Sees this two gate, this two gate. And, you know, Anakin not sending any scout, actually. That really gives the edge back to Hapsaya. Because Hapsaya really can control this a lot more. Well, I think we might have had a few too many laughs. What if Hapsaya doesn't get his worker out? Oh, it might not. Yep. Oh, we, I can't believe you're rigging the game in favor of Anakin. Yep. Well, I mean, I said there was a present in mid, and Anakin just ignored me. So Hapsaya got his present, and then he got his wor worker dead. So. Down a worker. How could Hapsaya be down a worker right now? Uh, if Because he banked up, like... 300 minerals. <laughs> well, it was, it was too busy with I was ministry. saying it was because he lost his scout and General Anakin didn't, you know. Oh, I, I was, see. It I was see. fake BM, fake uh, outreach. Uh, is Anakin going to throw out a Nexus right away here? That could be pretty good. No, he's going over Grand here. Grand Library. Yes! Ooh. Grand Library opener! I love it. Two Amaranths in the mix with Dracodins could be huge. Uh, he doesn't even know he has to change to the different config, maybe? Mm. He's probably still in the... The other folder? I don't know. I don't think so, because there's one unified config on pre and re now. So. Well, the odds are stacked against Hapsaya. I know, Not yeah. Not only is Pronogo sabotaging him, his config doesn't work. His it's... camera controls don't work. That's right. The temperature in his room is off by 1.5 degrees. His palms are sweaty. Like, how could he possibly pull this out? And his chat's uh, probably BMing him right now as we speak. Yeah, start. probably. If probably. you're in both streams, type a Hapsaya Zerg and then say this you in his chat. That'll be <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> Yeah. He's going to have a tough time here. And, you know, like I said, I think some Amaranths could make a huge difference here. Or if you have like a Herald plus Zealot slash Legionnaire, yeah. could be pretty strong too. Well, There's think about it. The, the Herald is library. basically like the first version of the Patriarch passive, and we know how good Patriarchs are. So well, if I just thought of it as like a buffed Ecclesius, but okay. Yeah, but if you think about it, it, it like debuffs an enemy, and then when you attack that enemy, it gives you the Ecclesiast buff, right? So it's like a, a mix between the Patriarch and the Ecclesiast. And so if you can get that on the front lines, that can be pretty big. But it's going to be Amaranth, as you mentioned. Amaranth Ecclesiast is kind of unkillable, I'm going to be honest with you. It takes a real long time. So and if you focus fire, though, the thing is, the Amaranth's having such a small actual max shield are very vulnerable to focus fire still. I think the best thing would be to get a bunch of Dragoons, or sorry, Dracodons, or possibly Hierophants in the back line. Just mm. ranged back line, and focus on the Amaranth being your front line. I don't really like mixing in the other melee with it. But we'll see, we'll see how it works. I mean, you know, the Amaranths do decent damage as well, but they're kind of just, you know, tankier zealots. They don't have anything fancy about their attack. I guess they're faster. Like, they move faster, I mean. Yeah, yeah. They're a little bit better at the uh, engage as a result of that. Yeah. Not as good as Legionnaires, though. Speaking of, quite a few being made. Now, Legionnaire versus an Amaranth, obviously the Amaranth wins. But if you're being swarmed by a whole legion of Legionnaires, can you hold off? Now, if Hapsaya comes up the ramp, he might regret it here. Mm. That's a lot of stuff for Anakin here. I mean, I think Anakin actually just has the superior army of those two Amaranths. But, I mean, we'll see how much DPS... Upside can put out the witness gonna see everything. Two more dragons into the back now, definitely giving the edge to Anakin. I'm sorry, I don't think we'll try this. But I think Anakin should try and chase him. I I would like to see a move out across the map. Deny that Nexus, which Hepsaya is floating a lot to try to establish. There it is. A couple of units on the uh on the come up, and they are gonna get swatted. Yeah, I wonder if it makes sense to just make more and more Ecclesia seed. Alright, the Amaranth's getting in there, getting their damage in. So far, Zealot's being hit by Hapsaya, so they won't be able to do their job really, but he's pushing him back. 
Well, is he is. hiding? He's got he his own Ecclesius, but it was on the front line. It gets caved in immediately. Hapsaya now starting to hemorrhage. He's only got a little bit of time here. His Ecclesiast movement speed buff has already expired. Oh, idols. He's hemorrhaging idols. Agon absolutely destroyed there. That MRF getting a good deal of shields back. One of them had fallen, but look at that. You can see the power here just crushing through Hapsaya. If he can kill this Nexus, Anakin is in a commanding position. Production at home slipping a bit, but actually no. He's saving up for his own Nexus. Is he going to continue the attack? Can he make it work? The Wardens are on the way. But you know what? If there's no units supporting them, the Wardens are pretty useless against Amaranths. Oh yeah, and especially since they're only just now started, I think An Anakin has a pretty Dude. good timing here. He needs to get in now, though. Those uh, Wardens only a few dozen seconds away. I don't like front-loading with the Ecclesiasts. They're taking a little bit of damage here, and it's going to be a bit before they can activate. It doesn't look like General Anakin wants to chance it. Despite having a great drac at an advantage here, he absolutely could posture for victory. It does pull back, and the Wardens will finish. So that brings us back. But I would say Anakin still has pretty good advantage here just because he's already sunk the money into the Grand Library and his Nexus is not far behind. Uh, Hapsa is stuck here making the regular gateway lattice stuff, but... Uh, and Anakin no embassy in sight for him either. He's going to have to put it down Ooh. soon and I don't know if he's going to feel like he's too pressured to do it. You know, i got to say that Anakin really neglecting this Grand Library that he, neglect he invested so much minerals in. He only ever made two Amaranths. A three at the start, yeah, but that's it, you know? So that's not going to cover too much. Mm, he really needs to get something out. I mean, a Cantavis obviously is always handy. I don't like Atreus so much because they're a bit slow and easy to pick off, but any of the other units really are going to add so much value here. And like I said, he sunk 400 minerals in. He's got to use it or he's just putting himself behind. Have to agree. Witness going to go ahead and confirm what Hapsay has got cooking back in the main. And now he's trying to postulate. What do we have here? Let me just lurk on forward and Hapsay is not going to be finding too much of anything just yet. Reinforcements coming into the front line. Ooh, the Amaranth mm. gets taken out. Nice pick. Anakin did not have his stuff hotkeyed. He box selected a small amount. Yeah, um, that's interesting. If he'd been committed to the attack there, he would have got good damage because he was in a sort of concave setup, but unfortunately, yeah. we're not ready to attack. Finally, selects the Grand Library, but he still didn't use it. Come on, man. You're torturing me with this. Well, he's going to actually have the worker advantage as long as he keeps steady production, and maybe he'd just go straight yeah. to Argosy from here. We saw his epigraphs do a number on Three Crow. Well, if he does that, he's not going to be able to hold just with two gateway production, I tell you that. Yeah, definitely the case. I mean, especially since the Grand Library is not being used right now, but he's got money floated. He's definitely thinking about something. Is it an Ancestral? Prostration. Uh, yeah, he could okay. go double prostration here and go for mass pariah if he wanted to, but he might be thinking about the Tyrant again. Do pariahs do well against the Cantors? Um, I want to say... I know they would crush Architects. Yeah, I don't there. I don't think that Hapsay is going to go for the Acantor is the thing. He's you only now getting his embassy. I don't think he puts it's much big... respect on the, the the former Reaver, you know what I mean? Like, oh, okay. StarCraft 2 Protoss oh, because he's player, a StarCraft you know? 2 player, yeah, exactly, exactly. If he was a Brugal player... I don't know player, if he's ever built it. I had never seen him build it, I don't think, so... Oh, okay. Maybe it will be Architects again. Maybe they're so expensive. No! Whoa. Oh, oh, wow, look at thing. that! It makes a fool out of him. He's listening to the stream, dude. Disqualify him. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Disqualified for so many reasons today. Especially if he kills the caster ministry in there. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, unforgivable sin. It actually took more damage somehow. I don't know how that happened. It's not burning down yet, though, right? No, no, no. no. We're, we're safe. We're safe. Although, uh, hey, right. you were saying you were called here, so I hope you like what I did to the place. Yeah, thanks, man. That, that's very warming. Uh, Ancestral on the back of the prostration. Files. It is a mine tyrant. About 40 seconds to hit. Okay, that's his signature. You know, honestly, the Acantors would be great targets for the Mind Tyrant. If they, you know, at, at best, you just blow it up yourself. At worst, yeah. the Acantor starts shooting your own stuff and it just bops you. Dude, splash if you damage. Mind Control it, it gets like a single shot. It's already done so much for your opponent. That's crazy. I mean, it would be good against Architects too, just to like charge them at your own army and get them killed, right? Yeah. But against Acantor is even better. And again, the witness here as a pivotal moment, Hapsaya's witness not going to scout it. And Ooh. that's the thing that allowed General Anakin to engage from afar with the Mind Tyrant, right? Pulls back the melee. Yeah, but he doesn't have it yet. Oh, he's going like to see it now. Hapsaya trying to take the fight with the Akantor. I'm not sure it's still even enough. It will decimate those Zealots, though, both in Brood War and in Cosmonarchy. It's a great unit against Zealots. It's going in for the shot. General Anakin's not dodging. Oh, wait, he kind of well, does. The automatic wait. dodge activated. Well, pulls he... back. Probably a smart move. Because he's just waiting for his timing for his strong tech unit to be out here, right? I like the fact he's not going to engage yet. Here it is. Here it is. The Mind Tyrant is on the field. Can it get in without getting sniped? It can get sniped very quickly with all those Dracodins. It all comes down to this engagement. General Anakin has a really good chance here of taking a game off a heavily favored player. He gets a Zealot. Wow. So OP. <laughs> well, I'm not sure that Hapsaya even put two and two together, but I assume he's actually seen the Mind Tyrant. Double Absolutely. Architect, right? Like, you need to be able well, to he's hit He's going them. in alone. 
Oh, this scouting with the. Right okay, I like that move, right? He's, oh. He scouts with like individual units, and now he's just trying to Jeez. make it happen with the Mind Tyrant, channeling back and forth. Remember, the Mind Tyrant's frozen during that, but now there's a bit of a front line, and Hapsaya might be engaging a little bit too fast here. Yeah, not a good formation for Anakin. He's not getting his units in, and without the Mind Tyrant's getting. Uh, oh, he's got multiple. This time, they they are never going to run out. Oh, the the Akantors have gone over. One of the Mind Tyrants oh, being focused God. down. Not a bad shout. Now they're too far away. They're going to be stunned. The Akantor reverts back. However, it's still dealing a lot of massive damage over to oh the wrong kinds God. of units. Dude, he's pulling this off. It just gets the Akantors. It's over. That's all he needs to do. Well, the, Can well, he get it? It's oh, one. no. He's, he's out of energy, I think. Trying to restore it a little bit. Now after, he's oh, after no, the wrong turn. target. Turn. Oh, it does end up oh, hitting. It goes down. And that other Akantor is going to revert, so I guess Hapsaya barely wins. That's right. Close Getting back the he other. Loses that that Akantor is going to die, dude. It is indeed, and the one with the shields in the back is also very, very low HP. Oh, can't finish it looks the like job it's though. Be something of a draw. But look <laughs> at them, no dude, what kind of Ecclesia says three kills? Holy moly! Oh my god! And executes a dracon into the tap of the back of the head like a he needs to go professional time, sniper. Right? Hey, look, we've got a third base for General Anakin, and you know, so too for Hepsea. But I'm very surprised that he was able to keep up the macro back at home. Mine tyrants Big definitely. Geez being a huge acquisition for him. He's getting up Tectons as well. Witness ended up, uh, up uh, not going uh, Hapsaya's way. He's got his own trying to hunt for it. Does end up getting it. That's pretty good as a counter. Yeah, generally, he's just going defensive here, but he's pretty well set up. Look, he's queuing like five units in every building. Yes. And look, it's, it is better to queue than not to spend at all. Yeah. So he will have a bit more APM for other things at least. Eventually an army will come out, but Hapsaya microing a lot more, microing, macroing in a lot more in the traditional sense. And he is just using the more basic units, right? The Ardents and Gateways. Not trying to be too fancy here. And he did barely overpower Anakin in the last fight. Yep, and he has uh, he stabilized the economy. He was behind, economically speaking, for a while. He has the wherewithal to realize, okay, my config ain't working. My settings ain't working. The mine tyrants are making my own units not work. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I can still figure things out. I'm still capping two out of three of my geysers right now. So Hapsaya is definitely still deaf. You know, it feels like he's in some element of control. And if he takes the the fight to that nine o'clock position, well, yeah. General Anakin will be back oh. on the back foot. He's floating two and point five k minerals. It still may be derelict too, but this high ground is still the central location of the map. He's going to move down from there. This base is undefended. Once again, Anakin committing a big mistake here, keeping his army in his natural. We saw this yes. in his series against Three Crow. That's right. It was a big error. Is he going to get out there in time? Scribes are transferring, betraying this base every day. I'm sorry, I might even know already. I don't know. He kind of looks like he wants to go over there. Oh, no. I don't Two think he's realized it. Oh, Two but his direct... Mm. Huge work. Yep, that's true. Hey, Hapsaya's making analogs. Wants to chuck those <laughs> shots back at them, apparently. Well, he's been he's been abused. Now he shall abuse. That's right. Because uh, he has suffered against those pretty badly. Uh, I'm just wondering if the object on here, obviously it's huge, but nothing else that Anakin really has matter for that. Oh, wait, no, he's figured much. it out. That one scribe that sold him down the river. Well, it's going to trigger the engagement. Okay, Anakin is going to come out and take the better angle here. This is a big army for Hapsaya, though. These Abtectons are going to have to do so much, let alone the Mind Tyrants. Can he get the key units here? Yeah, yes. what are the big targets, Dracodin. right? He goes after a Dracodin, but that's not going to be the main target. He's going to go after the Analogs now. Fires off multiple shots, Ooh. burns a lot of energy in doing so. Now has the yeah, Architect as well, but he's stuff. too far away to actually make use of it. Focus well, firing. The yeah, there's one Mind the Tyrant dead. Mm, not enough mass here for yeah. Anakin. Even the Abtectons with their massive splash damage will get overwhelmed. It looks like Upset is going to power through. Whoop, yep. He pulls back. Well, he was in the middle of macroing back at home, making sure that he still has that stuff. And it doesn't really matter how many shots you fire off with the Mind Tyrant. I don't think he's got really what it takes here. And he's uh, gonna go ahead and no. get his units back up anyway, right? So that object on there hiding, pretending it's like part of the building. Yeah, it's yeah. Doing work. <laughs> yeah. Look, man, this third base did not get touched. It doesn't actually matter what happens until that third base goes down. Hapsay is gonna move over there now. Mm. No state defense got but there, man. This bank, I'd love to see just like five wardens and, a, and an engram, and then forget about attacking that base. God, he's still picking away at it. Dude, he's gonna kill that. You can't just let that go back. Yeah. All right, now the third will be hit. And it can still have a big bank. Still making up Tectons. In fact, he got a second Ancestral. Uh, double Argosy for Upsaya, though. I think he's aware that Tectons suck against air. Oh, no. His Architect. It's been stolen. Yeah. Well, I mean, at this point, right, the Nexus. 
Come on, man. <laughs> it gets the dragon in as well. And the analog. Shoot the analog with the Akanto. I want to see it. No, nah, he knows. I think he knows how it works. Ooh, mm. Oh, he does shoot it once. Yeah, that was just a, a solid, soft mistake. Yeah, at this point, I mean, the Mind Tyrant is not going to really be be doing too much, right? Like, I mean, if it doesn't die, it's getting huge value here. So oh, no, so one more hit with the Legionnaire would have killed it. Dang. I'm saying I'm pulling away a little bit too, uh, too quick there. I mean, so far, so good with that Mind Tyrant. It's getting pretty good value, but yeah, you don't want to lose him, and that's the thing. Anakin's army is too small to sort of protect them, but he has whittled down Hapsaya substantially. If he can take a fight here, and the Architect is more than a match for an Architect, especially with these Mind Controls coming out, did he get the Architect? He yes, did. he did. That's huge. Snipes the, the Akan Tour just like that. Yeah, well, the Nexus is going to capitulate. We've got plenty of room here for Hapsaya to exit stage that right. He's now. Well, that Architect is his now, though, and he's going to continue fighting here. The Uptectons in the back are going to be huge. Two Solarians coming up, but hang on a minute. He already has Mind Tyrants for that. Hmm. That's an interesting choice. However, I also think that I, I, I like what Hapsaya is doing with the composition. He started to make Mind Servitors. Ooh. I'm not sure that he can uh, that he's doing it deliberately, but overwhelming your opponent with a lot of small units. Yeah, Mind Tyrants yeah. are not very useful against that. So that seems to be the play right now, and I like the idea for it. Honestly, Servitor's not a bad unit. Look at this, the traitor architect fighting in the front lines. That's I think right. Upstairs knows he's not supposed to kill it, but I mean, at this point, maybe he needs to. He gets another one. Yeah, I think he's about to get a, back another. Again. He should honestly just be picking them off himself if he sees that coming, but Dude, it looks like it's going to die anyway. If, it can, if Anakin Marley sees reinforcements, he could push for the win here. Oh, look at the Sim City in back in the base, trouble. though. There's three Drakadans stuck. That's probably causing a bit of a traffic jam. Yeah. Well, look at look at Anakin's natural, though. There's two Optectons and a Mind Tower. It would be huge here. He's getting in here once oh, again. Oh no, he's gonna lose that one. That was the uh, that was the healthy one too. If he can take these Solarians, though, that's a huge asset for him. He needs to get the reinforcements across. Well, Hapsaya well, knows. Hapsaya knows that he's in a little bit of trouble, but he also has one base up on his opponent. Man, those architects are actually a huge asset for uh, for Anakin here. Doing huge work. I don't know, man. I think if the Solarians just walk on in, especially with the ground units, to distract the rest of the fire, they can what just focus down. Get mind control, dude. That's no, what no, no, no. Him. They can kill this mind tyrant easy, lickety split. But he does need and a little they... bit of control. His Drakadans are stuck by so the painful. Ardent Authority. He's gonna have to blow up one of his own gateways. That's what's yeah. locking him down, dude. He kills the Drakadan instead. No, that's not what's blocking you. It's the Ardent. <laughs> Okay, he figured it out. He's, I guarantee you he's mauled. Oh, God. Right now. Scribe murder over there. Yeah. Well, he's still up by That's 10 insane. workers, so I think he'll be just fine. Second mine tyrant here. Witnesses all over the shop, so no observation of the army for Hapsaya. Oh, man. He's going to try to snipe the mine tyrant. It's a bit out on its own. Is Anakin paying attention? Can he pull this back? It could be huge. Just pull oh, back, he pulls back, but he's insane. not casting the ability. Only now does he do it, but it dies. It doesn't hit because it dies. And now the ar oh architects God. are back on, transferred over to their former master. I think that's going to be the crushing blow. Yeah, I guess you were right. They just murdered those mine tyrants. Anakin has not resaturated his third. Oh, yeah, you have to rebuild it, I guess. Still only on two bases during this. Did not hit the three o'clock. Okay. So, a bit of a reset, except for the fact that Hapsaya has these Solarians. That's right. Very hard Four to of them. Hmm. The Tetons, no. Uh, they're, they're trying. It's um, not the crab day. That's for sure. <laughs> Back oh, at home, Dracodons, Optectons. No way. Oh my god, he didn't realize that one's going to escape. I like that he has a witness on these uh, Solarians, actually. This could be huge. If a Mind Tyrant getting them when they're unawares, mm -hmm. it wouldn't take much to suddenly just have three of them over on the enemy side. Only 75% complete is that Mind Tyrant, though. And with more units accompanying them, eventually... He's actually got... Yeah, he's got six, and he's making a seventh. I feel like Hapsaya is definitely in control of this game. You're right that there it does exist that little potential for cheat, but I feel like there's just too much. Now, the Uptectons are uh, really strong versus the ground game. The survivor turns. Yeah, this ground army kind of doesn't exist. It's like a three-second tank for these Solarians. Then it's just the Solarian. Oh, no. And here's the Mind Tyrant. He's oh, no. All right, he's going to fall oh, away. Oh, man. he's No, he's, he's he lost his all his target, of but he's retreating. He's retreating, and the Solarian's getting hit now. They might get focused. The Mind oh, Tyrant does he, he does. Okay, he gets him back. That he's only going to end up losing one Solarian despite all of that damage. Only one goes down. Maybe this one in the bottom will get focused down. No, it's not going to happen. But the steward count is really low right now. The Draconins and the Uptecton multi-target doing work. It doesn't necessarily Rapidly seem to recover. be mattering, though. The other one came up from the high ground now, ob trying to obfuscate itself over that pillar. Not it quite working out. But the, yeah, the target fire isn't not... here for General Anakin. Yeah, the uh, stewards recover pretty quickly. Another and one's here. Another mine tyrant out of nowhere, though. Can he pull this off? No way, he gets all four. He needs to get that Mind Tyrant in there. And that's the last one that's still injured. 
If you can save the mine He's turret, got it. Dude. No, he doesn't. The stun ran off. He doesn't have the energy. They're not targeting, though. I don't know if he's serious aware. LOL. He laughs. He laughs. <laughs> he doesn't target it. Oh, my God. He, he doesn't realize. It so easily. Yeah. He, he doesn't realize. Now he has his own fleet. Now, this is dicey, though, because his own mine tank can still get killed so easily. Yeah. I don't know if it's worth it to keep them. It's kind of tough. Oh, my God. They're getting away from the mine tank. Oh, my God. They're going to revert. What are you doing, No Anakin? way. No way. Oh, no. no way he's going to start having them revert. And Apseo's like, wait, I have something in the middle of the map? Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> he gets two of them back. Yeah. That one is going to get murdered. And honestly, he probably needs to kill them realistically. Yeah, I think I he's realized think he can... now. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, they revert again. Quick, 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 before they kill you. Okay, he gets them. But hey, that's still a lot of money lost, perhaps. The third base got reestablished. Gemini can somehow still in this game with a 5k bank, a fourth base up, perhaps. <laughs> and just sees the three o'clock. This is a oh crazy PvP, dude. I have not this seen crazy. this kind of tactic move out. I don't think General Anakin no. can do it, though. I don't think General Anakin can do it. You know what would be really good here is just Magisters, because you have a lot of them. They wouldn't care about mind control. And they'd be good enough against Dracodons. All right, here we go. Another engagement coming down. An Epigraph here, as well as another Solarian. Yeah, well. Ground army not so strong without those Tectons. He throws out the mind control, but look at that. The Hierophant being very instrumental there. Yeah, it's down. It's down. It's pretty much going to be wrapped up again. There's no more Mind Tyrants coming. And the ground game here for Hepsea also looking pretty sharp. Empyrean started as well for more range and more consistent damage without requiring the stewards. Instantly. No one ever made a demiurge to take this uh, Mirror Stream, so sad. Yeah, I'm, we're safe. We're not going to start worshipping a mechanical god. <laughs> oh, Zealots, no. No, well, Zealots. That was rough. Only now saturating that uh, 9 o'clock position, which General Anakin still has not budged from as far as getting up to additional bases. He's really trying to hold on to the Mind Tyrant strat. He's got these up tectons. He has no anti air. No anti-air. If the Epigraph and the Solarians come in at the right angle, General Anakin isn't too cautious about it. I mean, she's got, got two Mind Tyrants. Tyrant. Dream, man. Yeah, What's that's pretty do? much it. This Gotta watch out. This... They're gonna get murdered. That's well, the, sure. the Epigraph, unfortunately, is pretty far ahead. Second and... one. Second one. No, I think he's... Get okay, get... if he falls away, then I think he'll be okay. One Solarian. Ooh, he's targeting him, he but no he's, he's targeting with only a couple of units here. That's the problem, right? Oh, he gets the ball. He gets the ball. Well, I mean, does Hipsay have to kill his own stuffy? He's getting murdered by the Atecon. They're crushing the ground army. He's really tunnel visioning too hard on the Mind Tyrants. He can't actually oh, finish them Where off did here. they come from? Patriarchs out of nowhere actually crush the rest, and he will clean up this air army if he cares to. Yes, he will. Well, and a Pyrans here. I think Hapsaya doesn't realize that he had the right idea with the Servitors. And now he's yeah. massing out a bunch of Draconids. I think he's figured it out. Overwhelm him with mass numbers. Spend my money. Spend my bank. Oh my god, this fight is so silly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he gets it. He gets it. No, he doesn't. Patriarch's going to execute. Oh yeah, no. Come on, man. You've got to keep that. Patriarch's slowly executing the other stuff he captured. And once again, Hapsaya's army gets reset. I mean, I don't know, man. Anakin's still in this. Well, He's I don't know. We're, we're talking about six gate, two Ar Ar Arden authority. The lattice has gone dark. The Argus yeah, has gone dark. None of that stuff dark. matters. None of that stuff matters because the Tectons just defeat that easily. Like as long as he doesn't lose the Tecton count again, he has an army that can that can crush. And it looks like Upset is going to go for another round, but I don't see it ending well for him. Like four Tectons, two Patriarchs, and a bunch of Zealots to buff, to buffer rather. Three Mind Tyrants as well, easily going to deal with that one Imperium, if not the Architects themselves. Hapsaya does not want to take a fight right now. He needs to just macro up. He needs to use his strengths here. Because yeah. obviously, yes, General Anakin is weaker on the macro. We can see that in his bank. Uh, Hapsaya needs to acknowledge that like, he's lacking in the game knowledge here of what exactly to do. And just needs to like find something he can make a lot of and use that to overwhelm. Now, Synthetic Sino coming up here. I wonder if we get his own Demiurge and like steal the Mind Tyrant. <laughs> It'd be a play. Although, steal his own stuff back cool. after, maybe. But I don't like putting it at 3 o'clock at all, though. Because now if he loses 3 o'clock, he also loses some important tech. That's just finally on the way. I think if General Anakin has really fallen apart when he's taking the fight to Hapsaya. So yes. I think if he's going to take an engagement around 3 o'clock, that's going to be beneficial for him. A lot of Draconids here. here. If he burns the load too much of the Mind Tyrants on the Draconids, that's actually really good for Hapsaya. He'll take that. Yeah. And look at this. He's multi. He's single targeting ah! with one. He's just wasted oh, no. six casts on two different Draconids. That's it. These guys are out well, of out of commission. Only takes a second. Only takes a second. And you know, he's over committing with the zealots and patriarchs. He's got no he frontline left, left, man. Okay, really so dicey. Take care of that. On a knife's edge. Get the look at the Draconid count. The architects and epigraphs as well. We don't see any magisters. That would have gone a long way, but it might not even be necessary. The ground game getting reset yet again. Yeah, unfortunately, in that game, the mind tower is really not. Uh, using their abilities to the utmost. Maelstrom's being cast out for nothing. 
Yeah, he has to retreat here. Yeah. And as long as Hub just, hands left. Yeah, as long as Hub just moves his army forward, he can definitely deal with this. He should definitely try I to shut down that three that nine o'clock. You can't underestimate the potential for the swing there if Hapsa doesn't manage it carefully. He's not going for try and focus them, so it's distracting. Well, I guess that match is not going to be succumbing to that. No. Nope. Once again, no static defense. Oh my god, <laughs> he steals that match. But that's a lot of range. Hapsa okay. is scared to go up there. He's worried if he does, he'll start getting one shots hitting him again. I mean, he will, but as long as he has some front, uh, any sort of front line, any sort of fodder, he's got more gateway units rolling on in. Clearly, he can do it. The architects are going to outrange it. 25 Draconins in queue for Anakin right now, by the way. Yeah, that's good against Patriarchs. It's interesting because the Optenicons handle them, but the Patriarchs do have a bit of a harder time. I think he's now realizing, wait, you must have retaken 9 o'clock, and he's going to go ahead and shut that one down. The gas being the main limiting factor here, the double gas base that was never capped. This is going to force an engagement out of General Anakin. And look at all the fodder that's in the way that he's going to have to chew through before the high impact units come in. The Mine Tyrants versus the Cliff. I don't know about that one. Here we go. Oh. One falls immediately. He's going to focus the others. He's onto it this time. Yeah, no effect there. And the ground army, helpless against all those architects. Yeah, this Mine Tyrant, the last of its kind here for General Anakin. And Hapsaya doesn't really care about it. He's going to go for the Nexus. Go for the gold. Go for the flawless finish. I mean, Demi has just been built, by the way. He's got to take that ministry, man. I'm telling you. He's got to do it. Oh, boy. He's putting on the mine turret? He is. He is. He realizes he's got to deal with this air again. But yeah. Economy gutted. He's completely mined out because this game is going for quite a while. I know. It's uh, almost 30 minutes long. I'm saying it's taking a while to put the pieces together, but he's figuring it out. They're like, not going down easy here, man. He's saying, you want a 4-0, you're going to have to work for it. Psy has built a massive army now. This is what I'm talking about. He's more he's more utilizing his strengths now. He's just got so many units, it doesn't really matter what they are. Still two of Tectons back here are gonna wreak havoc, but I don't think it's gonna matter. He should be able to cross through. Only a single mine tower for all that air. And the second one comes out. But yeah, one goes down immediately. The other so one on the on it. the ramp, trying his best here. I don't think Upsay has noticed it. Now he has. He'll go ahead and shut that one down. Zoned away oh, and the architect it. shot from downtown to close the game. Upsaya, yeah. he's on track for the 4-0. And General Anakin, he's not like the Beaver 99. He doesn't have the ability to lift his structures. He'll check the replay, but he's got to be out of here. Yeah, man. Hapsaya making it back into throne room. No big surprise. Does take the 4 over, but man, General Anakin made him bleed for it. I'm, I can't wait for the post-match interview after all this is done. <laughs> yeah, right? That's the best part of this whole thing. Oh, the last of Tekton. Sounds like a movie. It and does, yeah. Off. I feel like Optecton's a pretty cool name at the end of it. And it doesn't even mean yeah, anything. Sure. Oh, God. Last it's a massacre. Dragons. Listen, it, it's back. catharsis. <laughs> I'm saying it's... Vassals. Yeah. They're going to take on that uh, epigraph all by themselves, no? <laughs> He's still fighting. He doesn't want to give up. A pylon being built. Another nexus being built in this place. <laughs> I've got 5,000 minerals. So does Anakin, little does he know. Anakin starts building the defensive mana nexuses, you know? Can he get the probe? He needs to get the scribe of the Obtector man if he wants to win the mana battle. The war may be lost, but the, the moral battle can still be won. <laughs> Legionnaires coming out here. A lot of vassals in the back too, ready to get just absolutely destroyed by these Imperians. Ooh, double the Obtector does hit it. Why is Double Dynac even here? What are they going to do? Are they going to recall from the main? What's even back there? There it is, is yep. A whole lot is back <laughs> there. I'll have you know. One Demiurge. I didn't even see the last of Tekton die, man. It, it's gone. GG's. GG's. It's over. And General Icon gave it a good go. He gave it all he had. You're goddamn right. <laughs> Four if I'm saying he's through. Alright, well, with that out of the way, it's gonna be... Beaver to select map five. All right, excuse me for one minute while we wait to get that stuff. Sure, sure. Wow, what a way to close things out, honestly. Who would have thought?
just uh, letting Hepsea know that he did indeed um, figure out the counter, of course. <laughs> Almost won through sheer annoyance. <laughs> Yeah, the revision that I have planned for them was, uh, I think, pretty slick, you know. Uh, converts it into something that you have to actually execute the unit for instead of it being that jockey back and forth steal thing, but... I mean, I liked it. I thought it was pretty hype. Uh, I mean, it was pretty hype. I just don't imagine Hapsea is too happy. <laughs> he won the game. He's got nothing to complain about. That's right. That's right. He did that with, uh, with botched camera controls, botched config. Like I said, the temperature in this room was off by two degrees. The keyboard wasn't in alignment. You know how Flash does it with the ruler and stuff. Oops, I need to put that plus. Plus, plus, plus. Well, now it is a best of three to decide second place. As General Anakin exhausted himself trying to, you know, dethrone the king of the group. It's been a long time coming. Both of these players participating in both of the gauntlets and yet they never faced each other during that whole event. Neither gauntlet A nor gauntlet B did their paths cross. It's fated to happen this time in the Battleman stage. General Anakin's Protoss looking sharp, but the Beaver 99 might be able to catch his old friend off guard. Childhood friend against childhood friend. And it's the Beaver 99 in none other than the top left of germination while General Anakin holds down the fort in the bottom right. <laughs> All right. Gets his TPD As they open. always say, Total Proto Survival? Hmm. Know what that is? Total Proto Success? Oh, Supremacy! Uh, Whoa! Supremacy, you mean? Yeah, Supremacy, sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Are we going to see Mind Turrets again? Last time they met, Beaver got smacked out of the qualifier by Mind Turrets on this very map. Uh, you're thinking of Top Run. Am I? Yeah. Oh, they, I just I just got through saying they never met. This is the first time they're playing against Oh, they did? Oh, yeah. right, you did too. Never yeah. mind. The last time we saw Jim Anakin, he smacked Top Run yeah. out of qualifiers on this very map with yeah. Mind Turrets. Are we going to see it again? Have to see. Are we going to see Beaver try that bio play again? No, we're not. Fulcrum, okay. Yeah, I think the stronger did look like it was the, the mech play. And honestly, if you're a beaver, do you even change up the thing that looked better, right? Like, do you just commit to it? Yeah, man, those Cyclops and Blackjack, could it be strong enough to take Anakin out? Maybe he's thinking it almost worked on Hapsaya, maybe it'll work on Anakin, who knows? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking, right? Is that, you know, Hapsaya was definitely on the back foot, had to play serious, wasn't a walkover match. Titan Forge looked a lot less competitive, but I think that's down to that uh, fabled anti-timing, timing anti-timing that you were saying earlier, like... Man, that's a oh, bad time. Cancel for... comes up from Anakin. Did you see that? Oh, what did he end up canceling? The lattice, I think, to turn into a second gateway. Mm. I think that's what I saw. Okay, interesting. While the Fulcrum is here, it will be annoyed. I'm sure General Anakin has done this to the Beaver 99 many a well, time. Well, maybe it was a second gateway, but he thought it's in the wrong position for SimCity. I didn't actually see what it was. Mm. That's hot. Oh, mm. Probe, mm. get ah, out of there! Ah, ooh, he's been dismantled. A lot of gas in the bank here for uh, the beaver. He can probably afford a quarry on the back of this if that's what he wants to do. Could also be a palladium rush. I have not seen like a two-minute tank in a while. <laughs> Shambler's done it. I know, yeah. Um, and it actually kind of looks like it works out pretty well, but I don't it's think it's threatening for sure, yeah. but it's a bit too fragile. Yeah. Just a little bit of micro, you can tend to take it out. Yep. I think it's better versus Zerg or maybe Bioterran because they don't have the small, they have the small arms fire, right? And the, the armor on the tank mode works out really well. The problem is you do need healing with it, right? It's yeah. too hard to get that so fast. Too much money, right? Um, the the Phalanx armor mode is really only effective when you have a bunch of them with a bunch of healing, you know? Yeah, yeah. They basically act like souped-up anti-ground goliaths, in a way, where people normally yeah. do the goliath cleric. It's going to be a grand DPS, library. DPS, high again. tank, high range. I like this. I think it's pretty strong. Uh, now, unfortunately, there's going to be at least two vultures. The more vultures come out, the weaker this is, I think. Assuming it's going to go for those M-Ramps. And I think against Terran... You kind of want to get the arm ramps at first, at least. Because yeah. I don't think any of the other Grand Library units are going to have that much mileage early in the game. But, as I was saying, they're not very good against vultures. Yeah, I mean, mostly because two hits will get rid of their shields and do a little bit of scratch damage as well, so... Yes. Be huge against Goliaths, but uh, Beaver's not in a Goliath kind of mood. No, he hasn't really been favoring them. I don't know if he's been playing with them at all. I know that he is somebody who likes his Blackjacks, likes his Vultures. I mean... 
His username on the Discord server is still the Lobster ninety nine. After all, nice. We still haven't changed it. To I never the asked so, you know. if it was, you know, in order of the mind or unrelated. Could you, maybe you just like eating lobster. No, yeah, he he thinks that they should be called uh, instead of lobotomy mind, they should be called lobster mind because you know spider mind is like kind of a creature, right? And now it's like a yeah, yeah, of course. And I know the joke that they're gonna grab you with their claws, you know, all that stuff. I don't even know um, if there was that much thought put into it, Neblon, but you might have oh, just, okay. might have just done better than uh, the people arguing for it. Maybe if you had made the case, I might have listened, but I clearly have not. They're still called the body. You know, if you think about it, in StarCraft 1, they probably should call them, like, rabid dog mines or something, because they just kill anything. They don't have any respect yeah. for friend or foe. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And I, obviously, in StarCraft 2, uh, but you'll like, I, there's a commentary I did at some point where I was like, yeah, a lot of people come from StarCraft, and they're like, oh, this is a weird game. And then some people come from the demented cousin uh, that was Starcraft the sequel, two. and uh, we don't really talk about that. But they also say it's a very different game. <laughs> and of yeah. course, you know, Hepsey will be like, "What the fuck? You're an asshole." But anyway, <laughs> the the gist of what I was gonna say is that in StarCraft Two, you've got the Widow Mine, which is you know, on its face, it's kind of like, oh yeah, it's like you know, the Black Widow is like a type of spider, so it's like kind of homage to it. But they don't like hide in the ground, though. That's I know. Weird. Yeah. No, they do. Well, actually, they've changed this recently. But up until recently, um, <clears throat> the Widow Mine required you to build an armory in order for them to remain cloaked after shooting, which is really weird. That's really weird. So if an armory is on the map, they yeah. do that? Yeah. Otherwise, they are, they are only cloaked into... It, basically, while the weapon is on cooldown, they were not cloaked. This is a I'm fast not cantavis. Too, in too long, man. I'm way out of this. Okay. Envoy, I would love to see. Because, of course, those storm drops, even... Mm, you'd call them quote-unquote nerfed. Possibly, you'd say side-graded in Cosmo here. Still worth it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it shuts down the mining for a long time, and I guess if you're slow to react, you'll lose a lot more because it does deal more damage in aggregate. But here comes the... There is the sort of an upside here, Aaron, is that they're not super saturated yet, so it's not as risky, you know? But that said, I guess you can less afford to lose workers too. He's going to come in here. Looks like he's just going to go straight for it. No ifs, ands, or buts. Setting a witness across as well. I'd love to see him just, like, aim over Zelich to, like, possibly give that map ping at the critical moment. Mm, that would be huge. Yeah. And that's why I did my quasis in my game just now. <laughs> I don't know if you saw. Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, my God. Try to do that. Over his way over here. He's not even dropping in there. It's just like, all right, just let me shamble on over. I'm an old Templar. Gonna get a few kills into nice and mining. I mean, so far, so good. As long as he saves that, which he will. I'm a, uh, okay, POV, you are the Beaver 99, <clears throat> and that happens to you, and you say, silly, and then angrily move your workers away. But hey, your Watchdog <laughs> Scout's getting some good mileage here. Oh, he's going in. He's going in for the natural. That envoy just out of range of the turret. Oh. Just okay. Protoss things. Hey, wait, he's actually safe from that. Yeah, he doesn't actually need to worry about it. He's going out whatever he wants. Oh my god, he went back to mine! Is it going to last long enough to kill any? Oh, they do dodge. Nice nice dodge out of there. Oh, he wants to go in again. He oh, he, he lost vision. vision. He lost vision. One. The envoy moved too far away. <laughs> this still is... Where's still the micro vultures? Get the vultures down here, Oh, bro. this is so annoying. Oh my god. This is so problematic. Because he only has vultures, right? He can't chase down an envoy. There's nothing that will actually stop uh, Anakin from just picking this up. So basically, he can't mine until he gets some kind of anti-air to deal with that. The lives are coming out. This is a unit he needs. Well, he could oh, definitely yeah. put the vultures down where the uh, Cantavis is so that he's not shut down from mining. You not know what? I do just throw a hallucinate just to be annoying. Well, he needs to be careful. If he drops in, the vultures could sneakily pick it off. But no, he goes for the main again. And all the workers are here now. If he goes on the transfer path, there's no easy way out. Is he going to do it? Yes, uh... he is. Oh, my God. Okay, nice pull. Nice pull. These were pretty good dodges so far. I oh, think that's it. That envoy? One more <laughs> hit. Ah, oh, just Protoss things. And he unloads again. Checking the energy. Are you away. sure we're not playing Brig War, man? Did you, like, revert the mod? This looks the same to me. <laughs> I don't know. That would be a, a, a reaver, and then you'd hear, Ah, And then you'd see the snow drop, you know? That's snow, <laughs> snow impression. Oh, man. I want to see snow using the Acantors. We'd all be doomed. It'd be over, it's man. It's going to be so cool if he does that. When he does that, I should say. Well, yeah, despite honestly, all of that, Beaver is ahead in economy, so he, probably, he might not feel yeah, it, but he's setting up his third base. That's the trade-off, right? Yeah. You spend a lot of APM, you didn't get the expansion so fast. I think it's still fine for Anakin, I don't hate it, but uh, that is the trade-off, right? If you're not that good at multitasking and macro in general, uh, he's going to be a bit tougher. But it, the thing is, even though he is ahead in workers now, it's caused a lot of disruption, right? He's been banking a bit as well, but he's taken a third. I, well, he has taken, I suppose. He's put, actually put something there. Yep. I think Beaver did a good job of just trying to stay composed, though. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, eventually he can put a stockade down for a vestry, start repairing some of his damaged uh, masons so that they aren't such vulnerable targets. But he's got really good uh, vision here. The vultures on the outside, Goliaths on the inside. Obviously, the uh, witness is going to spot this, but 
I don't really think there's a safe spot to unload the Cantavis in. I wonder what the best tier one stuff to go for is, considering you know there's Grand Library out. Um, I want to say Blackjacks are good against everything from the Grand Library, oh! except they're quite vulnerable to Storms, all unfortunate. Yeah, a bit ballsy there. Especially with the Witness here to see what was there, I kind of questioned that. <laughs> yeah, there's the I'm silly. with BB here, to be honest. Like, that isn't even BM, that's just like, come on, man, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I know. You can he... see that stuff. Well, you can also, by the way, a little pro tip for anybody. If you see a unit, even if it's not your unit, you can click on it and mouse over that uh, weapon range preview and hold shift. And you'll get oh, you that. you can do that as a player? I yeah, didn't yeah. know that. So, I thought you could only do that as a witness. Oh, no, my God. You can do it for your own units and for your enemies. You don't need units. detection? No. Oh, you oh have to God. hold shift, so it's like this whole fucking... Yeah, of course. You know, I know I don't do that, but... Dang. Maybe it should be a witness only thing, but I think it's it's probably fine as it is. Well, at least a detection only thing. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I meant. Uh, sorry, because right. the witness is w the Witness or witness? Which uh, one yeah. are we talking about? <laughs> that's right, that's right. Hey, our names are not confusing at all. We do have the uh, attack force coming in from General Anakin on the weakly defended side here. Vulture going to go ahead. Vulture anchor, I should say, land. And the quarry will be the target. This is what Anakin has got himself with all that harass, though. He has got a superior army just by distracting his opponent, right? How are you going to deal with those Amarans and Zealots? You need to not be standing on top of your mines. This is not the spot for the army, by the way. I mean, we're in a lot of danger, but Anakin is going to pull back. Well, listen, you say that. I think the, the biggest thing is that General Anakin once again going for the Mind Tyrant, but there's not really like single individual units you want to pull here. Although know, he might just be able to crush it with all of the... Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, the Dracodin force here might be able to crush enough. Yeah, it's going to be a tough trade. It looks like Protoss will come out on top, though, and that is usually pretty good for Protoss if the armies get reset, but he just pull back again. Ooh, the Masons are doing work. Again, are you sure this isn't Brood War? Yeah, these yeah. These repelling Dragoons? I mean, it seems about right. Well, I the think Goliath the Mind Tyrant will be good here. And the Dragoon, too. What the hell is going on there? Yeah, what happened to that? Uh, I think we've only Goliaths left, though. The Mind Tyrant is going to do pretty well. We might just see the Top Ramen special again. He's he's boiled the water. He's got the, the saucepan ready. He's yeah, about yeah. to, you know, put the noodles in. He's got the Witness on, on file as well. He can oh, even do it from the low this. ground. Yep. Where yeah, is it? Huge. He's thinking about it. You can almost there hear it, it laughing at you. <laughs> he just runs away. He's like, oh, crap. Oh, my God. But it will revert at least. So not too much damage done, but definitely pushing him back, putting him on notice that he's in trouble here. No, well, he's going to lose those two oh. that he had set up there. So that's a little awkward. Oh, why lose them when you can use them? No, I guess he's going to kill them. <laughs> Makes sense. Well, Treasury will probably get canceled yet again. There is one Phalanx, too, on the high ground now. Yeah, the treasury being, needs to turn uh, up here because he's doing fine for economy. Anakin has no third nexus. Yeah. Maybe he needs to focus on surviving. Maybe get to tier two. He has the money for it, um, or at least just passing on a bunch of phalanx or whatever. Because yeah, this is very threatening here. If he gets in the anchors, he's safe from mind control. Oh my god, with the phalanxes, this is super dangerous. He's getting the masons. Is he gonna keep it? Ah, oh, that would be awesome. He should do it, but unfortunately, his energy is not quite there. Oh look, he's even offering him up. Like, hey, you can take him. Yeah, he wants him to do it. I mean, in a matter of speaking, it could be a play to make your opponent want to start building another race because it's so much investment. Well, you also no, have that's... to keep a tyrant nearby all of the stuff that you make. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, here's like the witness. Even... Oh, oh, that's huge. Although he's only going to get like one shot off and it's going to revert. But, well, who's shooting who? Yeah, oh my god, gone. it dies. He didn't unseize Dude. the phalanx. That was the play, right? General Anakin gets sick work out of these mine turrets. So many anchors have been forced out, but tier two is on the way, and still no third nexus from Anakin. So Beaver's still in this. He's just under the pump a bit. Yep. And you know, if he deploys a critical mass of phalanxes, the mine tyrants can't do that. Terran actually has a really solid answer to this, and it's just more artillery. Gorgons would just absolutely destroy them as well. Um, oh, you know I what? The like anchors too. Think about it. Like you can't target yeah. the buildings. So <laughs> that's pretty. Yeah, it was good. a very smart move to get all those because uh, now he can't do it. But he's going to kill one. Vultures in that one in the back actually don't have the range. There's nothing in the empty. top one. Oh no! Quick, get in! Oh no! The Dodge. mines! Mines! Okay, it just stuns the guy. These lobotomy mines stun. Does that like stop the counter on the mind control going down? No, no, no. What if he's stasis? Uh, no, I still think it's pro Oh, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. It might, it might update. That's getting some mileage. Yeah, but these, these anchors can't support each other because they're too short range, though. So Anakin's still getting value, and here comes the next wave. Oh, man, he's ready to smash through here. The balance is going to have to do work, and they are. We're all back at home. We've got uh, two Arden authorities coming up for the artillery follow-up from General Anakin. Setting the pace, setting well, the tone. It melt that dragon in front line, though. Now uh, it's just back to a little force again for Anakin. He got some kills, but he gave up a lot. So 
maybe pressuring a bit too much here. Captaincy's coming out. Few madcaps in bunkers, man. He can push this back. He can, and yeah. Madcap's not really susceptible to mind control Listen, at all. Listen, I think we're going a that. step further than that, my man. Do you see the resources? Beaver is about 800 Vespi, no, a little bit more than that, away from tier three. You say that like it's a small number, but it's not. But we just get that phalanx. 800 Vespi is a oh, lot. Oh, look at that. The mine basic. stunned the witness and killed it. Oh, unfortunate. But hey, he's still murdering all this stuff. Sentinels would be very, very useful here. That's right. Just so deny that. Uh, it's going to be Beaver's mantles coming up as well, in addition to the four sentinels. So we're going to see some heavy walkers. Double listen. expand here. Yeah, listen, he, got, yeah. he has to spend his float somehow, right? Yeah. I mean, look, I think uh, Cataphrax are obviously going to be susceptible to the mind control, but they don't have that much DPS and they don't die that fast, so it wouldn't be that bad compared to the Phalanxes getting mind controlled. And Ramses and Durandal is always a good sort of spam unit as, as an option here as well. Well, right, he's getting the Sentinels. Looks like he's going to be secure now. Uh, and the Madcaps coming out. No Vestries available. He's finally making a stock here because I think he realizes if he's going to run out of Madcaps, healing would be quite useful. He's going to crawl his way out here. Double expand, triple expand from Anakin. He's like, all right, killing time over. Time for money. Five lattices at that fourth base as well. I love it. you got to spend that money, man. That's very smart. Although I would rather they be in his main. But hey, better to build them somewhere than nowhere. That's right. There is a treasury waiting in the wings to take this third base, but... The How long, man? It's been waiting for like 10 minutes. It uh, hasn't been able to move it. Now, slow crawling with the Sentinels. Going to draw in the army. Not exactly where General Anakin wants his forces to be. Sentinels can struggle a little bit versus Amaranth, but uh, Anakin decides not to commit. Probably would be pretty heavy losses if he did so. We need to get these madcaps in the anchors, man. They're most effective in there. But architects show up now. Can really threaten this position. Architects can sort of one on one the Sentinels pretty well, especially with the shield region. Well, the Phalanxes are pretty impactful here, but they're not really too far forward. A second Palladium coming, that's going to be a pretty big deal. Points the Treasury down to the <clears> third. <throat> I guess he thinks it's too hard to push his army back, but he needs to establish like hella defenses over here. Where are those Masons going? He's oh. going to go all the way to the high ground here, use that advantage. I mean, if he gets a bunch of Sentinels up here, I think this makes sense, but until then, it is just very risky if. Uh, Anakin finds out about it, he will easily crush it. Looks like he will. Is our units going around? No, okay, they've changed their minds. Anakin getting up to a pretty respectable work account here. The third on the high ground is still unused, but I guess he's just saturating one base at a time. Five vassals on the way. Man, a vassal swarm could actually be pretty good. If the madcaps aren't there, you swoop in, you kill a bunch of phalanxes or like a production. Could be very threatening. And building five at a time won't take long. I'd love to see a crucible on these though. <laughs> Double ancestral. Really, all the way out in the open, he must be very confident that but Beaver will not be able to break out. High one. I know, yeah. So, yeah. Well, he's made the mantles, but nothing with them. Up. He's making the double starport behind it. I don't know what the Beaver's up to here. Ooh, double Azazel cataphract, pumping them both. The tankiest composition. Yeah. You should make the Azazel buff stack, so you get like 10 Azazels, 10 Ansels in one location. It's like unkillable. <laughs> Look, the Watchdog reveals the uh, Prostration, Double Ardent, and of course, the Horde of Vassals. Doesn't know about the... Uh... Wait, he... oh yeah, he sees them, but he doesn't see the Ancestrals, right? So, doesn't know that Obtectons are probably in his future. I assume that's what he's going to go for you. The Architects, this is what I was talking about. They can really cause problems here. He lifts to retreat, I assume. Madcap's actually not that good against Architects. No, Oh, he no. doesn't want to lose those. Well, he's trying to take the fight. I think Beaver's be just uh, being a bit lackadaisical here, trying to take the high ground, but uh, not well, controlling his army super well. Look, he did get a bit more mineral income, at least up from that semi-secret base, so he's, he's advancing here. Look at that. Baiting the army in. He's actually doing huge damage to yeah. those phalanxes, absolutely splatting them. Only Architect's going to be left here in a second. Yeah, and a couple of phalanxes. At least one of them will go down. The Sentinel's also falling. Ramsey's here for the front line. But the phalanxes will, will give as good as they get. Sentinel as well. Yep, on the high ground there. Mine Tyrants are trying to step in to see what they can do, but I don't know that there's too much there. A nice stun onto that bottommost Mine Tyrant. Yeah, I think he holds. I think he holds no problem, especially with all these Sentinels. The defensive line went back so far, and honestly, Anakin got a bit baited here. That poor, poor traitor balance is executed. But losing these Architects is not a good play, man. It's very expensive to replace those. The Mine Tyrant's probably going to be picked off as well. I don't think they can escape, especially not if Beaver and well, for Anakin doesn't actually micro them. Yeah, well, also, Beaver's not really paying too much attention to that right now. I think he's realized that his time is now. He can destroy and target down the ashes, the, the, the victims, uh, the people that he was uh, victimized by. There you go. Got it in the end. Yeah, right there in the end. 
Look, you gotta give props to Anakin though. He may not have uh, been controlling those two mind charts, but he has kept his bank down way better than the other games. Only on a thousand minerals, is below a thousand minute ago, and look what he's got to show for it. He has 33 vassals heading up there, as well as all this additional production. He's queuing up quite a bit, and some of it's unused, but hey. I think it's better to have like all this random stuff than a lot of money in the back. And the wyverns, the worst possible units. Oh no! This. No! Oh my god! No, not the vessels! No! Absolute disaster for Beaver here. That's a fair bit of gas he's going to lose, and a lot of harassment potential gets absolutely destroyed. And now Anakin knows as well. Start <laughs> Ooh, the counter gets silly. Him back. Valkyrie's going to be made now, but he can get in before they're finished. He can even kill the starports. But a few madcaps coming in here. And honestly, six madcaps might actually be enough. Well, let's see. Especially if you fly on in over them like nothing. And remember, there's madrigals being oh, built well, by those fulcrums. He bursted them down. He bursted them down. They didn't get their full buff up. Well, Ramsey's, Ramsey's with the line though. trace. Yeah, very, very deadly. Need to avoid those. Well, maybe he can kill Oh, he's going to well. charge on in, but here's the AoE from the... Yeah, there's the madrigals. Oh, 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 my God. Oh, he gets the other one, though. Oh my god. Terran using silly. every... <laughs> the silly's going back and forth, man. Terran using every bit of splash in the book there. Takes That's him right. down, but honestly, I think it was well worth it for Anakin. Just because he has so many bases and he's only trading minerals, and he like took out a bunch of key units there. Mm -hmm. Well, the high ground base is well and good, but Beaver has no gas coming in. He's going to finally try to take his intended third. It'll be his fourth base in actuality. And well, now it's the Autectons. What does he do with the yeah. prostrations? He's idle. He's not going to go ahead and make anything out of it, so... Yeah, he needs Gorgons more than Wyverns, right? The Wyvern's not really that handy against the Autectons. Like, if you look at this army from uh, Anakin, it would actually be pretty vulnerable if there was just, like, a hundred Gorgons, maybe one Valkyrie just to help deal with the vassals, you know? That would be pretty tough for uh, Anakin to deal with. <laughs> I do like the idea that if you only had a hundred Gorgons... Yeah, man, just give me a hundred Gorgons. I could beat anyone. <laughs> you know, that's all. That's all I need. Oh, he finds the hidden base... Yeah, 9 o'clock okay, no spotted. defenses got built. Although he is taking the other third now, so he's going to lose one, but get one up, I guess. He needs he's to pull the workers. There. there we go. Yeah. Ends up doing it a little bit slow. He's going to see if he can buy some time with his wounded Tech mech units. Guns. Ooh, they're going to oh, get away. Very scary for a moment there, but he makes it away. And he still has defensive formation up here. Plenty of anti-air vassals trying to Nice stun on four Dracodons. Yeah, that's going to be some good kills there. Almost oh, to get away. Or not. Oh no, they're being pulled back in. He's recommitting. I don't know about this. this yeah, here exactly... come the wyverns as well for further punishment. Oh. It must be more severe. Running on down, trying to deal with these uptectons, but he's only got four wyverns. That's not really the best move. Like I was like... saying, they're not really the best unit. You know, cost for cost, if those were gorgons, they could actually probably kill all of these. Uh, but the wyverns really struggle, not with enough DPS really. Um, the range and the slow and all that stuff. Oh, well, look at that. Another hidden base being yep. built though. In the bottom line, somehow escaping the vassal patrols. And, you know, he did get that third base up instead. So his economy will maintain here. But uh, General can still more bases and substantially more scribes. Look at his high ground third, man. Okay, there we go. The migration. Yes. Isn't that beautiful? Cute awesome. Swan Lake or something. 39 scribes moving up to the high ground, 3 o'clock. And 39 like vassals moving on to the <laughs> natural. That's, uh, I didn't oh plan my that. God. that All right, like I do that. love the vassal spam. I mean, he still has minerals in the bank. So any vassal he makes, even if it dies and does zero damage, you can't say it was a waste. It was just a distraction, you know? And he's got wyverns in, again instead of Valkyries. That's right. There's one thing I like about salamanders is they can do both. Oh my god, there's a single watchdog at the natural. What is that going to do? Listen, there's That's two madrigals here and they're balling up. They're balling up. Where's the reaction? Ooh. Ramsey's too, actually. Oh my god, the Ramsey's could be huge, but so many workers have already fallen. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, that was happening. a massacre, that's for sure. Yeah, look, there's only like a few left surviving on the gas. Needs to resaturate here. He's got a few worker queues, but he needs another quarry as well. And his work count is so low compared to Anakin. I wonder if this is going to be a game that we're going to see has to end with a monument of sin. That hey, seems to be hey look at that. Weapon. Right yep. there at the low Cold ground. Up. You know, where all of the other tech is, you know. <laughs> right, it's the furthest thing out! It's like the closest to the opponent. Okay, at least he's putting gateways, but like, man, he really doesn't expect to be able to ever come out on the map. I know, he? yeah, could you imagine? Dude, his hidden base is getting going. Uh, I wonder what this game would look like if you just saved for tier 3, like you said. What would he be building right now? Well, that's a good question. All right, work is not really question. being remade here, only one at a time. I'm not even sure where. It's the hidden base only. The only place where he's hey, so. where's all my anti-air at? Oh no, not the phalanxes! Oh. They don't have any Hang armor, Neblime! Ramsey's dude hit pretty hard, but yeah. Takes out the turrets. 
This is going to be focused. Valkyrie swooping on in from the third, but they're out of position. He's going to get away. He's going to get it. away with it. Oh, he's coming oh. back. No, he's not. Watch out. You got to watch out for that, man. Probably could have actually just killed both of those before they got another shot. Oh, no. No. Oh, you so want to say damage. that one again, Neblime? Oh, hey, look right, at that. They live. They live. 40 kills between those two Valkyries. Holy crap. Dude, Big like fan. you look at like the army numbers go down during those fights, it's crazy. Listen, hey. the Wyvern's here on the front. They're actually slowing down everybody on the approach. Might be a little bit too far forward. That Sentinel never finished. Yeah. A couple others first. I down. like that micro. It's actually pretty good uh, sort of tanking in a way for the Phalanxes yeah. because it stops anyone getting close to them. And now he knows the anti air is gone. He's going to go after the Teptons, and I think he will clean up his entire army here. Well, some of them are pretty low, and there <laughs> goes that. Oh my god, the poor vassals, man. I feel bad for them. Look, there's another round here, though, and we what include Archons. I don't know, they've got a scribe, too. They can set up some proxy engrams or something. That would actually be pretty good here, ironically. Alright, he's gonna keep the pressure on these Wyverns. He's to get back. I would love to see Shamans. He's getting a Vestry just now. Shamans right. for heal would be great. Listen, the Archons were being held back, gate kept by how slow the Architect was moving. Now we'll finally show its <laughs> true form. But not yeah, before it gets so fumbled fast. into dust. They're very good against long range enemies like this because they just sprint on in. I know, yeah. He's going to get his shields back. Or not. Ooh. Man, the defenses have been whittled down for Beaver. He's desperately holding on, man. He's trying it's his just best. Just run down, Terran outpost. Seven health game. on that Archon. It didn't have any shield. Three health on that Archon. Oh, That's three, dude. Team. Yeah, amazing. Taking 500 Five health dam or 500 damage already, so pretty nuts. Hidden base still operating, by the way, for uh, Beaver here. A lot of idle scribes down at that okay, six o'clock. Okay, but listen, if I'm General Anakin and I just queued four monu four Star Sovereigns for my one monument, I think the game might be over. <laughs> man. Just, I'm just oh gonna. Oh my god! I'm just gonna. Dude, see. and he can send so many vassals with it. You know, it'd be great for him if this Valkyrie strike stop oh, no. him to speed up. Mason's or work a massacre. Yeah. It's looking rough, man. I, I think Beaver's about to get run down. I don't know if the Star Sovereigns are even going to be needed. But Archon's just dancing, man. It's like, oh, you can't kill me. I'm too fast. Yeah, yeah. And they, they're not wrong. The defenses are strong, but he's not ready for the Star Sovereign with like 50 vassals escorting it, man. Like, no one's ready for that. You know, he might set up another hidden base, though. Is this just actually not helping Beaver <laughs> in the end? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. I mean, General Anakin's Dang. doing having a really hard time actually finishing the game is the problem. No, the 3 HP hero got killed. Uh, I'll pretend I didn't see that. I feel like someone could write a book about like what happened on this map today. <laughs> like the, the holdout of, you know, Outpost Beaver 99. Yeah. Outpost B99. Yeah. Coming yeah, to a bookstore. They, they colloquially call it Beaver 99. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe there's like a brothel there or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, could be. All right. The Star Sovereign, only about 80% done. I think that this is going to be the killing blow because Beaver is determined I know. not to give up here. I know, but he has no... He, now he's got plenty of gas, but no minerals. Mm, well, he could tear up, get those... Uh, what do you call them? Silver tongues. That could would be. deal with uh, star souls pretty well. All right, it's out. What's it going to do? There's so many vassals. How many vassals is that? 40 he's... vassals. Does not quite get the 50 vassal escort. I'm sorry, General Anakin, but Crucibles haven't stacked in like a month. I don't know what you're doing, buddy. <laughs> he just has a lot of money, man. Yeah, yeah. It's just so that nothing will get depowered, you know? Hmm. The Vassal's gonna go in first. I don't know about this. I'd really rather he send the Star Sovereign. Well, Talos is coming out. Looks like he's gonna try and mine that inner base. And you know what? That would have been a great play a while ago since he's stuck back on his two bases. So. Yeah, I feel like um, if that if that came out 15 minutes ago, I definitely think that uh, Beaver would be in for a good shout, but forgot about it, you know? Coming in. He picked base, this map well, and everything. Look, the Scribes are gonna find Hidden Base, bottom left. Oh, huge. Is Worker battle. Be a Mason scribe fight. Worker the battle. vassals are thinking of coming in, by the way. Yeah, yeah, to decide the map. You know. There's tier three. Oh, the Daedala. Yeah. Yeah, to decide the map, though, you know, Beaver's back on his last legs. He knows he can't win, but they, they put everything down to a 1v1 duel and one on. Maybe not 1v1. Maybe like 15 versus 15. All right, the Terran line's still holding. Outpost B99 is still holding here. Oh, my vassal. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. They're so bad at killing the ministry anyway, though. I know, yeah. Oh, Beaver's not right, too well, worried about it. He got his money's worth, and he doesn't even care. He's got a new hidden base, you know? That's right, yeah. Dude, he's gone from hidden base to hidden base. Now a third hidden base in a row. Tecton's trying to trying to do something here, but they're kind of easily repelled by the phalanxes. He's got phalanxes, he's got Valkyries. The Star Sovereign's just chilling at home. I know, he's not using them. 
I mean, again, I think that Talus game is going to end, but we'll see what happens. I mean, who knows? If he waits too long and Tier 3 comes out, who knows what can happen? And he's starting to get those Taluses. His income will go up here. That's right. I mean, you can make them out of the quarry, right? And that's where he's making them from, but he doesn't have that many. I've got so many freaking vessels. 39 vessels over there. 40 um, coming in more, from the other side. More at home. Yeah. Yeah. All right, surely General Anakin will move across the map. He actually does have the high ground. In, in okay, fact, he has was... most of the map. So. Are they going to find the top right? They're going for it. He figured it out. No. Oh, the last economic hope for Beaver, except for his inner base investments. It's going to get cleaned up there. Vitty B for my sanity. I think it should count as two games, but obviously we will not count. Yeah, that's two. right. This is, this is two. This is worth it all. <laughs> yeah, suddenly. Okay, I have to go to bed, so i uh, see you guys later. And uh, General Anakin wins. See you. Bye. Does he win, though? He's got three Star Sovereigns, and that's what he's waiting for. Three. Look at how long it takes ah. these vassals to kill the Ministry. Yeah, they're so bad at that. So, do you think he's going to, like, use the grief of all the gods three times at once just to really rub it in? Yeah, establish dominance. There's a substantial turret wall, man. Valkyries are going to be pretty useless here, but there's a couple of Gorgons. You never know what can happen. But there are so many vassals. If the vassals just get involved, the Star Sovereigns will zoom into the base. I really want to see that happen. Yeah, we'll just start sniping your own vassals too, right? Okay, here it here comes. Here we go. Oh my gosh. There are Talos's too, you know. They'd actually be decent here. He's going to start shooting. He's not even going to use the glassing. Oh my god. And now Viva probably realizes how screwed he is. He's making the Iron Foundry, but there's no time. Ah, oh, they outrange. They sure outrange Sentinels because they don't shoot air. <laughs> One cataphract holding the line. That's right. Plus a mad Who cap. would win? Rip. Can he do it? He's a brave man. Is he brave He's repairing enough? He's it. He's repairing it. Oh, Not he enough. Died. He's shooting his own Telos. It was a traitor. <laughs> it didn't oh, repair it. Yeah. The right, Gorgons and Valkyries. Yeah, but the Valkyries don't really do that much here. I think he'll just annihilate it. Very slow turn speed on his Star Souls, but it doesn't matter. The Paltry anti-air forces. The battle's still held in reserve here, man. I know. That's the ego. Gets move. the shields down on one of them, but I think that's about all he's gonna be able to do here. Random stray missile killed that madcap. That wasn't even like intentional. Here we go. Is he gonna lift? You have to, right? That's the move. I really wanted to deploy more than one. There it goes. So much well, damage. Well played. Right. Okay, he's not even gonna lift. I thought for sure he would lift everything. Maybe. Outpost B99 has fallen. No, the Talos is. The Talos, yeah. Slaughtered. Wasn't able to hold that. Salvage a match. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. GGs. Hey, that was only game one of our best of three. We will see who ends up coming in. My Beaver best. has an opportunity to strike back. I don't know if he's defeated or if he's feeling like maybe he's got something up his sleeve. Well, maybe it was all the plan. He's like, you know what, game one, I'll just sit in my base and, uh, you know, try and uh, drag it out. Tie him out, and then game two, we bring the real source. Let's see. Let's see. Lucy says he's too high for this. Waiting for the beaver's map pick. Could be the final one. What do you even pick after a game like that, man? Well, he's writing out his suggestion, his selection. Yeah, it's more of, more of a command than a suggestion, isn't it? It's a suggestion I am happy to oblige, and then I host the wrong map, obviously. You know, did they write like a three paragraph supporting their choice? <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not Benno. I'm not a uh, not a school teacher, so I don't think I can ask for that. But... Benno's a teacher. I didn't know that. Yeah, he does. He teaches math. Ah. German math, which is probably like Ein, Wein, Trein. Something like that. I think that's all the German I know besides asking where the Jews are and where the toilet is. Voy esta toileten. That's it. The purgatory the, is going to be the pick. The purg. <laughs> Glad Luciferius chipping in. Map 7. <laughs> I 
Wow. Crazy game indeed. I hope we see more Vassal Spear, man. It's the, the best thing ever. Just letting everybody know what's going on with the status here. General Anakin is up 1-0 for the qualifying series. The Beaver 99 back against the wall. Best of 99. Best of 99. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have to sleep. <laughs> I can't do that. Lunacy. All right. R is exchanged. GLHF. It's time for what might be the final map of Group D and thus the whole of Battlements. We are getting into it, folks. The Beaver 99 sits in the top left. General Anakin rests in the bottom right. And rest is a good word after that game. It was a over 30 minute long game where uh, the Beaver 99 really tried to hold out, put on the back foot, maybe showing a little bit more of a return to his uh, previous tournament form, which is actually not what we wanted to see, of course. And General Anakin really struggling with the uh, ability to close out the game, right? So. He kept up with Macro better than he has done in previous games, though. Um, so you got to give him credit for that. Um, but yeah, not that successful, the aggression. Beaver also very much just going into a turtling sort of play where he's not getting much done, but also can't die. That is right. That is right. Now, the Beaver 99 going for a stockade opener with the quarry follow-up. So it looks like he's alternating back to his plan for Titan Forge. Hmm. Similar-ish map, because there is just a ramp you can hold, more or less. At least initially. Yeah. Scout coming out. Fairly normal timing. And I think General Anakin will open with gateways as per usual. I'll definitely be asking you about your uh, opinion on the seating as we get into things here, because qualifying in our final player... I'm not actually sure who's going to be on the top end and who's going to be not, right? So, hmm. for those who are unaware, we seed... Oh, look at a fast warden? What? Oh, I don't know about this. That's going to set him back quite a bit for no real gain. I don't know if he's expecting a proxy here or what. Funnily enough, the mason arrives here looking for maybe to do that, like a proxy anchor or something. I mean, if it is an anchor, though, he can just fly around that. He doesn't really care about the yeah. time, does he? That's right. And he's not sending his Maverick across, so I think he's going to make a scouting turret, or he's just going to go in. He's just hiding it to go in a bit later. Because, you know, if a Legionnaire was running across, he didn't want to run into that, so I like it. But the Warden might actually stop it, or maybe not. Uh, it it'll contain it, I guess, but the Beaver can just move his scout no, forward. He's, he's going he's gonna to run right into it! Uh, okay, never mind. Well, he okay, sees the embassy. embassy yeah. He should know that mm. his opponent's going for something greedy. What's it's got to be Artisans, I think. I mean, maybe, maybe he scribes it first, but... Now look at all the gases around this map that aren't on the attack paths. Yeah. I think he's going to start putting artisans around the place. By the way, this map, we did not restore the ridge. Wait a minute. Oh, yes, I wish we did. I'm so blind. I was saying that yesterday, too. I don't know why I can't see these things. You played on this map earlier. You would have noticed. I know. I know. I certainly did. I'm just really dumb, man. I got no excuse. That's not true. You're smart enough to go four to one in your group. Oh, you don't need brains to play StarCraft. You just gotta hit the buttons, man. Another Warden. Okay, it is Covenant first this time. All right. Now that's interesting. The uh, Savants can definitely go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dracodons, but of course, you did need more than one production structure. I want to see Mass Idol. I know it's very cost-inefficient, but actually, if you can get a critical mass of them, you will just win the game. Or even get a critical nuke. So mm. a good way to do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they're... they're they're just not as good as Savants, man. Wouldn't you rather have the Savants? They sound so cool when they shoot. They do sound pretty cool, and it will be a Savant first, but I still feel like if you, on balance, made like 10 stockades and four of them had covenants, you could go Maverick, Harak, and Eidolon with all the mineral dumps. Yeah. And uh, you would have like the a real sniper's fest there. I just, having played as much Brood War as I have, I hear the ghost shooting sound, and I'm like, yeah, that's not doing any damage, you know? Mm, you think we should replace that's... it? Well, I don't know, maybe only for me. Because, <laughs> you know, because ghosts have concussive, of course, in Brood War, and they yeah, suck, yeah, yeah. so. Well, no, I mean, it's it's probably a fair uh, point, because considering the... Everything is, like, completely different. I mean, eventually we'll have a custom sprite for them, too, like everything else. Sure. You know. A lot of safety watchdogs here worried about a drop or some other shenanigan. 
Well, they're both doing it. Two Wardens built for Anakin, two Watchdogs built for Beaver. A third coming One, as well. And yeah. an anchor. Yeah. Both of them are just terrified after that last game. Well, second stock It's kind of rough. Because there's no possible detection right now. So this this witness is like, ooh. Yeah, he's just going to have a field day with this. Pops Sees in. the drug use. He can report that to his local police officer. And then the, the guy will go and be like, hey, man, I also need to score. <laughs> oh, he's what? Is it a bait? Is it an accident? What's going on? I don't know what happened. Is Actually, that a star okay. pad? I think he made a star yes, it was. by accident. Okay, that's a it was. mistake. That's a lot Could of have made Nancy will deal with that witness at least. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not Shemba really that says, big of a deal. Shamba says I'd launch to sound like a railgun. I don't agree because it doesn't do that much damage. But it's better than the ghost for sure, but it's not like a freaking silver tongue or anything. It's just like, okay. We're pecking at you. I mean, that's pretty good. Alright, alright. Hey, another covenant. Mass savant. I think that is what he needs to do here. I think two covenant and a vestry is pretty good. Although he's really expecting to die. He's just holding on, like, he's, his hands clenched on the edge of the desk is what I'm picturing. Is He's like, I'm not going to fall this time. Uh, Interesting choice. Up. Second anchor. Pulling off a lot of the workers that would be harvesting here, but he does have a worker advantage over his opponent. No surprises there. Well, and again, playing right into his hands, he's going to try and bust this. But with so many uh, masons there, there's no way. And the uh, Savants mm. are going to start doing decent damage. Nice pullback there, keeps those ones alive, but he is going to have to commit in. Oh, Can't one of them penetrate very low. these. The one on the back does oh. end up getting bopped. Finally starts repairing. Man, he's in the wrong mode, those Savants. If they're on Power Drain mode, they'd be doing a lot more damage here. Yeah. Actually, wait, I think some of them in the bunker are... No, oh, the ones just outside them. were. Yeah, Yeah, he just changed them. Yep. But uh, okay. now the Dracodons are in. He's got to fight with the Masons. They can't just run. They have to stand their ground. Is he trying to drill on them? No, I don't know running. what he's doing. Oh, oh it's gone horribly Big wrong. Big mistake here. Big mistake not to just fight, because you could definitely take those on. Yeah, and you're also going to be insulated from the uh, reinforcements coming in here. Trying to That's seal right, them in. Gonna mine plenty more gas here. Well, even with all this worker damage, he's still basically even in workers. So that's yeah. As long as he can stabilize, he's doing fine. But can he stabilize? And losing the savants is a bit painful here. Although now right. the firing speed is really getting up there. Oh, Look yeah. at that thing machine gun. Oh, my oh there God. it is. <laughs> Deadly. All right, instantly resaturating. Yeah. So all said and done, Protoss two workers ahead. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's how ridiculous the uh, initial lead was. All right, and he still has these four stockades, maybe 3.9 stockades. He's going to try yeah. and bust this again. I don't know he's about that. one anchor. Yeah, but again, the fire rate getting up so high here. He's going to have to retreat. Look at how fast he's shooting. He's going. Oh he's full get. He's full <laughs> get. <laughs> oh, my God. Super nice. soldier. Nice. Eight kills on that guy. 1,100 damage. Gemini Lycan is uh, enjoying getting murdered by that. That's right. Gas mining has not been reassigned properly here, though, for Beaver, so it's going to be hard to keep producing these savants. He's doing what he can. Man, General Anakin is not happy with that, and I think the Beaver should Man. absolutely type silly and or noob. Yeah, yeah, he needs to lean into this, right? He needs yeah, to take the mental bit. Sly. What's that? Oh, smile. Smile. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I was... Take... Yeah. Ooh. Okay, hold on. Here we go, another attack coming in. You really want to go for lose that? that hero, savant. Know. You lose that hero, the force is going to lose morale. And he's retreating. Yep. Looks like he's going to wipe out even more Dracodons here. And the hero survives. <laughs> Dude, we're getting up to a pretty critical count of Savants at this point. He's going to have six. He can continue going on. He's not resaturated his geyser until right now, though. That's a pretty big mistake. Wondering where all of his yeah. Vespine went. Okay, finally, finally he's done it, though. Yeah, yeah. A uh, bunch of Mavericks in queued up, but honestly, it's fine, I think, to make some of these mineral units. Now he's got a good Savant count behind it. Because the Dracodon count keeps resetting, he's not under that much threat right now. But I really would like to see him try and take this low ground. Finally, the Vestry's here, so, I mean, a few Clerics plus these Savants, you can do it. It would be a mistake, I think, to try and float down in Anchors, because you don't have the movement. The Dracons can really abuse this if Anakin's on the ball. But if you can leapfrog it and secure the space, it'll be good. But look, this Anakin's going to be right in his face. It's going to be too difficult. I love the Treasury being here, and he does need to move in a yeah. little bit tighter, but, you know. Yeah, it's very helpful. Oh, look at that. You don't want to tangle with those no, Savants. No, warning there. shots. Oh, he just realized he was in the wrong mode, I think. Yeah, there you go. Because the, the kinetic pen can miss, but the uh, power siphon one is the one that homes in. Now, here we go. General Anakin putting down a home base. The flag directly on there, trying to lay claim to the beaver's position here. He has not well, scouted for hidden bases, but there aren't any this time around. Finally, just clinically yeah. visionary and then off to kill that witness. Yeah, nice. Shaman will detect when deployed, so it gets rid of that Ooh, witness. He wants to make an Akantor here, dude. Or maybe an architect, but I suspect an Akantor. Hmm. 
I don't know. I feel like but, the Akantar wouldn't get very many hits off of the Savants. But it would be coming down is the thing. Don't, never mind going up the ramp. It would be mm. too hard to uh, to get into the natural. And honestly, I think Beaver is screwing up a bit by not trying to come down now. I think this is the moment. Uh, and the Warden's going to finish. The Ardent won't take too long. Uh, Anakin with his own natural, poorly saturated as it may be. He's getting him some gas, though. But yeah, if Beaver sits in, uh, Anakin's getting a lot of mileage out of this contain. Well... Anchors away. The Beaver 99 aims to stretch his legs a little bit, and he will see that there is a contain developing. Stepping he lands again immediately. Uh oh. Man, I would well, love to. I gotta say, yeah, Eidolons would be good here. I know. I was just about to say, range. Eidolon and the anchor, they get 10 range at that point, plus the plus two from the uh, cliff. That's 12 range, dude. Yeah, huge. Enough to deal with engrams, that's for sure. Yep. Uh, Enough to deal with the yeah. architects that come out, the acantors that come yeah. out. You get nothing. He does have to secure the natural, though. He can't win the game securing his main. Anakin very wisely going for a third base here. Great move. He needs to get those workers going, though. Now he's looking around for those hidden bases. And also, look at this. We do have a ministry going to be floated and a fulcrum, as well as a star pad. So expanding the tech, he'll use phalanxes to clear this, presumably. Not going for That the... should work, but it's going to be pretty slow. I know, yeah. I think Anakin's going to be able to take a good lead. Look, if um, Beaver preserves his army and picks off some of Anakin's and expands as quickly as he can here, with phalanx, that is... Um, I think he'd be doing okay, but Anakin's definitely going to have a lead. Well, that's been the story. Okay, unloading. He's trying to prepare for the move out. Ooh, but he should have done it like three minutes ago. Oh, this architect isn't even going to finish. I don't know. Like, it might not finish well, in time, right? Yeah, have a power siphon. I guess this could happen. He needs to move the stuff a bit forward a bit more. And oh, start yeah. hitting now. At least that shaman to stay with the army. Very hesitant, though. I think he really does need to just commit, though. Yeah. See if he can pull this off. Well, well the architect's about to here. finish, you know, so this is starting yeah. to be a little bit... I mean, he can still win even after the architect comes on down. But this is wise. Moving the anchors up. I mean, he could definitely be doing this faster. Well, that architect is stuck in hits. It's going to decimate things like Mavericks. Even pretty decent splash on the Savants. He's landing his anchors on his own army, trying to fight. But the firing line is up for Protoss. needs to get Savants in those anchors. He's yep. going to do it. Ends up garrisoning okay. them. But so much has been lost, dude. He's know, lost yeah. way too much here. I think Protoss is going to crush through these anchors. And he's even going to pull back and use the uh, architect man. Mm -hmm. Those oh, are look at that! Sound. Just in the last second. They shoot so fast. But they are going to have to give up their buff and retreat. Yeah, unfortunately, Beaver hesitated too long there. He had a window for a couple minutes where he, he needed to secure that area. But now, I don't think he's going to get out of this the whole rest of the game. He's got this treasury going for a hidden base. Maybe phalanxes will get him out of here one day. We'll see. All right, Ministry heading on down, but look at this. The Treasury, obviously, also at the 9 o'clock position. Oh, medics. Cleric's getting destroyed there. Oh, yeah. Man, again, if those were Eidolons, right? Yep. I I, I still think Eidolons there's there's actually... potential play. Yeah, but like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> actually the best unit in the game. For this position, he absolutely. Go. He never even got his Palladium. He has no Phalanxes in his future. Well, Anteal's going to be handy here. Did not commit onto this Arctic, though. Loses a few more units. Just not sure if he wants to commit or not. He needs to go one with the other. A lot of free kills here. Palladium only coming Nine now? Kills. Yeah. And honestly, Phalanxes aren't like a, a silver bullet against Architects. They sort of just fight them one by one. Oh, but he's going to get the Palladium if uh, Beaver can't commit forward here. And he's uh -oh. not. He's choosing not to. That Palladium will go down. Limited time here. <laughs> Ministry and the Treasury hanging out at uh, Nauticorp, by the way. It's a gathering nice. of uh, the best minds of the Orion Imperium. Yep. He takes one single shot at Arctic, by the way, and just gives up and retreats again. He needs to commit. Okay, he's going to finally advance forward. Arctic's cut back. Listen, if he gets a second Anseal, we can start to talk a little bit about his versus Architects, but it's not going to happen, man. Oh, Ahmed. Yeah, it's too difficult in that tricky location. Yeah, Harakans can make a big difference here, especially against the Drakens already doing huge damage. Well, I don't know if it's going to be enough, but at least he died in a blaze of glory. Ahmed hits the deck, and I think General Anakin has done just about enough here. Well, he's going to try and come in. It looks like he wants to end it. Gonna try and cut this ramp, but the Savants will still get their massive attack speed buff. They don't even make a sound they're shooting so fast here. They're going to start to pick off these dragons real fast, but if the anchor falls, they won't last very long. It looks like the architects will take it out. Oh, full Can speed ahead. Through? Full speed, oh and they're not God. being targeted. Neblime, <laughs> they're gunning him down. I can't Absolutely believe what crushed. I'm seeing. Well, the buff will reset, though. The buff will reset, and he can retreat, and he can kill a lot of stuff. 
But Anakin forced to go back and lick his wounds and come and try again. He's probably thinking to himself, like, God damn it, just let me win. Just let me in here. <laughs> well, there's no anchor right, to fully charge him up, right? So this is definitely yes. over now. Okay, he's going to get in this time. Listen, With I like it. Seal. It's cheeky. I, I love what I'm seeing. Oh, Rockins, get him. Ah, oh, the Savant's on, on Rally or something. I don't know what happened there. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like he's finally going to get into the Terran base here. The Architect's in the back. One with 19 kills. Still doing work. I didn't see what happened to the Hero Savant, but he died long ago. Oh, Coach he almost got an him. Architect with it, too, at the very end there. But nice. it's just Clerics. I don't think they're going to be the uh, answer here. All right, and well, unfortunately, the Beaver 99 will exit winless. Star Sovereign's not required this time. Indeed. Thankfully. Oh, add-ons burn down, really. as are the hopes and, and dreams. Say, you always say Three Crew doesn't leave the game, but I think Beaver 99 is the new guy that we'll go to for that. Yeah, that's Joe right. Joe Mason's, no? Yeah, he wants to transfer them to his hidden base. Oh, right, of course. He just landed that. Yeah. yeah. And the game from there will go on. Surely. Well, you know what this means. General Anakin exiting. I'm, I'm definitely feeling like he's a bit more mortal than we maybe thought. Um, yeah. Judging by the way that Hepsea... Uh, did things to him. Total proto supremacy. And it he is, admits yeah. it. He does have oh, to concede it's over. it. It's over. Very, very so sad. That gives days. us our overall group results. We know who's going to be in the throne room stage now. <laughs> He'll be joining <laughs> next time as Protoss. Uh -oh. Can't beat him, join him, apparently. Wow. I'm excited, man. If I play a Nexus Session as Terran, I can go back to the old ways. Mm. It'll be like the same thing all over again. Listen, that is an unfortunate closer for the Beaver 99. He does not end up posting a dub. General Anakin making it through. And you know, it's it's kind of weird. Uh, the two newcomers who have never posted any results in an Ascension or Acropolis type tournament before, they score a win on their way out. That's Top Ramen and Jackie Lansky. But the, yeah. the guys who qualified and have been here before, Three Crow and the Beaver, they play well. They play above the level that we initially thought. Um, but unfortunately they don't post a win. So I don't know what you can take away from that as far as narratives or whatever, but it means something. It means something, I'm sure. Yeah, well, congratulations, General Anakin, getting in. Of course, Upsaya expected to return. That's right. Um, That's right. I mean, what did I say at the start? I think I did call it that General Anakin was going to win. Yeah, Respect yeah. my calls, Pranogo. I haven't been wrong yet, They except about my own result. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. Well, the... Uh, the thing that I would say about that is we did get to see some savants. We got to see some disparity in play, some different strategies. and uh, Savants are amazing and, sometimes. And uh, uh, can be done. just letting people know if they want to do the interview. Uh, it looks are we like Kapsaya is already. I, no, he's already yes. streaming StarCraft too, it looks like. So oh, what a shame. I know, I wanted to pick his brains yeah. about how um, perfectly balanced the mind tyrant is. So. <laughs> yeah. But with that said, uh, that does close out our results for Group D. And I'll Do you have a graphic and... for all the groups? Yes, I'll put that up in a moment. But first, I think we can bring in the man of the hour. The second man of the hour, anyway. It's going to be General Anakin up first. Sir, hello. Welcome to the chat. You have qualified in over your compatriot, your childhood friend, as I'm told, the Beaver 99, yes. not able to make it through. But you are, General Anakin. You are. And it's also your first time in one of these kinds of tournaments. How are you feeling? Oh, excellent. Well, I mean, like, I got absolutely donkey sloshed against Hubseya, but Beef told me that's what was going to happen. Okay. And so I was kind of ready for it. Right. Um, I'm glad that I gave, hopefully... I gave him a little bit of trouble at some point. Mm, but, uh, certainly did. Listen, he was, he, I think if you go back and watch his stream, he streams all of these matches that he plays. Uh, you'll uh, you'll probably see some serious rage if, if over the Mind Tyrants if I had to speculate. I haven't confirmed it myself yet, but I'm just going to go ahead and ex expect that. Yeah, so listen, I, I want to rewind all the way back to your um, first match. Obviously, it was after the Beaver 99 opened up against Hepsaya. We all were really surprised on Axiom. Like, oh, man, Beaver actually threatened some damage there. Were you thinking maybe Hepsaya was actually a bit mortal going into your first match against him? No. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> um, I, I definitely was aware of how good Hepsaya was, and mm -hmm. I was under no pretenses, false pretenses, that I was going to be able to win 
I was hoping to just, like I said, make him a little bit angry at some point. Mm. That's all I was going for. Okay, okay. The the moral victory, Neblime. Uh, obviously, yeah, that's your, right. your first uh, match against him was on Impetus. You chose that map. Was your, Did you have a particular game plan? No, no, I, I really didn't. Um, I've seen some of his games, but not enough to actually formulate a game plan. Um, my biggest struggle, as obviously everyone saw, was large-scale macro. Mm. Um, and he is just enough better at it, and as well better at the uh, small-scale micro that I, uh, that I lost. I see, I see. He's also played a little bit. I mean, maybe you've played equally in terms of length, but he's been playing in these tournaments a lot longer. So maybe he has a little bit more of an experience edge at that point and has also seen, you know, what other Protosses can do. Although I really do think that your Mind Tyrant play bamboozled him in that uh, Derelict match. I don't think he had any idea initially what to do against it. And it looks like he's actually going to wait for an interview too. So we'll get to pick his brains about it a bit later. Uh, as of right now, obviously going up against the Beaver 99, he's somebody you, you practice against a lot, I'm told. Yes, yeah. So, I mean, I, we've played probably over one to 200 games at this point. Oh, wow. And so, wow. Yes, we, we play together quite, quite a bit. Um, I start off as Taryn, realized mm. that Taryn was garbage, and then switched <laughs> to Protoss, okay. and had a lot more fun playing Protoss. I see, I see. Um, obviously, you've uh, th then sort of maybe been I, i've been told that you end up uh you know taking it to him a lot of the times has he taken games off you in the past like with a fair degree of regularity or has it mostly been you winning those matches uh i would say that i would say that it's 50 50 probably he definitely says that it's probably a lot more probably 30 70 my favor mm, okay. um but he he definitely will surprise me quite a few times um but most of the time, I'm just able to use the uh, the goodness of the Protoss race I to see. best him. I see. Okay. So, is that to say, if your first opponent in playoffs is not Protoss, do you think you're going to win? I think so. I definitely... Th uh, PvP is my, by far, weakest matchup. Um, I think the only time I've lost is in PvP across most of my games. Mm. Especially in okay. both the uh, qualifiers and this one. Three Crow is definitely a vastly superior uh, Protoss than I am. Interesting you say that because he didn't end up making it out of his group. He ended up uh, exiting in third place earlier in Group A yesterday. So uh, he was uh, he was in a bit of a group of death though. He was in a group with Hamsters, Protoss, and Nebla, uh, Newt's Terran. Obviously, uh, stepping out. And if we zoom out a bit, Newt is a highly touted Terran. He's also the only Terran to make it into the playoffs. Kind of a similar story, though. Nebline was the only Terran last time, and he won the whole thing. See if that... Uh, I hope that's not case. an omen. Don't say that. <laughs> Could very well be the case. So, uh, do you have um, any sort of Protoss-themed questions here for our boy General Anakin, Nebline? Do you have any thoughts about the games or one things you want yeah, to Yeah, I mean, about? why always mind Terrans? You just think they're, like, the best unit? Because that certainly is becoming, like, that's, like, your signature unit, it seems like. Yeah. So, the mind Tyrant, I, I don't think of it as, like, a... I think of it as an economical unit more than anything else. Okay. Um, the ability to be able to train something, I believe that the prostration stage is 400, 200, and then the Mind Tyrant is 150, 200. And I will always get more economic damage than even if I just build one pro prostration stage and one Mind Tyrant. I can always guarantee that I will steal more minerals and make him destroy his own army. Mm. And so it's kind of a no brainer against. Uh, larger scale units like obviously uh like Terran, Bio, or Zerg, it's not nearly as good against. Um but as a whole against especially Protoss and then Mech Terran, it's it's my favorite go to because it's so easy to unless you're ready to completely counter it, it's so easy to just wipe out ninety percent of your arm. Okay. 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 Definitely right, well I'm very luck. excited to see them. Oh sorry to interrupt you. No go for it. Because uh in the last ascension, I don't believe they showed up at all. I don't remember. No, you have um, to see realize they didn't really. I mean, the mechanic of tyranny and the way mind control works did change, but not in a way that fundamentally affect, affected how they work in the cast ability and stuff. So, yeah, actually, <laughs> funnily enough, uh, the mind tyrant has remained un, relatively untouched for probably three tournaments now, including this one, right? Going mm. all the way back to ascension six. So, yeah, very much slipped under the radar. 
Oh, well, that's it from me. I don't have any more questions. There we go. All right. Well, General Anakin, you have qualified in second place. Any final words for us before we let you go? Mm. Total Pro Protoss Supremacy. There that's it all is. Outside. There it is. <laughs> it proved it true. And so far, so good. All right, man. Thank you and congratulations. I'm sure we'll be talking with you again soon to uh, pick your brains about it. And thanks for uh, playing th hundreds of games, like you said. Must be a yeah. project you're enjoying at the very least. So, cheers. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye-bye. Till next time. And with that being said, I think we can bring in the Beaver 99. Sir Beaver 99, how are you? Welcome. I am doing uh, as well as one can be after being defeated. That's right. Okay. I took enough, zero matches well. in this, and I was hoping to take at least one. Maybe one from Hapsaya. Listen, but... that first match, I want to start right there, man. You looked real good with the mech play. How, what, where do you think yeah. the things stumbled out? I didn't make tanks, and that was my one weakness. Uh, also, I was kind of experimenting with a new strat, going with Blackjack instead of, uh, like, Vulture. And so that was kind of a bit of a new thing, mm. kind of just to counter his vassals. Oh, okay, um, interesting. They do gun them down real fast. Yeah, they do, but they're not the best versus Architects. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I'm gonna ask, uh, in all these games that you've played with Anakin, have there been a lot of like one base attacks? Because I noticed in that last game, you threw down the anchor like super early and they're like watchdogs in your base before anything had even happened. Well, I noticed he was playing weird. He only had one gate, so I figured he was probably going lattice. So that's why I threw down all those uh, turrets. Because I figured he's probably gonna go like vassal again. Um, and I only saw one gate, which meant he might have had like more stuff on the map. Um, but... Oh, you're expecting yeah, maybe a proxy or something? I, I hate storm drops so much. They're so <laughs> awful. They're just bad. I hate them. So I wanted to stop that, but turns out he didn't go for storm drops. Probably because he had the stupid witness. But Oh yeah, that witness in your base. Without any detection, it's very tough. Yeah, I had to get that shaman out. and Oh my gosh, 100 gas when, when you're going savants is just so rough to try and come by. And trying to get tanks to count. Oh my god. Well, it can definitely be a... Many things that you got to start to cross your T's and dot your I's for versus a eclectic and yet proactive Protoss. And that seems to be what General Anakin's all about. Oh, uh, yes. Versus Hapsaya, I think your first game composition did pretty well. You kind of got timinged on Titan Forge, though. Uh, they were, that game, I think in, a lot of people might just uncharitably look at it and think, oh, Beaver got crushed. But it felt like there was a very obvious game plan there, and maybe he just like found the magic timing to surprise you. Is that what more or less? Also, I just really underestimated how good idols are, even off of one lattice. Because that, that's why I waited so long and flew my racks into his base, because I wanted to see how he beat me and with what structures. Oh, I see, yeah. Uh, and like just only doing that off one lattice, I, it just, it's really good versus bio, and I just wasn't aware. Interesting. Yeah. Something that Nebla mentioned is that if you can do your firing line spacing, they're a lot less efficient, which is true. But the way that the SimCity had been set up, you kind of engaged in a bit of a box formation because of your anchors to the north and your treasury to the south. And that probably kind of funneled you in unexpectedly. Yeah, and also, he had all those units up north that came in yeah. at the same time. And that, that uh, split my Cyprian shots. And that was just kind of, yeah, not the best. Also, is it Neblime or Neblime? I always just call you Neblime. 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 Oh, Apparently, well. yeah, Neb is the first syllable. I had no idea. Either. I had no earthly clue. <laughs> well, I mean, well, I've heard him. You know. I've heard him say his own name a hundred times, and I only recently realized he's saying it differently than me. And it's not just his accent. So, yeah, it's like it's like Hapsaya. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he of says course. Hapsaya, yeah. Well, you know, is that his actual name? It's, it's Hapsaya. Hapsaya. It's Hapsaya. Yeah, but the thing about it is Hapsaya. The thing about Hapsaya is that I asked him what his name was, how you would pronounce it at one point, and he he told me it was like he read it out loud and said Hapsaya, and then for every, like the next three streams in a row, he read it out as Hapsaya, <laughs> and I was like, oh okay, it is Hapsaya. Then you fucking troll. Like what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's uh, how we get to names here. But you know, we get it right at the end. And that's what really what matters. But. Uh... Hey, I think uh, I do. Uh, I see a, a bright future. I know you said that you were going to come back as Protoss, but I hope you don't. I think there's going to be a lot of changes that kick into gear here. Um, you know, maybe not in the balance department, um, but in the terms of the meta game development. If you think about the way that things are rolling, like I think Newt's going to start making some stuff up. I think Top Ramen already showed a pretty good couple of ideas yeah, versus Top Ramen Protoss. already is having Top Ramen on, is that tells you on it. He, his style is something new and something ferocious. 
Yeah, yeah. Too bad he wasn't able yeah. to show it versus any Protoss in this tournament, but still, like, I feel like he's he's got some game plans down. And also, we got to give a shout out to EUD64, who's uh, I know he's been watching some of these, but he's also been playing Terran lately, and I think he's going to be a pretty overall reasonable level player as well. Like, and, and you know, maybe able to qualify to some of these kinds of battlement stages, or at least do some damage in the gauntlet. So, anyway, <laughs> figured I'd I just put out some hope there for the Terrans. I certainly no. think that they're a pretty solid race. <laughs> Uh, Protoss is Don't worry, Beaver. Uh, I'll come back and save you next Ascension, next Acropolis. If you, you're actually going to play Terran? Again, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, why are you so surprised to lose Terran that's... in the last one? Well, I mean, true. Yeah, I think in the last one I we had a it. dominant number of Protosses as well. I think the only Zergs were... We certainly did. I believe yeah. it was like the last... Four minus hamster. I guess they're just saying there were two protosses, right? Oh no, Shambler was still Zerg, wasn't he? Yep. Well, oh, yeah. no, so yeah, the Zergs, the Zerg, the two Zergs that made it through placed deepest, alongside you, obviously, who won it as Terran, as the only Terran in playoffs. But it was Veek, I Sarcasm, Hapsea, Biddy B, three Crow, all Protoss, five Protoss in playoffs. So now this time around, it's a little bit more because we've got Shambler, General Anakin, Hapsea, uh, Hamster. Wait, no, is it only four? No, that doesn't seem right. Or it would be five, right? Because I said Shambler, General Anakin, Hapsaya, Hamster. I feel like I I'm know, missing man. one. Am I not? I just remember one? there weren't many Terrans left, that's for sure. Oh, no, I guess I'm not. No, there's only four Protoss. So actually, we have less Protoss supremacy this time around, if you can believe it. There you go. There you go. Let's it's go already despair, trending like positively. Don't despair at Terran. I shall return. All right, our Messiah. You just have to wait I for me to win a Zerg first. Good. Listen, on top of all of that, we've got Mystery Meat, dude. He's coming back later this month. Your, oh, your prayers will amazing. be answered. Yeah, but who says he's going to play Terran? He's going to play any race, you know? He'll play he's random playing. again, yeah. But he'll, you know, that means one out of three times, uh, unless it's Blizzard RNG and it's not run into three times, he'll be Terran. So, be fun. easy climb. Well, he's going to play Protoss because they're OP. <laughs> he already did one tournament like that and he won it. So, it's fine. All right, man. Lost my base on the way. I know, yeah. We used it in the hype video, though, so it was okay. Oh, okay. That makes me feel so much better. <laughs> <laughs> did you see the hype video beaver did you have any thoughts oh my gosh that i need a i need a what is the song you used for that if you wouldn't mind sending that to me yeah yeah it's that, uh, yeah. that hype video has had me hype the entire day <laughs> <laughs> it's too bad i didn't uh you know you didn't save it for the day that you were actually playing i guess but you know still pretty legit i don't know man i feel like there's something something worked out with that one so people were happy about that oh yeah Oh, one thing I did notice, uh, it had Newt listed as Zerg. I'm oh, sure that's that probably correct. just one last uh, error that I didn't catch after watching it 10, 100 <laughs> times, of course. So that would be my But bad. that's the only qualm I had with it. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure Newt is fine uh, not, you know, being misraced, mis mis uh, <laughs> misgendered. Yeah, yeah, something like that. So, hey, you know what? Uh, we come into the play. We are talking about the throne room stage. Unfortunately, we will not see you. But I got to tell you, Beaver. You impressed me. You The fact that you qualified here at all, considering the field, I have to take a look. Neblime and I both have to take a look at your qualifying series, five game against Benno. Sounds like it was a banger. And uh, Those were some fun ones. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm looking forward to that. But uh, with all that said, you have the floor is yours. You have the final words. Until next time, are you two, three? We are. We are two. And <laughs> together, we are three. Beaver, it's been a pleasure. We look forward to seeing you yeah. next time. And uh, if you can, listen, if you can keep qualifying, you know, I'm just saying that's a feat unto itself as the level of play rises. I'd so. be surprised if you don't make it into the next one, honestly. There well, I will is. certainly try. Happy to see you there. GG's, Thanks, y'all. See you. And with that being said, we have one last man to talk to before we close out the show. It is going to be none other than Hupseya. What's up, dude? Pro no go. How are you, dude? My brother. Hey, man. You completed the the sweep four zero. Uh, in fact, you there know, were no problems along the whole way, and it was a very that smooth. That last <laughs> game was rough. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I, I have had. played a game versus Hamster where he made the mind control thing against me, and no one else has done it since then. I was really praying that no <laughs> one would try and make that unit. Listen, I will say your play eventually figured out. Like, I just need to overwhelm him with numbers because so. I guess you maybe you have you ever used that unit? Do you have you used it before yourself? Yeah, but like I, I didn't really like understand how like good the yes. mind control spell is. Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I will tell you right now, there is one thing that I actually thought was fixed a while back that apparently never was, where 
Uh, when your unit is turned but stunned, you will still automatically attack it. And that is obviously not intended gameplay because then if you're just on attack move, you'll kill your own shit, right? So that part of it yeah, that is part not kind of sucked pretty bad. Yeah. So uh, that's obviously not intended, but. Uh, and or, and it, you know. it's impossible for Terran to like make them their tanks or their other units not like shoot at their stationary units. It, it was pretty rough for the beaver. I feel like if he had more phalanxes out early, the mine tyrant would have just died during its channel. But, uh, you know, there's there's levers to pull. Uh, you know, one thing that would obviously be worth looking into is if the channel took longer, then your unit is rooted for longer. But anyway, yeah. we're planning a total or revision if, for if that. There was just like, if there was just like a limit on how many things each mine tyrant could control, like that would... My thinking is it would probably Lots change up to be it. more like... Uh, something where it debuffs the unit and they only get controlled if they die, which means you actually have to lose it. Because right now, to put it to you in a different way to try to explain the design, because I know you're interested in RTS design. You talk about, like, you've got, you've got a mm -hmm. lot of thoughts on general mechanics and stuff. So to, to level with you on that, it's like, because the other sort of forms of taking your enemy's unit is, like, infestation and reclamation. So that's Zerg and Terran. But you have to kill the yeah. unit first and then use the corpse to do it. Or in the case mm -hmm. of Zerg, you have to actually kill the unit while it's being channeled on, and then it becomes infested. For Protoss, Do you don't have to kill the, the unit. Doesn't the Protoss unit from that Tier 4 structure do that? The Empress thing? Uh, it's yeah, like a very short Empress, of yeah. stuff. Yeah. The problem with the Empress is it brings it back at like less HP, and it's it's kind of not a very effective unit in general, so we don't see it much. Well, okay. I do. I think it's pretty good versus crowds, but we don't see it being... It has the Gladius bounce passive, so it does end up spreading to a lot of people, which is really good for, like, fighting Zerg, but people haven't figured yeah, it out yet. Yeah. So, uh, But the the rest of them, the Demiurge and the Mind Tyrant, they can steal the unit without it dying, and that means they're... You know, in order for that to be fair in any capacity, you have to be able to get the unit mm -hmm. back, right? So there yes. has to be budget yes. built into that with the idea. And I feel like maybe that is just the idea that if it can work, we haven't figured out how to make it work. And I think it might be worth exploring a world where you have to actually kill the unit in order to control it. Maybe I'll have some other idea because I like the, on paper, I like the idea that Honestly, you don't need to Honestly, it's really kill cool. Unit. But yeah. I, I don't think that the counterplay is there. Right. And maybe you that know, would be like, something I, where I it's think... like, you know, the mind tyrant has to be, uh, while it's controlling something, it can't move as fast or something. There's like different things you or, might be able to do. Or it gets like but... a stacking movement speed yeah, debuff yeah, for yeah. everything that it does control. Like right. something well, to like slow, because like it, it moves really fast, you know, because like the way that he was using it is like he would just like cast two mind controls and then yeah. zoop away way yeah. before I could even get close to it. And, and the whole thing was like he was making up tectons, right? Yep. So it's like the, the counterplay is I got to go kill the Dark Archon. Yes. Which means I have to clump all my shit and walk into <laughs> four or five up tectons. Yes, yeah. And like, you know, before you had even suggested it, someone in my chat suggested it. Who was it? It was uh, Sky. Sky. He, he was like, dude, just overwhelm it with fucking low tier shit. And I was yep. like, I can't. He has up tectons. Iron and okay, listen. Unironically, the counter was vassals. Think about it. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Gotta remember, tectons are garbage versus air. They, yeah. they cannot deal with air. Yeah, I'm, not, I, I'm aware. But the Patriarch the is really good versus air. They, yeah, it does even, the splash, yeah. He only got that a little Agassiz, bit later, but yeah. The Magister is sort of spammable, right? If he you started making a higher number end, of right? units. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you know what? That's what ended up giving Hepsea the game at the end and confirming it. I mean, he had much better macro. I think if you had re recognized that he was, like, camping his choke but still had his third up faster, that also would have helped because, you know, there was a little yeah, bit of Yeah, I killed it the first time, and I should have yeah. just left a unit there. That, that's like a habit from StarCraft Two where... It's kind of hard for me to like leave a unit behind. Oh yeah, because of max supply, right? Bring it with me. Yeah, because of max supply. It, it's like it's like the the conservation of mm. force yep. idea. Like I need to keep everything together, right? Because like I'll hit max supply and then I'll have things randomly scattered around. And I was watching you play Nublime, and it's like you scatter shit everywhere. And I was like, okay, like still missed a hidden base apparently. Yes, for <laughs> I, I, told need, me. I need to do that. But also, my my mind is like in a different game mm -hmm. as far as that like idea. But I will say is concerned. Zerg needs to do it a lot more than the other two races. But you got to watch out for hidden bases with no supply limit. Hidden bases are like way better in Cosmo. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah cool shit though and at the end of the day right how are you feeling about that if i can rewind your mind back all the way to the first match you had the beaver 99 you probably don't know that much about this guy but he's been around for a while 
a perennial mm-hmm. underdog. I was surprised to see him qualify. But when he was making blackjacks, yeah. I was surprised as hell that those things worked as good as they do. But I went and looked, and I was like, oh, they have two armor pen. Like, yeah. they, they just shred all of the early gateway units' armor. Yeah, they are behind a bit of a, an add-on, so there's a time gate to it and also a mineral gate, but... The yeah, idea you know, of like, I saw you know, him building the add-on on the fulcrum, and I just didn't know what it meant. I thought it was going to be tanks, right? Like the phalanx, because I, I don't know the difference between the add-ons. Mm. Is, is, right, there, okay. is there two add-ons or yep. only one? No, there's two. There's okay, two. okay, okay. So, yeah, yeah I, I didn't know the difference. Oh, there's a lot of units to learn, right? I, I told you about yeah. the tier lists that I made, and it's like 50 cards in each one. <laughs> yeah, no, that's ridiculous. There's no way I'm going to go through all this. Especially for, like, the non-Protoss units. Oh, sure, yeah, you can I, just I, do your Protoss tier list. That's good. I, I don't know even... I don't even know all the Protoss units, right? Because, like, how I've been managing the games, even with how much I've been playing for, like, the last three weeks... I'm like, okay, I'm going to stick to, like, Gateway, Lattice, Mm -hmm. and then in Tier 2, I'm only ever going to make the the Robotics Bay building. Yeah, the Arden Authority, right? The Arden Authority or the Argosy, Mm -hmm. because, like, those units are just really easy to use, and they're very straightforward. And then in the high tier stuff, I always just make the the Templar Archives building. Right, right. Because right. like the units are just so straightforward, and it's like okay, like I can make these units, and then I move and shoot these units, mm. and I don't have to like understand deeply like what's going on and the mechanics of how things work. Yeah, fair enough. Right? But you don't I, I'm slow. I like I'm kind of like slowly incorporating more and more and more um i worked on the opener that i did quite a bit yep with the the gateway lattice stuff because i, I think it's like just I, at first i was like dude there's no way that it could be worth it to make both tier one buildings mm-hmm. but the variety of shit that you have on tier one protoss is absolutely ridiculous and you could make like an everything army where you make like two or three of every unit and yes. it would be way better than making 20 dracodins yeah and i know we talked about uh like maybe some months ago we were talking about how it's hard to um do that from the perspective of like building many different production structures because we don't have like the tab yeah. support and all this other stuff and if people who are more used to the brood war method of using a camera hockey for their production end up yeah. going a little bit far that's actually what top ramen does which i didn't know until i watched his uh, first person view uh, but he uses the brood war stuff. Yeah, he's from a he's more from a brood war background, I think. Yeah, I, the, I I can't like, I can't do that be, because yeah, yeah. that that's like a screen movement tactic, yep. and not like a not like a. I I don't know. It, it just it doesn't work for me because I'm I'm like, I, I want to like keep my screen focused on the thing that I'm doing right now. And then if I yes. think to macro, I use the hotkeys instead. And I have been using R, F, and V. Yep. So I have like four or five R, F, and V as like unit production mm. structures. That works out pretty well then. That covers most of yeah. your bases initially. Yeah, no, like it, it's almost everything. And uh, I don't know. I don't feel like I'm going to be making like six different types of production structures right. unless the game is like an hour long. Which honestly, I mean, we were halfway there on the Mind Tyrant game, but you you managed to. Yeah, <laughs> that was. I, I don't know, like. How was the scream? Just, by the way, were you were you feeling it? Were you letting the rage go out, or what was it? Because I, I speculated no, that General I, I mean, gotten you, but what, like sure. when I first saw the Mind Tyrants and I was dealing with it, like I remembered the hamster games, and mm. I was like, okay, I just have to kill it, right? Right. Yeah. And it was going all right, but then like when I pushed across the map and I was trying to attack into his choke point. Mm. And he has like four, three or four up tectons. I'm like, dude, like I, I can't do anything, you know. Like, what do I? I was like, okay, I'll make argosies and I'll make air units, right? And then he just mind controlled fucking four solarians, <laughs> and I was like, this is brutal. Like, what? I was like, what the fuck? I, I, I mean, like, yeah, I got upset. I was like, what the fuck do I do? Right, right, right. But I didn't like mentally surrender because I was okay. like, dude, he has two bases and I have seven. I just like make more shit and he'll die right yep, but it yep. didn't actually work he just like ran out of gas you know and, and watching his games versus the beaver i i, I watched his first game versus mm. the beaver after i advanced i was like okay like 
his macro is just not there. You yep. know, like the strategies he'd used were really cool, actually, with the one base uh, uh, Templar drop. Yep. What, what's it called? Yeah, yeah, Cantavis now. Yeah, but it's the a storm Cantavis. drop, right? Yeah. This storm drop. I was like, oh, this is actually so cool. Like, I want to do this, but I've been working on like a solid like tier one push. Yeah. Right with the 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 uh, the idols yep. and the vassals with gateway units, and that scouting helped I, you out a lot, right? Like you figured out what was yeah, going on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Making like the one vassal early, and and I realized like I can build like a Dracodin or a mm. Hierophant instead of an idol first, and it's much stronger versus like a Vulture or like a Legionnaire running in my base. So that was that was actually really helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Nice, nice. See, I, I mean, it, it does, I will say, since I'm coming from the perspective of, like, we make all of these units, it's great to see them used. And that much is all great and, and well and good. But to hear that uh, top player, like a high-level player with a good understanding of RTS fundamentals like yourself, is able to come to the conclusion that, wait, actually, if I do make, like, an everything army and I use the units, well, like, I remember I was, uh, I was, I tuned in for a little bit of your practice games against Ecalypso earlier. And you were talking mm -hmm. about how, you really only have to worry about microing like very particular units. Like you can kind of a yeah. move and then just micro the higher fence to tag individual units and then like quickly target everything onto the whatever gets tagged and then kind of mm -hmm. keep keep on advancing, right? So I feel like the higher like fence are out. so fun. Like that's actually one of the most fun units for me to micro is the higher fence. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, I just it's like the the it's very satisfying getting the like stacked up uh, aura. Right, yeah, yeah. And, and just, like, chasing units down and focus firing them feels great. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of, uh, I don't know if you'd call it lizard brain or whatever, but it's like, yeah, I'm going to I'm keep going. I keep going. I'm ke I keep on pushing, and that, that definitely feels pretty <laughs> good. So. Yeah, pretty good stuff, man. You, all, you end up going out in first place. That means that you will be facing off against a second seed in the throne room stage, which is the fancy name for playoffs. Just like okay, the last cool. time, it's uh, double elimination, so... Uh, we'll see how that one works out, but it, it, I actually I do feel like I got pretty lucky with this group. I'm not going to try and knock on Beaver and, and General Anakin, but I think that I, I got, like, the luckiest group I could have. Oh, you think so? Okay. Yeah, like, because I looked at every other group, and there was always, like, one player in every other group where I was like, man, I might lose to that person. Like, mm, okay. But I, I didn't feel like that with, with Beaver or uh, General Anakin because I'd played both of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. The stylistic sort of matchup, right? It kind of ends up helping you out in some ways. Well, I will yeah. say, though, that as you ex as you exit out, maybe that'll give you a little bit of, uh, you know, you going up against what should be on paper a weaker player if you're going up against, like, a second rounder. Technically, Newt is a second rounder, but I don't think the seeding is going to bear him out as your enemy. We'll have to wait for am that. I, but... am, is that who I'm going to play? No, 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 no. Like I said, I don't think that's going to be... The... Oh, yeah. okay, so we, we don't know who we're going to play yet. That's right, that's right. Well, I mean, okay. technically I do, but I'm deliberately being vague so that I can reveal it with a fancy <laughs> When are you going to post those anyway? When are those coming out? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to post it with a fancy graph. I'm trying to work on it right now, but Photoshop is crashing oh. as I'm trying to talk. I'm stalling for time. <laughs> it's all coming out. <laughs> well, I, I'm excited, and uh, I've, I've been enjoying playing the game. It's, it's, yeah, been, yeah. it's been fun. And that's actually one of the things that I did want to ask you a little bit about is, like, at the end of the day, obviously, it's still, you know, I remember one of the things that you actually mentioned, right, was it, it's more important to make sure that the game is fun. And that's something that you said that, like, when you were first getting into it, is that you feel like the game is pretty fun. And, has yeah. that has that diminished? Has that increased? Has that kind of stayed the same? What do you think? Um, I think that what really was not so fun for me at first was that I just didn't have... Uh, I, I had like conflicting like timetables with like practicing StarCraft two and mm. practicing this game okay. when I originally found it. And uh, this just kind of nicely lined up where a few weeks ago, the DreamHack qualifiers for StarCraft two finished. And I, I did okay in those, but like, I didn't have this like burning, like I need to do StarCraft two stuff feeling. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, I got to, like, play Cosmonarchy and not feel like, oh, man, I'm spending this time incorrectly and I should be playing StarCraft Two or I should be practicing Street Fighter. So that that was what kind of, like, made me just enjoy playing a little bit more 
Nice, yeah. In the, in the recent times. I know you've also been uh, talking a little bit in the past about like balancing the, you know, not not burning yourself out on the streams, which you do pretty often. And I know you stream these games too, which is always great for me on the perspective of like, hey, you're, he's getting the word out there. He's showing off cool gameplay and stuff. But obviously on your side, it's still a, a different kind of work at the end of the day, right? So. Yeah, absolutely. Like when, when I stream like things that aren't StarCraft 2, I'm kind of just like, playing games for fun mm. so I, I don't have like an expectation of like anything popping off or anything like that like like when i stream star when i stream cosmonarchy i do it in the starcraft 2 directory uh -huh. and you know you know like i had like three people come through and fucking this is in starcraft 2 what's <laughs> going on and it's right. like i'm doing something cool right now check it out and they're right, like right. oh that's weird or they're like oh i hate you and i'm unfollowing you and it's like all right well <laughs> You were a piece of shit anyways, so get the fuck out of here. Like, yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what? I mean, it, it is pretty cool to see. I think you did end up getting at least one or two people in the door because we had some new people show up in the middle of the tournament games today. So, you know yeah, what? Yeah, I, I mean, told Captain Newbie cool. that they had – because I tried to get Captain Newbie to play the game oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, a few months ago before right. you had the standalone launcher out, and I told him that it's fixed and it's a standalone launcher now. And he was like, okay, fine. And then he immediately was like – you should tell Pernogo to make a fourth race. And I was like, yeah, I love that. Hmm, yeah. Hey, hey. yeah. On the way, brother. Ain't, ain't that ain't that curious? Yeah, yeah. That's pretty legit, though. I mean, always nice to hear uh, the excitement of people and and you know big ideas, right? You, some other RTS developers seem to be a little bit weirded out about the idea of doing like that kind of stuff. I don't know why, but uh, D doing what like extra, you know, adding extra races or you know crazy unit counts. Or yeah, whatever. You, you know they're so like worried about the esports bullshit that mm. like they're afraid to make anything different about their game, and I, I honestly hate it so much that like they're so unwilling to do cool new because because think about like e even like league of legends is like mm. a super fucking milk toast game yes but like every three or three to six months they release a new character right it's right. like fucking weird and different and overpowered or underpowered you know like they they're willing to make new things happen and i think other game devs should be like because that's what keeps people interested in that game Right, yeah. Is the new that content. They have yeah. something new to look forward to every six months, right? Like, they're not like, oh boy, StarCraft 2, I'm going to go back and I'm going to play the same meta that I've been playing for, uh, checks watch, seven and a half years, you know? <laughs> like, it, it, just, it just, like, I don't know why they, because the community balance team for StarCraft 2, they, they make, like, the most conservative boring changes imaginable you know like the the biggest change that they made in the recent balance patch was to the sentry for protoss oh yes which, yeah. which made it not have an armor tag it's no longer a light unit it just has no armor tag which like drastically changed the way that all of the anti-light units interact with the sentry and it's like okay that's really cool can we have more of that you know like can can you do more stuff like that? And it's like, obviously they're not going to. <laughs> like they, right. they, that that was like the, as extreme as it gets. You know, like they changed the armor tag of one unit. So and it, you know it what? It's really completely nice reshaped how Protoss versus Protoss games are. Except actually, the Sentry <laughs> opener was already a thing, and now it's well, just it more common. Was, but you know, you're actually. I know. I know you're you're memeing, but it did. Like yeah, it, it does make a big difference. Completely yeah. and totally changed the matchup. They they also did something to the sentry where they made it do extra damage versus oh, units right. versus yeah. shields. Yeah. So it did have a massive effect on early game PvP. It's gone from like hella randomy gimmick bullshit every single game mm. to like an actual like very I want to say like standard and like stuck in the you're, you're seeing like sentry openers in every single match now, and you're seeing like robo openers where people do like sentry robo like pushes or like a prism and it, it just like it's like created it's it's a allowed completely different play styles to come about which is super nice yeah i mean it's good when you have a little bit more stability to it <laughs> and you know 
Who knows if we're going to get uh, another volatility era in, in Cosmonarchy the way that it was sort of like before you joined, especially. There's a lot of really fast early games, really crazy things going on. And uh, yeah, you know, it's just the way that things go that it seems like we're kind of getting to that point where it's smoothed out and, and you have a little bit of a rhythm because people are sort of establishing that. That's the challenging thing is that we have nobody here who's like figured out a meta because we're all brand new. To, like as far as the game goes, it's very, very young, mm. right? So figuring out like that stability or like maybe having enough of a player base to like brutally test everything. But I mean, you maybe you've noticed this. There's a lot of new names flocking in every now and then. So I feel like yeah, we're getting no, to that see, point where we're slowly growing up. Playing, like yeah. seeing Top Ramen do really well. Like I, I was surprised as hell that he took a game off of Unibalime. That was really cool to see him fucking bop you in that first yeah. match. Like I was like, oh, this is really cool. Like he's doing like marine siege tank like from starcraft 2 except right. the ansel is the raven mm. that that was actually like really cool like i i that that match got me really hyped i was like oh yeah dude let's go I, know, man. Yeah, it's like, I swear everyone watching just wants to see me lose honestly <laughs> no 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 I if mean, it's like, a cool I way fucking, if it's a cool way that I, I i love to see you lose but like no it was just cool to see like something that wasn't spamming fucking goliaths dude because mm. like, yeah. like every terran match i've watched recently has just been like fucking non-stop spam Blame he had to nerf those damn hurricanes i know it yeah. seems a lot more exciting well, stuff i don't know dude like i don't think that like nerfing the hurricanes made the goliath like because the goliath didn't change and i think the oh, goliath it got, was it got cheaper better you know like it got what it got a little bit cheaper, the goliath got cheaper. like a few months ago but, oh okay well yeah. fuck then all right no wonder it's everywhere i just i don't know like every time i played versus shambler when he played terran he just played the exact same way every single time and it was really obnoxious i do like when there's more variety in the styles that's for sure and i also do think that like beaver kind of hinted at a bit of a meta play that you might be able to roll with blackjacks uh maybe when newt wakes up and sees that game he might be thinking oh maybe i can work work that in you know that's a possibility but mm -hmm. you know you, you know when i played newt and he did the like switch ups and he bopped me with the random uh wraiths i i was really like i was like dude this sucks like mm. i i don't i don't understand because like you have to make specific things out of the buildings based on what they're doing and i was like i don't understand how i'm supposed to figure out what he's doing like even if I go Vassal first and I go straight to his base, he could, like, build the fucking Wraith the start. He could, like, scout me with his first SCV or whatever and then get out of my base after he sees my start building and he, like, go, you, like, go to a proxy spot and proxy two star pads mm. with that one that one SCV. I wonder if that'll end up... That's what I kept trying to tell Newt, man. I kept yeah, saying, proxy like, them, proxy them. He wouldn't listen to yeah, me. Yeah, like, it, it will be really good because, like, you you make your reactions to what they're doing based on what you see so like if i come in his base with my vassal and there's nothing there it's hard to like draw a conclusion about what mm. might be happening because you know like there's so many fucking options like like he could be proxying something but like i mean like i don't fucking know like who who, who knows like no nobody really knows like yeah, what you have to get you have to figure out exactly are. like okay, how many workers is he supposed to have by this point, and how many you know like yeah, we don't have like that, that that those small that, that's details. A lot, yeah. You know, like we don't have. Those I, I felt out. really good about like the the like innovating that I've done in the last few weeks yep. with like being like okay, like I can make all these units, I can make both production structures, and I can do all this shit, and it works really good. And I like it a lot, and it feels good, and I can make these early game pushes happen, and I've just been booting people out of the game really early and getting a massive advantage really early. And I'm like, okay, this is how you're supposed to do it. You don't want to, like, play for the ultra late game as early as possible every time. Mm. That's not how you want it. Um, so figuring that stuff out feels great. And then I play Shambler, and he makes some fucking random fucking tier three unit, and I'm like, holy <laughs> shit, this is unbeatable. What am I supposed to do? You know? Have you played against his Protoss recently? Yeah, oh, no, okay. a little bit, but not not much. Like, gotcha. He he did beat me a couple times, like the first day that he picked it up, and I was like, God, this fucking guy. He just like he's just like spamming legionnaires. Yes. Like, fucking name. His four gate opener. Like, <laughs> but but. 
with, with like what I figured out with like the lattice mm. and the the gateway opener is that like um, zealot plus idol absolutely dumpsters on legions yep. so badly. So and the idols are really play, good versus the wraith too. That you were talking about. How yeah, you think they're that's really good be versus good the one. wraith too. And it's like I would only make them if I scouted those yes. things. Right. Right. So because they're so gas heavy and they're really bad versus everything else. Um, but I, I mean, I think General Anakin tried the, the like Legionnaire thing on me today, right? Yes. Yeah. But he he added a couple of uh, Ecclesiasts. The, the, the Ecclesiasts. There's too many names, bro. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like I had like three idols when he came in, and it just like annihilated him. Yeah. And then when I pushed across the map, I had three or four idols, and we just fucking explode him, and it's like, it's like I I, I don't know. I'm glad that I practiced and. Yeah created something that's a little different I, and i mean like i know that um in mystery meets tournament runs he was playing like that with protoss back then so like he had it figured out too so oh interesting yeah i guess that's right he did open lattice a couple of times depending yeah, on the matchup he, he, so. he would open gateway plus lattice sometimes like he didn't do it every time but he like i feel like a lot of the players in the current project um they they make it up as they go along right which, which isn't like a bad thing but it's like a stylistic difference between mm. the players I, i'm the kind of person where like i will almost always create a plan and then practice it and execute it in the games and i don't really like freestyle or try to like create ideas like off the hat because your level of execution is just like significantly lower when you're doing something you haven't like done a hammered out build order for. Yes. Yeah. And I, I think that that's why I felt so confident today. Cause I was like, okay, Beaver and Anakin are not like refined players. Mm. And I've been like working on this and like, I have played a lot off stream and I felt good. And I was like, all right, let's do this. So I just did what I practiced and it worked really good. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, now for the next stage, I can have this thing and then also like prepare something new as well. When is the next stage, by the way? We're gonna schedule those out over the next few days to figure it out. I'll basically create like private threads for each match and we'll just figure out what time that works for everybody. That's how we did the gauntlet. Uh, if okay. the times line up like on the same day somehow, we'll probably cast a bunch of them live. But if not, we will, uh, I mean, We'll see who's available, but we might just get like a ref to stand in for spectating and uh, otherwise do the do it from replays. I don't know if you remember, we did some from replays uh, a while back. And, yeah, because yeah. time differences are pretty rough. Yeah, but, you know, we, if we can hopefully what we'll try to do is the same thing that we did last time is at least do like the last three or two to three matches of the whole stage. Like the grand final, of course, has to be live. We can definitely make it up for that. And ideally the lower final as well. Last time we had Hamster go on that ridiculous run where he made it past I sarcasm he made it past uh the shambler and both of those were four game sets so he ends up winning three to one and then he he makes it all the way to match in series point tournament point against neblime doesn't get it across the line that was all in the same day like and three there was like a really game. close game as well yeah, yes no. yeah I, I felt kind of bad that he had to do that all in one day that was that was, was rough, rough as man, fuck yeah. Lower bracket uh, disadvantage for sure. I don't know if we'll do. Yeah. Maybe we'll do just the, the lower final and the upper final on the same day. But uh, we, I think it, we try to get the third game, the game against I Sarcasm. We try to get that played earlier, and I think like for whatever reason, yeah, it's because scheduling, be right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but hey, that's the way it goes. And speaking of, I do actually have our opening matches, ladies and gentlemen. Nice. I will now show it on the stream as well as post it in our tournament section, revealing. Uh, I'm sorry, Neblime, but you're going to the lower bracket real quick. Your matchup is... <laughs> no, okay. Hamster versus Taco Cake. That's our first quarterfinal. And our second one. Neblime no. versus Newt. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Couldn't you let someone else handle him? <laughs> Why didn't you want to play versus Newt, bro? I, I think he's most him. likely to defeat me. There it is. Really? Yeah. Out of all the players in this, yes. Is, is that just because Terran versus Zerg or because of Newt? Apparently Newt's got his number, but uh, you know we'll have to see. Hapsaya versus Art of Turtle. That's going to yeah. be the third quarter final. Niblime, you are a sandbagger, dude. <laughs> hey, I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not going to win the whole thing. What I'm 
said was he's the most likely to beat me of all the people here. That's what I said. You're mm -hmm. trying to build some some tension. I see. I see. Don't take don't don't uh, put words in my mouth. All I said was he's the most likely to beat me. That's all I'm saying. Okay. okay. All, right, all right. We go into quarterfinal number four, and it is the Shambler versus General Anakin. So. The only match out of all of them that is a mirror is actually going to be the Protoss versus Protoss match for QF4. But all the others, you know, Hepsea, you're up against Art of Turtle. That's a Zerg player, so it's PVZ. Uh, same deal for Hamster versus Taco Cake and Nebline versus Newt. Some ZVT action. I'm uh, looking forward to seeing what happens here, man. This is a pretty interesting draw. A lot of things to, to sort of think about. Um, I feel like Hamster and the Shambler are formidable opponents for the un big underdogs from Taco Cake and General Anakin, but... You know, anything's possible. Maybe the Mind Tyrants tilt Shambler and uh, he, he gets owned or something. You never know. You think Mind Tyrant's good versus Zerg, too? Hmm. Shambler switched to Protoss, if you didn't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I think they're only good against Zerg if they have, like, tier 3 units, basically. And I have had Mind Tyrants used against my Alcagelisks, but <laughs> they're no, no good against tier 1 or 2. Like, there's just so much stuff. Maelstrom could be okay, but I feel like there's other stuff you could be doing that'd be better. Well, if you if you start off by getting pariahs to deal with stuff, then maybe you can pivot in if they start going like heavy Zorkas, maybe? I don't know. It's just a just a theory, just a thought. I don't know. I just can't see the argument where you're better off having a mind tower than just another Patriarch, really. Yeah. Unless Patriarch you're against are insane, to be honest. Those big tier three things another matter, but I mean usually yeah, yeah. tier one and two where the game's decided. Well, well, we'll have to see. Maybe it can be a packet pick. But I think that pretty much does it for us, gentlemen. It's been a it's been a pleasure. We'll take one last right. look at the Battleman stage. We obviously have the, all four groups decided now. And just like the seeding suggested, first place across the board, it's the returning veterans from the previous tournament. Hats off, gentlemen, at representing your experience here. But we had some nice challengers coming in from those second seeds. All of the people who went through the upper qualifiers did make it out. So that's a kind of a narrative unto itself with the uh, lower qualifications, unfortunately, bowing out. In some cases, uh, without a win, but at the very least, Top Ramen bruised Neb Lime on the way out. So we can say that. Yeah, can say that. that was super yeah. cool. He played well. He played very well. Mm -hmm. He just had, like, a really cool, like, army composition idea. And that, that was, like, I, I felt like I'm, I'm, like, in the similar area where I was, like, oh, cool. I'm, like, figuring out, like, a very specific, like, army composition thing. Mm. That's like helping a lot with like just general like playing the game and like having a game plan is nice. Big deal. We have only one Terran, right? It's confirmed looking at this bracket. That's only right. One Terran made it through. That's right. And in every case, by the way, the bottom player was the one who got eliminated. So everything I know. conforming to expectations. Exactly. Yeah, the seating worked out as a uh, a very strong guidebook here. And I was a little surprised. I honestly thought Top Rama would be able to flip that, but the Wraith play not Same. working out for him, unfortunately. Mm. Yeah. This is what Hapsaya was saying, right? It wasn't a very well prepared uh, game plan, right? wasn't wasn't prepared to execute it well. Yeah, I think he was just like, "I'm gonna try this" because I saw somebody else do it. And I think if he had just played like how he did versus you, I think he would have wrecked. Um, Talk about who was it? Well, I hope so because. If not, then what does that say about my play, right? If Taco got eliminated, but uh, Top Ramen would have been. You him know, as well. I think you had the answer, and like there was that one fight in the middle where like you tried to surround him, but it just wasn't like as well coordinated. I'm not gonna lie, I sort of thought I was gonna completely crush that, and I was surprised the answer did so much. So yeah, yeah. well, you you should have crushed it, but like your units that were coming from the east were on that ramp, yeah. and they like got yes. stuck on each other. It's tricky and then because your your units that were coming from your base like fought the army before the other two sides of the surround came in, and I was like, oh no, like he's getting fucking shredded. It's tricky because you got to use that ramp angle, and it's kind of good sometimes because of the range, depending what units are coming. But I definitely thought to myself like Axiom is not the map I prefer to play against Terran on because of that kind of arrangement. Because there's nowhere on Axiom that's that wide open except the low ground side areas, which Terran just shouldn't be going into. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Definitely, that engagement did not go my way. Well, Absolutely. Some stuff overall. Good games, yeah. though. Some good games, though. I, yeah, I agree with what Hapsaya said. In fact, I think you can make that the title, the thumbnail, and everything. Well, gentlemen, <laughs> that's basically <laughs> nice. going to conclude us. The battlements are over. We have reached the end of that stage. And I feel like, you know, obviously scheduling can be a pain for these playoff sections. But I feel like, you know, the, the hard part's behind us. Now we can coast on in and enjoy 
the uh, luxury of this throne room stage. The, the grandeur is here, right? We got all the fancy names. We don't even just like, listen, Hapsaya, we don't name our maps just like maps. Like, no, there's a class system to the maps and the best maps are empire class. And it's like, whoa, yeah, my I God. Yeah, I didn't notice that. It was a little weird. What what was that d d uh, Derelict 2.0? Was that a different class of map? Uh, it's, 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 it's just updated Derelict, right? So yeah. it's not as choky in the middle. You can't mine early game because you need like six workers for full saturation now. And there's like these weird neutral bases in the corner. But the, you'll notice the 12 and 6 are a much more sort of reasonable uh, level of defensiveness. Yeah, you know, that was the map I played versus Anakin, right? Yep. Yeah, dude, was that was rough. That was rough. Cause, like, Look, I'd argue the center of the I, map helped you out a lot compared to Derelict 1. I hadn't played one, on that one before, so right, w yeah. when, when I was looking for his third base, I looked in the wrong spot like twice. I will point out that map, that base hadn't changed from Derelict 1. The 3 and 9 are the same. Yeah, I know. He just took the one I didn't expect him to, right? Like, he took the top base that's on the high ground instead of the triangle base that's on the low ground. Mm, yep. And I just, I was like, what is he doing? Like, well, because on, its, on its face, it doesn't make sense to do that. From a, Like, it's so open, right? You can easily just yeah, pop it. Yeah, so. yeah, because it's more open now. On the previous version of Derelict, it's not as open there on that triangle base. Yeah, yeah. It's good, though. All right. GG's. I'm sure you're tired, Pernogo. I'm sorry. I'll no worries. Here, yeah. Hey, no, it's good to hear your thoughts. And obviously, right, one last question. Hey, hey. One last question I'm saying before we go. What's Am I going to see you in finals? How far do you think you're going to go? Um, I don't know, man. Like, I oh, feel like on. it's pretty tough because uh, I've played a lot versus Terran and Protoss, but I've basically gotten no practice versus Zerg. Like, literally, the only games that I've played versus Zerg have been art of turtle and that was like two days ago and i played him three times and out of so so like i've, I've played a hundred games in the last three weeks and three of them have been versus art of turtle <laughs> and that's the only pvz that i've played so i don't well, know at least you, you played know, against like, it before like, i want you to throw out a claim you know are you saying you're going to go down from the first round into the lower bracket no, bro, i'm gonna make it to the finals easy all right there we go there it is got it got it on record at the very end that's right i recorded that i'll be playing that back later there it is. yeah yeah of course of course <laughs> all right man I, I hope we see a fresh face at least one in the finals it could be very exciting i mean if if hamster makes the three back-to-back -back finals and still can't get the gold and silverware i don't know man that's that'd be rough but uh it could very well be a possibility he did change his race maybe that's what he needed who knows man who knows <laughs> i really think he should have stuck with taryn he was doing really good with taryn to be honest like hamster oh no was hamster was there which one are you thinking of hamster Nebula or, was taryn. Oh, i'm sorry shambler shambler oh shambler yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i don't know why no, shambler think... changed to protoss at the last second he, i think he just raged out versus um what was he even angry about i can't remember he was angry it's about playing track. me i think <clears throat> Because we, we played like 30 games, I feel. I feel like mm. I played in PvT like 30 times. And it's like, he just was always doing the same thing, you know, with like mm. the Goliaths and the Medics and then yeah. like never transitioning to Tier 2. And I just like figured it out and stopped losing to it. And then I think he just got upset because he just, uh, yeah, I was just not listening to it anymore. There it is. There it is. Listen, I think what we're going to be seeing is some nice games in those quarterfinals. I do think that, you know, there's going to be a little bit of time before we get them played as well. So you're talking about not having much PvZ experience. There will be times you can definitely start ping. I don't know if people know this. You can ping a role, like, a, or sorry, a race like Zerg, and it'll ping players who have that assigned. So, uh, mm, okay. you know, it might be something worth doing for people who are uh, looking for specific practice partners of, like, a particular race. But Okay, cool. There it is. GG's, man. And congrats on making it out in first place, both of you. Thank you. Yeah, no, of course I'll make it to the finals, bro. What, are you kidding me? You guys are all fucking trash. There it is. That's I what I wanted. That's it. what I wanted. Yeah, yeah. Also, I don't have anything else to do right now, so I'm going to just play as much as I can. Love that. We can see how say I take it, the crown. It's tough because, like, I, I feel like I can't stream playing this game because there's a lot of downtime. Where yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm waiting for, waiting for people to show up. And it's like... I just fucking hate waiting, man. It's, like, not fun. Well, listen, there was a day pretty recently where we literally had from dawn till dusk for a full 24 hours. It was, like, two games at a time. People were just nonstop grinding it. So, I mean, those days will come. I think that was just this past Friday. I'll see how it goes. We're getting up to the point where that's even a possibility because I didn't even think that would be a real thing, but it is. We're getting there. Very so. nice. Very nice. Hell we'll yeah, do dude. It. We'll do it. 
All right, man. GG's, and uh, thanks again for your play, for your stream, for spreading the word. Nebline, thank you for joining me on the cast. Actually, Hepsey joined me on the cast for a couple of those games, too, so thanks for that. Oh, nice. Yeah. Have right. a good night, See sir. See you next time. Until soon. <laughs>